changes. Is there any additional changes from council members? We know we've got an add on, um, Mr. Branch. Um, you can share that with Ms. Brown, the clerk, and y'all can get numbers and stuff ready. Add-on number one probably is what it'll be. It has something to do with moving money around in the budget amendment. Um, so that'll be coming. Um, also, if you look at the order, uh, order of the agenda, we got an executive session. I don't want to do that first. I want to move resolution 190002 that's the first order of business any objections that's the 77 million oh, okay. you got mr winfrey present mr griggs is present i'd like that roll call to reflect president winfrey and Councilperson Griggs, we just did roll call. We are on changes and and additions to the agenda, Mr. Griggs. We got an add on a budget amendment. We'll get to that. But right now, I'm asking that we move one nine zero 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 two. That's the 77 million to the front of the agenda before we even do the executive session. Um, and I've asked if there's any objections. I've heard none, but we're going to vote on it. Any other changes or additions to the agenda that anybody requests? Ms. Worthing, I want the record to reflect that Ms. Worthing is here. We've just taken roll call, Ms. Worthing. I want the record to reflect your okay. present and Miss Winfrey Carter. So we got all nine, and I want this our finance committee roll call agenda to reflect that. We're on changes and amendments to the agenda. Miss Galloway, you wanted to be. Oh, you was okay. You was pointing that out, and so I've asked Miss Worthy and Miss Winfrey Carter that resolution. One nine zero 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 two be moved to the front of the agenda versus the first order being executive sessions. Um, I'm sure we've looked at the agenda. We've got some AECOM stuff here. We've got a lawyer here on the executive session that's on the clock. I want to get him in and out of here pretty quick. Um, so other than that, if y'all don't have any other changes to the agenda other than moving that 77 million discussion up to the front, um, let me look at one other thing at the end of the agenda. New business that could be new and or old. So I'm going to put slash new and or old at that spot. So that would be a change. Ms. Galloway. Um, so, Councilman Mayor, are you simply moving resolution 190002 to in front of the executive order and then the agenda will be followed as? Yeah, and the other change would be new slash old business. And um, we gonna vote on it. I'm hoping we have support. Or do you need to? Do you need us to put that in the form of a motion? I would like it in the form of a motion. Then I move that we, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. I move President. that we move one nine zero zero two to the front of the agenda, front of the agenda, and then after we um, dispense with that, then we follow the agenda as, as written. New old. There's been a motion, Ms. Galloway, oh, Vice so President that. Galloway. Oh, so it's been moved and properly supported to make those um, changes and additions fun or additions to the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? I would record that as a 9-0 vote. Um, so let's go get down to business. I'll have any
communications from council as it relates to 19002. Do we all know what that is, President Winfrey? Yes, I, I've read it. I've read the whole, all of the uh, business on all the committees, and I would certainly like to move, uh, move that we uh, send 19002 to council. There's been a motion made by President Winfrey to send 19002 to council. I'm going to recognize Mr. Davis. I'm going to recognize okay. Mr. Guerra based upon the movement I've seen. Mr. Guerra. Second that motion. So it's been moved and properly seconded to send 19002, a budget amendment. Transfer wild infrastructure and distribution improvement slash grant funds to council, and that's seventy seven million dollars. Any discussion, Miss Fields? Okay, I have actually quite a few questions um, sure. on this. Uh, so, as I understand it, this is just, uh, and I'd ask uh, Mr. Newsom perhaps for you to Mr. Newsom. Eventually, um, this is supposed to be a budget amendment for the remaining money that um, is within the bond that we have, mm -hmm. okay, to be moved into a fund so that it can be used, correct? That's correct. Okay. Does it state anywhere, I mean, we are quickly changing our state-approved mm -hmm. wind plan, using mm -hmm. money for different things, different pots of money. So... Mm -hmm. Does this budget amendment include the specifics of the line items that are within the wind plan as, as approved? Mr. Newsom. So, Ms. Fields, if you look in, I'm going to bring up the page number, but the actual projects themselves are identified in as backup to the bonds. And we haven't identified exactly what the breakout will be at the line item level. We typically don't do that for grants, the budget amendment for grants. Um, because we have to go through, we have to look at um, exactly where it's going to be in terms of the count. But we know it's going to the 496, and we know it's going to the 496 fund, and that's what and we also know it's going to be a specific grant code that's going to be set up so we can account for everything by grant code. And I think I provided you the grant code in the, in the, uh, grant, in the actual fund itself, the 496 fund. 496 or 496? 496. 496. 496, okay. Why is it a 496? Mr. Mr. Mays? Yeah, I'll go ahead, proceed. Okay, thank you. So, for, so one thing that we discovered was that the 296 fund is not designed or set, a, set up to carry um, fixed assets. These projects are improving the fixed assets of the city, right? They're all capital improvement projects. And so what happens is we have an issue when a special revenue fund is carrying those fixed assets on its balance sheet. It's 496, if you look at it, and I meant to add to this the uh, Michigan Charter of Accounts so you can have it for reference. If you look at it, you will see that 496 is specifically set up for capital projects. And so that's the reason we chose cap for the 496 fund versus the 296 fund for this. And I'm going to, in full disclosure, at some point you will see that for the service line replacement projects, we're going to move that from 296 to 496 for the same purpose. Um, because what we discovered over the break is that, to, again, everything that's in the 296, special revenue, it's not designed um, to maintain fixed assets within it. So the 496 is an, capital, is an enterprise fund specific for capital projects. Does that mean you're also going to be new? And I'm glad you have news here later. I'm going to ask these business questions. Are you also going to move the money that was put into the, um, the water fund, the TB 519 fund? TBD. That's to be determined because um, the in theory the 590, 591 fund is designed to carry those fixed assets. It's an enterprise fund, right? 496 and, and 591 are both enterprise funds. 296 is a special revenue fund. It's a governmental fund, and so. I don't, we haven't determined yet whether or not we're going to do that to fight for 591. I, I'm very interested in hearing what Yo-Yo has to say as well. We've talked about it. I don't know if we ever came to a conclusion, but for sure 296 has to be, everything has to move out of 296. Okay. Well, and just uh, one last question at the moment. Um, for this bond, one of the things I didn't like when council approved 
the issuance of this bond mm -hmm. was when we did the first pot of money, the $40 million, we actually had contracts, specific contracts attached to that bond and how that money was going to be used. We did not have that on this $80 million. Right. So it looks like we still don't have that. That's correct. Okay. So it, can, I'll, if I, I'll let you come say Come yeah, Please. do your thing. Please. Go ahead. So basically what we're doing is okay money into a fund mm -hmm. that is it at any time going to have to come back to council for approval on how those funds are being used? What you're doing now, if I may, Councilman, what you're doing now is you're amending the budget. In theory, this is the right order anyway. You amend the budget, you have the projects approved, the contracts against that against that budget then would, ha would then occur. What you should be doing before you... Start. In fact, we have to go, 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 go. Sometimes we enter into contracts, we have to hold off on the on the um, execution of those contracts until we amended the budget. Restoration for Goyette is a great example of that. If you remember, we had to come back to you to amend the budget, and the contract was on hold because you all needed time, an additional cycle, if you will, to amend the budget. What we're doing now is amending the budget first with a, with a forgivable loan that's been approved by DEQ. And now going forward, you'll see contracts against that, but we already have the money appropriated in the budget. So I believe that I'm much more comfortable with this order now that we have had a chance to go through this cycle with a little bit more experience. I feel much more comfortable with having the money in the budget first, then you see contracts against that. So we won't get into a situation like we got, got with yet last fall. Okay, so the thing I'm concerned about mm -hmm. is that you're going to be paying bills or contracts out of this fund mm -hmm. without council being aware that they're being paid for. So you're saying mm -hmm. um, we would know that because any contract or change order that's correct. Okay, that currently exists right. okay, would have to come before council in order to use this money? Well, all of your contracts that are going to go against those capital improvement projects are going to come before you. They're not, they're not, we haven't, we haven't put those together yet. So just like with Fast Start, when we did the service line replacement contracts back in May, we did Goyes Restoration, I believe it was August, you'll see those. AECOM, they're up tonight, right, for 2019 service line replacement oversight, right? So you would see those. So I guess what I would ask, just so I get a, a clear understanding of what your concern is, what I would ask is, is there, a specific is there a specific contract you're thinking about because program management contracts have come before you and construction contracts came before you for Fast Start. So I just, I, I'm, I'm I guess trying to I understand what the problem is. I guess what I want to know is what contracts are existing. So I assume there are, because the city attorney said that they're still funding in the pipe replacement Ms. contractors. Field. Can I ask you to ask it this way? <coughs> Out of the seventy-seven million that we receive, is any of it encumbered, or is it all free, and we'll be allocating every dime, or is some of it'll go in when we receive it, and it's already spoken for? You see what I'm saying? I, 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 Can you yes. answer that? Yeah. Order. Yeah. Are we going by council rules? We are going by council rules. So based on that. Where are we on the five minutes? I'm watching it. She's good. Proceed, Ms. Fields. And Mr. Newsom, see if that helps get that mm -hmm. done. No, I, I think that you spelled it out exactly right. And to, the answer to your question is no, we have not entered into any contracts that go against the $77 million yet. We couldn't have. And that's the reason what okay, I'm saying. Well, I, I'm glad Mr. May has got his question answered okay. on my time, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Well, I'll I'm answering that, questions about an Ms. Answer. Fields. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, look, we start taking shops rather than taking care of business. I'm all up for that today. I'm up for it. I don't care nothing about no cameras, people in the room. If you want to start showing out with this chairman and this committee, I'm going to show out with you. So if you didn't get your question answered, I'm glad the council got the answer. The 77 million right now as we're taking it in is unencumbered. And I'm pretty smart. That's what you was trying to ask. I helped. Ms. Galloway, go ahead. I just, I just want to, um, for clarity. So we're transferring this money 
And none of this money is going to be spent. It is just going to sit idle in the account with no um, distributions of the funds. And until <coughs> after the contracts are done. That's correct. I, I do want to clarify one thing. Now, you all did approve CDM Smith before. We have not entered into a contract with them yet. This is a necessary step. So I do want to clear, clean that up. CDM Smith has not started. You all approved us to enter into that design management contract. So I did want to make sure that I gave that clarification. And how much that, was that one? Oh, um, 400000 and change. 400000 So uh, outside of that. Miss Fields, you out of order. That's one warning. And if you if I have to warn you again, we'll be asking for you to be exited early. I'm gonna set the tone. You're not gonna do it. Which is a little smart remark about me helping try to clear up. You done started the, the, the day off wrong. Don't interrupt folks when they talk, Miss Fields. That's one warning. Go ahead. So I just want to clean some. So if you remind, if, just to remind council, CDM Smith is doing the design of the chemical fee building. We had um, they that was the, the that was the firm where the state contracted them to do the first thirty percent, and we need to do the rest of the um, of the design of the chemical fee building. But to your point, and I think this is very important, we have been doing set asides out of the 80 million. That's the reason you see 77 and a half million, a little older than that, because we've been doing set asides that you all have been approving for water optimization from Arcadis. And, and we were doing that with DEQ's approval until we got the $80 million, or the balance of the $80 million approved through a forgivable loan. So I just want to, so you, you are right. But also at the same time, CDM Smith would come out of the 77 and a half million. So, Miss Galloway. So, Miss 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 the Newsom, you're saying what is encumbered is the 400 thousand, but the contract ain't came yet. Right. So we haven't entered into that contract yet. <laughs> Simple answer. But you answers. all have approved us. Simple answer. Mm -hmm. So we receiving 77 million. About four hundred thousand is encumbered. Any other contracts approved that might encumber more of that money, but ain't came before us yet. No. No. Okay. I'm gonna go to Mr. Guerra, but um, we also got a list of projects that this money was applied for. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your package, you'll see the eighteen million for uh, meter replacement. You'll see the um, various infrastructure changes listed, mm -hmm. and that's listed. Mr. Garrett. That's what I was going to go with. I was going to ask Mr. Clarity if that's what the money was intended for, but mm -hmm. that is what. you know how many contracts in general, though, we may be spending? You know, at least, if Mr. Councilman to. I appreciate it. Go at ahead. least one per, but, um, and I, I do want Steve to chime in if, if he may, but at least one per, but Steve probably will have. You, usually you have design and construction for a lot of these. But um, I'll let Steve chime in on the meeting. So there could be a case where we should decide on the construction of the building. Thank you. Contract number 12. Council? Ms. Galloway. Um, so was the water meters approved from these funds? We, that is, so the project itself, it was an approved project. But we have, we currently are in an RFP searching for someone to man to, for the equipment and or the management of the installation of the water meters. So that will probably be coming to you at the end of, end of January, more than likely February, for that particular contract. That RFP is out for, for water meters. Right, but there was a concern that the cost of replacing the water meters mm -hmm. was not approved oh, it, under any of, and so that's what I'm asking. Did we finally get to yes, it was approved? Yes, that is correct. It's actually, you'll see it in the documentation of the, of the um, you should see it, I think in the issue certificate, but you'll see it in your packet that that was an approved project. Wait, I have one more. I thought, I thought we had a contract with a company that would replace some water meters. That right. was a different um, section of money, a different contract, a different pot of money. Is that a fair statement, Mr. That, that is 100% accurate. That was to, the city has its own stock, mm -hmm. if you will. But what we're talking about as part of this, pro, of, as part of this um, 77 million would be a program 
a comprehensive program to go out and do an active water meter, water meter replacement program where you would go through and actually identify at risk water meters or water meters that are dead and replace them. We replace them reactively. And we're talking okay. about a program to comprehensively replace them. And are we going to talk about water meters because I had someone call me and say, um, Councilwoman, my water meter is broke. Mm -hmm. It doesn't read. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything to it. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me I have to pay to replace it. If I may, Councilman, I'll take that offline with you. I'll, I will find you after I'm this I'm sure meeting. in case anybody else. Mm -hmm. I I'm just fine. wondered why we know that some of the water meters are faulty, why we would have to have residents pay for something that does not get But yeah, I'm sure it's mm -hmm. going to come around. Mm -hmm. This person wasn't in my ward. Oh. But I just, uh, I don't want that question. Do you want that as a discussion item? Are you going to remember it and you and oh, Mr. Newsom going to bring it up? Because mm -hmm. it's an interesting proposition. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Griggs. Uh, Mr. Newsom. Yes, sir. Uh, when anything, are you saying that anything that's in excess, any contract in excess of 25000 that's taken out of this 70, 70, 77 million? Will come to us for approval? No, so your threshold is seventy-five thousand. So, and that's I'm glad you clarified that because you, we would still follow the purchasing ordinance, which says anything above seventy-five thousand. So that's a clarification. Anything above seventy-five thousand will come before this body as opposed to every single contract. But my suspicion is because these are such, these are such large-scale projects, very few, if any, are going to be below seventy-five thousand. Any more discussion? Um, Mr. Newsom, this is $77 million. And this $77 million is coming from what funding sources? So this is the I WIN Act. Um, Ms. Well, I'm talking to you, so. <laughs> this is the WIN Act money. So if you recall, we, you, there was $120 million specific for Flint, 20 million that was that came from the state, 100 million that came from the federal government via the pre President Obama's win. That's correct. And so we spent 40 million of that or allocated 40 million of that for service line replacement. That would leave 80. 80 left. Mm -hmm. So the reason you have 77 and a half in front of you is because we did a couple of smaller set asides for water water optimization for our as Miss Fields alluded to earlier. So Three that's million it. worth. No, two and a half. Two and a half million. Mm -hmm. So two this million. seventy-seven million really is the last part of the hundred and twenty million. Yes, sir. That is correct. And so somewhere about December the fourteenth or eighteenth, the state said, "Let's move." And so now it's our turn to move to receive that. Right. And it, and I'm understanding that when we take in that seventy-seven million. Then, when we look at the list of projects, mm -hmm. that list of projects will include. Let me find it. It's one of them exhibits attached. We've got eighteen million four hundred and sixty thousand for water meter replacement. Mm -hmm. We got the Dort and Cedar Street storage and pumping station improvement at an improvements at an estimated cost of ten million. We got a Flint secondary water source, um, nine million. That's going to be the pipe to hook us up with that water coming from the county, Correct. from the KWA. That's nine million. Mm -hmm. And I knew we shouldn't have been responsible for it. The state, I'm even feeling funny about us spending nine million of this for that. Um, I call it an incomplete um, KWA pipeline. You, so we didn't never complete that. I sat on the KWA board, and my position is when we bond for a hundred million or more on a three hundred million dollar project, it should hook us up. We should already be complete, so I'm always looking at that nine million. We'll see what happened in the court proceedings as it relates to them seven million dollar bond payments. That's why I'm watching Todd Flood pretty close because he's been bringing that out with Brisby and Bush now that that might be a fraudulent 
documentation as it relates to an administrative consent order. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping when the smoke clear, we ain't paying seven million for the next 28 years. But we've made some decisions based upon if it turns out to be a fraudulent administrative consent order. Stay tuned, everybody. And then we've got a Northwest Transmission Main replacement. The cost is estimated at $12 million. The Water Main replacement estimated at $13 million. Chemical Feed Building, $3.4 million. And service line replacement um, contingency at an estimated cost of ten million. Now, do we have the ability, if we come under budget on these items, to move money around the different categories? If uh, Councilman, the answer is no. You can only use this money for these approved projects. For these, are, for can you go back and get reapproval and amendment? We don't know. We don't know. We have to cross it. We'll have to it. find that out. That's why we're trying to hold hearings and ask questions about money right now. And if I may, Councilman, I do want to you remind I, I want to remind everyone that the Arcata study did show that we have an excess of three hundred million dollars worth of capital improvement projects to do to um, let's say modernize our water delivery system. This is what we discussed back I believe in July when Arcadis did its report. So, you know, we will use that money. There's no question. If anybody in the room can answer any aspect of leak detection in these funds, other than, you know, I know we might do something when it comes to the um, distribution, water quality monitoring. Also, um, I'm looking at the uh, water main replacement. Some of that might help with leak detection, but that was an issue. Where does that money fall at here? Do you know? I don't know, but Mr. Benzik is Rob here. Rob Benzik ain't here. Oh, no, he's right behind you. He just Rob, come up. in if you will. Yes, sir. Rob, you familiar with these projects? You would have to be because they're in your department, DPW. Yes, sir. Which one of them should I look at if I'm focusing on um, leaks and leak detection? Uh, water main replacement. That's what I would think, water main replacement. When will we be getting details as it relates to these projects? If, if we accept this money today, when will you start following up with details on? If we accept what money? The $77, 77 million dollars for these projects. That's what's on the table. Okay, so many, so many of these projects are already moving. Um, the water meter replacement is uh, that's is another pot of money. Uh, Dort and Cedar Street uh, pumping station is moving. Um, we're working on the design um, of that. Uh, the secondary water source um, is moving forward. Um, chemical feed building is moving forward. Apparently. Okay, so between us and the next um, meeting or so, between the two of y'all, y'all might can. Yeah, well, bring us up to speed. I did want to clarify something. When you say moving forward, for the most part, you're talking about bids that are out on the street. We right? are, yeah, we're talking about the design portion of it. Mm -hmm. So we are currently looking to, we're seeking a design uh, firm to design the right project. Okay, and you was a little nervous. You didn't want yeah. us to think money was encumbered, huh? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, real quick, Mr. Palladino. Ask him the question you wanted me to ask. This seventy-seven million that you got, you say it's going to be saved. Is it going to be collecting interest? We would not be, if I'm, if I'm. Go ahead. We may not be. That's TBD. But we may not be able to access that because the way we were receiving the money, we're paid just like for Fast Start, where we use city funds and float city funds to pay contractors to do the work. If you read. Uh, you may or may not have the documentation. The way this the money flows is the money goes out and is reimbursed back to the city. So that's the way it flows. So it's not like the city, again, it's not like the city's going to get a Brinks truck backing up with $77.5 million that's going to go to a bank. It's still designed. We have access to $77.5 million, and we'll, draw, we'll pay contractors, we'll pay expended expenses, and then we'll be reimbursed on the back end. So what are you that. saying, if I may? You may not. 
Miss Fields, we'll see if you may in a minute with a follow up. Well, it ain't over yet, but uh, Miss Fields. Okay, uh, this is a question that I was going to ask later in, in connection with something coming up on the agenda, but um, there's a, a resolution on the agenda to give AECOM tonight, to give AECOM an additional 4.8 million. So that has to be coming out of, I assume, win money, um, which is part of what the resolution says. So where is that money coming from? Okay, good question. I, if you, if I may, Council, I don't know well, if you repeat want to the question. That. Ms. Ms. Fields would like to know where is the money for the proposed $4.8 million for um, AECOM to oversee service line replacement. Is it part of win funding? The answer is no. But. I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow it, but mm -hmm. we finna have a whole big discussion about AECOM. Yes, this is about this. Go ahead. And, but I that's guess a that different would significantly agenda. change the wind plan if it were. So that's why I'm asking it now. In the answer, if I may, Councilman, just real quickly, the answer is no. We the twenty plus the nine million would be the start of what would pay for AECOM. If you look at the resolution, I believe I put the two ninety six fund as opposed to the 496 fund, because the 496 fund right now is dedicated to the, those capital improvement projects that are listed in this packet, which right now AECOM is not slated to oversee, and that's not part of the 4.8 million. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's an adequate answer, Ms. Fields. For the moment. Any more questions and or discussions from council on this? Follow up, Mr. Palladino. So what I was asking you, that 77 million, you're saying there's no brick truck. Anytime money sits like that, though, you collect interest on it. Mm -hmm. That's my curiosity. That's what I've been asking about a lot of things. And I don't mean to get out of order. You're running a good meeting today. So, and, I just, and I'm not kissing your butt. You know that. The thing is... <laughs> As I'm sitting there wondering, you got 77 million here, you got 300 million there. Where's that money sitting, and why isn't it not collecting interest for the city? Mr. Chair. Mr. Newsom. I mean, here, the way I look at it is like this we can make that argument. I think that we've been in a dogfight just to make sure we had access to the money in the first place. Now, it, the money exists. And in theory, the federal government is holding it or the state as a fiduciary is holding it. Um, and then we draw against it. So, yeah, could, should we be should we have access to that? That's a discussion that can be had. Um, but at the same my goal is to make sure that we have the we have secured the money and we have it. So we these validated projects are done as opposed to getting into a dogfight with the DQ or EPA about the interest that's collecting on, on appropriated money. Mr. President, you may not. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President. You know, I think the, uh, Mr. Chair and, and Mr. Newsom, I think the question that, that Mr. Uh, Palladino asked is important because a lot of people think when they hear us discuss these pots of money, they think it's sitting here in our coffers, it and it's just not. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do and, and what everybody should understand is that where we get that money from, the federal government, they have it. Right. We just, there are things that we have to do to bring it in-house. Right. So even if it does collect interest, it's not collecting interest in the, in the city's coffers. Yeah. So it's a really good question that you ask. And, and our folks need to know that because when they hear that, mm -hmm. the audit, they, they think that it's, it's here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they want to know, well, what are we doing with it? And, and we have to, we have, there are things that where there's a process that we have to follow in order to get it here. Absolutely. And Mr. Palladino, you and the public, we are governed under the Open Meetings Act. You are a member of the public. I allowed it. We in compliance. I allow people to, you know, help us run government, and that's a good thing. Were you done? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. You sure? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, any other discussion? If not, I'm going to call for the vote. The motion is to move resolution. <clears throat> One nine zero 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 two to council, and um, that's what we'll be voting on. Mm -hmm. All in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. All opposed. Any abstentions? 
I would record that vote as nine to nine to zero to move one nine zero zero two to council seventy seven million seven hundred forty thousand two hundred and eighty five dollars as a budget amendment um, that we accept that and move forward. All right, let's move further down the agenda. And um, that would take us to executive sessions. The first one is a special order about the master fee schedule. I'm keeping it on there. I would like to keep it on there, Mr. Newsom, mm -hmm. because we've got an agreement among the council and the administration that we can continue to discuss and talk about all the fees on the master fee schedule. I'd like to um, postpone that discussion and keep this um, agenda item on the next finance committee uh, meeting agenda without objections. I would order that. Any objections? So ordered. Um, Janelle, we would keep that item on the next finance committee agenda. The next, um, oh, I skipped something and y'all didn't call me to order. The executive session. How y'all let that happen? You said executive yes. session. Yes. I said executive yes. session and we talked about executive order. Y'all supposed to point of order me. Y'all slipping. Point of, what's your point? <laughs> you out of order. I'm out of order. <laughs> that would be the executive session. So let's hear from attorney, city attorney Angela Wheeler as it relates to the executive session. The city attorney's office requests an executive session for purposes of discussing pending uh, civil pending litigation. And since having an open meeting would have a detrimental effect, we would request that in the matter of the consumer's energy rate case, uh, MPSC case number U-020134. And um, if we was to vote to go into that executive session now, that means the room going to be clear, cameras and all. And um, Ms. Willard, do you have an estimate of how long that might take? I you would say 30 minutes max, if that. Max. That's on the high, high side. It could be less? Yes, I'm sure it would be less. And um, what's the council's pleasure? Ms. Worthy. Make a motion that we go into executive session. It's been moved that we enter into executive session. Ms. Worthy. I want you to reword that motion. I want you to move that we go in executive session for the reasons stated on the record. We need that detrimental effect language in that motion. For the reason that there could be a detrimental effect. The discussion in there. Okay, that'll be fine. So it's been a motion <laughs> properly made and on the floor to go into executive session because discussion in the open could have a detrimental effect on the litigation. <coughs> Mr. Garrett. I second that motion. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> any other executive session matters? Hearing no discussion, um, I would ask for a roll call vote by law. On executive that's session, Miss Brown. I said that's a legitimate question. Yes. But I don't. I don't think that he. Yes. I thought he was strong. I'm sorry. Yes. 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 Okay, let's get everything in order first before we go into executive session. We still got cameras, microphones. I'm trying to eat, trying to eat healthy. Right, I'm trying to be healthy. Are you crazy? Hey, Ms. Brown. Oh, boy. Oh, so 
Who? So are we ready? Did I do one? Consummated, I'm moving in on the electronic screen drive, but they ask us to move over so that they could, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I really don't want to, but this is the thing. <laughs> Okay. You're driving something new, aren't you? Oh, so, so it's just... Oh, are you ready? Oh, so you're not getting the copy. Okay, we're going to call this finance committee meeting back to order, and we're going to proceed with this agenda, hopefully expeditiously. Yes, if sir. I'm looking at the agenda right, we would be down to a special order. We dealt with the masterpiece schedule, we all agree? Yes. So now that would take us to item 190-003, a special order, a requirement dealing with the comprehensive annual financial report. Capra mm -hmm. and Yo and Yo and um, our own financial director, Mr. Newsom. I would turn it over first to Mr. Newsom and let him facilitate the communication. And um, let's try to do it as relaxed and formal and informal as we can. Mr. Newsom, you in charge. Uh, thank you, Councilman. I just want to ask a quick question so both myself and the person I'm introducing have a good understanding. Do you want her to go through all the way and then have questions at the end, or is it allowable to have questions while she's presenting? I, I would say it's allowable for council members to ask questions because if, if they got them, they grown. It's for us. Y'all know what's happening, so that's my position. Anybody object to it, we'll go through it formally and sort it out, but proceed and uh, bear with us if we are a curious learning council and we ain't scared to ask questions if we hear terms and things we need clarification on. I would ask the council to follow our practice of quick questions during the presentation, but don't let the presentation keep you from asking questions. Proceed. Okay. Thank you very much, Councilman. I like to... Just a little bit of background. I think, Council, by now you all have kind of gone through a cycle of this where every year the city um, has to perform an audit of its, um, all of its funds and also a single audit. The um, governmental, account, I'm going to say the governmental accounting audit of all of our financial reports and financial statements have to be done within six months of the end of the fiscal year. And then by March 31st, we also have to perform a single audit as well. Um, which is for uh, federal grants. And so with that being said, I want to introduce um, you know, Jamie Rivet, who is a partner a partner at Yo & Yo, um, who is our auditing firm. They have served us for a number of years, um, and I think many of you are familiar with their work, and particularly those that have been on the council for some time. So without further ado, I'll introduce Jamie and allow her to walk you through the presentation. And while she's coming up, you should have before you the single audit, the C, the CAFR, um, which is the all of the fin the actual full financial reports of all the uh, financial for the city, as well as a management letter um, as well. And so, with, without further ado, I will let Jamie have the floor. And you just signal me when you're ready. Perfect. Okay. 
Well, thank you very much for having me here tonight. We are going to go over the highlights from the audit. So you all should have a, what is the PowerPoint presentation to in front of you. Um, I will touch on what other pieces of information you have so that if I do refer to it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that way, if you get a chance to look through it or have any questions after the fact, um, you can reach out to either Huey or myself. So you have the capper which is the very large book looking item with your very nice cover that you have on the front. So this is the full CAFR. The report that has um, the blue on the bottom is your single audit. So this is what Huey had mentioned earlier that has the um, federal grant information in there. So this was required to be done this year and I'll touch on that a few things um, in the report, but it has already been filed and uploaded. So we have definitely surpassed that deadline of March 31st. Um, and then you also have a stapled letter too. This is our governance letter. Um, I wanna make sure that you do take time to read this. If you have any questions too, feel free to um, let Huey know and you can contact me as well and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have in that letter. So, to get started. Once um, you start, if y'all got something, just ask her directly without going through me if you have to quickly interrupt her for very quick. Thank you. So just to point out that an audit can only be issued by an independent licensed CPA firm, and really the preparation and fair presentation of the financial information in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles is management's responsibility. So that's really the set of rules that we have to follow as to how we're reporting the information. Um, management is also responsible for the design and implementation of the internal controls. And then as the auditor's responsibility, my team and I come in, there's about four or five of us that are there for about two and a half weeks on site, auditing the financial information that we are provided. And then what is in the CAFR is really our opinion on those financial statements. And you are issued an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance offered in an audit. So now we'll get into some of the numbers. So on this pie chart that we have here is your general fund revenue, um, which came in at 53.6 million. Um, just remember this is up through June 30, 2018, which is your fiscal year end. Um, and a couple items we'll point out here, as you can see, the largest area is your state revenue. So that makes up 35% of your total general fund revenue. Um, that is about 15.2 million from state shared revenue with 3.6 million coming from various state grants that you received and reported in the general fund. And then we have your income taxes. That came in at about 15.5 million and that makes up 29% and that's the city income tax revenue that the city receives. Any questions on this slide before I? Yes. Sure. Uh, where is the water income? Is that uh, charges for services? That's going to be in a separate fund. We have a water fund and a sewer fund, and I do have a couple of slides on that as well. So this, just, just this is the one on one. This is the one on one fund, the general fund. The water okay. fund is right. about nine. Yep. This is just your operating <laughs> fund. This is just a general fund. The first few sides um, really are focused on the general fund since that's the main operating fund of the city. So we spend more time looking at that. Can you go back to the previous slide? And I want to call everybody's attention to the income tax at 15 million and the property tax at 4.6 million. And that's so some people should know as we work to generate revenue, we make more off of income tax than property tax. I like to highlight that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this bar chart has been um, being reported since 2013. We're showing your general fund revenue. Um, and of course, I figured there's gonna be questions as to why is 2013 and 2015 so high? So 2013, um, that was prior to our firm doing the audit, but when I went back and looked at the financial information that was uploaded to the Department of Treasury, I was able to see that there was about 1.5 million in MOT grants that was received that year and there was 1.2 million in some consumers reimbursement dollars as well um, with some police and fire charges that came in the general fund that year. Uh, 2015, that was a year. Yes, ma'am. While you're on revenue, could I just ask, Sure. is the accumulated revenue in 2018, was that in line with the our estimated revenue? 
that we would receive in that year? Yeah, it was just short about 462000 from your budget. Okay. And mm -hmm. one thing you will know, um, I think it's in section six or four in the capital, you, you will see some budget to action mm -hmm. for each of the funds. I think it's section four. Yep, and I can point that out to you if you would like so you can see that every line item that we have to report on. We have your original budget, your amended budget, your actual, and then a variance as well. Okay. As reported. Mm -hmm. um, 2015 was the year you received the $7 million loan, too, and that was um, reported in 2015. So if we look at 2016, 17, and 18, you can see they're pretty consistent. The revenue did increase about 1.5% over last year. Um, and as I mentioned, you were right in line with your budget, about $462,000 short from your budget. So now still focusing on just the general fund, this next pie chart is looking at the expenditures side now. Um, so you can see by looking at this that the majority, 65%, of total general fund expenditures is related to public safety. Um, so that includes police and fire. Police was 23.3 million and fire was 9.5 million. Um, and then we have general government, which is about 25%. And if you do want to make a note, if you want to look at page 4-1 in the CAFR, um, it does show everything that you're required to report. So the state chart of accounts does tell us what we need to show under general government. So, for example, it includes the mayor's office, finance, city clerk, HR, law office. It's quite a laundry list of items that are included in that number. And before you move from that slide, district court, you know, we lost the district court to 67. So that 800,000 is one thing, but I want the public and I want y'all to notice the 900,000. It's the smallest number. And who is that? Legislative. Legislative us. So just for the record, we don't get paid much. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> we got to fix that. Okay, and then on the, um, the next slide on page six, we have a bar chart again. Um, we are looking at those expenditures, charting them from 2013 all the way to 2018. Uh, so when we do look at 2017 to 18, you can see that there was the increase. It was about a 10% increase over last year in expenditures. Um, first of all, it was in line with your budget. You actually came in under budget uh, for the current year for general fund compared to what was approved in the budget amendments. And really the increase when looking at the analytical data for that was related to the increase in the MERS payments as well as the increase in some public safety expenses. Uh, less costs are being recorded in the um, 205 fund, which is your public safety fund, and shifted to the general fund. So that's really for the increase. So it was about, um, you can see 50.3 million there, compared to 45.7 in 2017. The next chart is graphing your revenue and expenditures together in the same chart. So 2015, for example, that was the year you received that $7 million loan. That was also the year that the city came out of deficit, too. So the deficit was about $8.9 million. Um, so that year, you can see the gap between your revenue and expenditures was about $12.3 million. So that was the year that the city did come out of deficit. And then you can see in 16, 17, and 18, our revenue has been exceeding our expenditures for the past three years. Um, it was about 6.7 million gap in 2016. 2017 was 7.2. And this year, we're closing the gap. Our revenue and expenditures are getting closer of about 3.3 million there. So our revenues exceeded our expenditures of about 3.3 million. And just, just to bring this home a little bit, in the budget that we approved last year, for a fiscal year ending June 30, 2019, the current uh, fiscal year, we projected only a quarter of a million. So that, those numbers are getting even closer to the point that they're about to cross. And this is why you know, we, we talked at length about managing the, the legacy costs. And that's going to, those will continue to, to go up. And that's going to be a big, some very hard discussions we're going to have to have when we get, when we get in the budget come March and April. That legacy cost expenditure, expenditure is scheduled for 2021. Well, see, that's the thing. Every year we're paying. But, yeah, yeah we've but been we go, keeping up specific it. reserves, $16 million, maybe $19 million, <laughs> which we're trying to get to 
21 million by 2021, <laughs> something about 2021. Well, well 2021 is when you'll start to see the curve go up and up and up. It gets higher because the way MERS works <laughs> is everybody's put in certain divisions. Once, once each of those divisions have fewer and fewer assets, there's something called the three times minimum contribution that kicks in, which means you have to pay more cash <coughs> um, into the plan. So I think that's what you're talking about, where those, where those minimum contributions start to really um, Well, what I'm up. really talking about is the $16, 19000000 million dollar reserve. Oh, the fund balance. And we'll, yeah, that's we'll, the fund balance. Yeah, so we'll see when it's there and when it's growing, when it's declining. Well, that's what I'm watching. Exactly. And so what we talked about last year, what I always preach is that fund balance is, what is what's buying us time as legacy costs go up and up and up. And you have fund balance, positive fund balances in every single fund right now. But the problem is we need to buy ourselves some time to figure out what we're going to do with the pension and retiree health care costs and what gives us more cushion of the fund balances in each one of those funds. Now, unfortunately, you know, in this next budget cycle, we'll start seeing expenditure, we project expenditures to go above revenues start we think we are with this next budget and so unfortunately that fund balance is going to decrease what she's throwing here and what you'll see in the cap is that the fund balance increased because you spent more so it's i personally think about fund balance helps me sleep at night because i know down the road i've got escalating costs but in generally speaking fund balance just means that over time i accumulate more revenues than i have expenditures i understand yep Okay, any questions there? I just, um, and, and it's not a conversation for today, but it's just interesting to me that there's been consistently, and I know that you said that there were some other revenue sources, not mm -hmm. and some other things, but um, when you look at a community that came out of emergency manager deficit of 13 million, it's very interesting to me um, how much revenue is being seen over expenditures mm -hmm. and so hopefully that will be a conversation um, down the line like how do we all of a sudden um, start to have better revenue because that would be a good conversation in my opinion so that this community knows mm -hmm. where some not just from the mot because not all of that is you know mot and alone there's there's little bitty things and so it'll be interesting just you know for people to know because we're often asked to make decisions um, based on revenue and expenditure so like I said not a conversation for today mm -hmm. just some kind of, you know. yep. okay. perfect okay the next slide then is kind of um, they were talking about a little bit earlier is with the unassigned fund balance so it did increase about um, 3.3 yep 3.3 million over last year however um, you're gonna see in a few slides as we keep moving back um, you're going to talk we're going to talk about what the unfunded pension liability is as well as the OPEB the other post-employment benefits so your health care costs too so I do have a slide on there so I just wanted to mention that even though it is increasing, we do have to keep in mind, as Huey had mentioned, of what are we going to plan for for the future with those escalating costs. I have a question. I have sure. A request, actually. These three documents you've given us, uh, is it, including uh, the UNO letter, the capper, and this, is it possible to, I'm trying to get rid of paperwork, is it possible to get the electronic version of all of these? It's, yep, it is posted. Oh, my, it's mm -hmm. posted on the website. I can see you. It is on the city website. Yes. Okay. Yep. And it can be downloaded? Yes. Not okay. my presentation isn't because usually I wait and bring that tonight so I can present the results <coughs> tonight that hasn't been posted hasn't online. Been posted. So. Well, can um, you but, email that then? Sure. I yep. can, I can email, email it to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears and look at the water. Let me catch up. Let me catch up okay, yeah. So yeah. There we go. So I know the question was earlier, where's the water revenue? So this fund is just specifically with the water fund. Um, so you can see, and I will point this out, is the revenue did increase significantly over last year. Now I do want to make sure that we understand that that is the 20.7 million from the debt forgiveness um, from MDEQ that you got this year, as well as there was an increase in the chip and win funding for the current year. So I just want to remind everybody, this happened in November of 2017, so it's very close to the beginning of last fiscal year 
where we got that $20.7 million forgiveness loan, not the one to, to fund. Uh, this is the forgiveness, not this is a general forgiveness, and there was also the forgiveness of the dwarf loan for mm -hmm. 40 million for service line placement, which took place in May of 17, yep. which you wouldn't see in 18. So, yeah, so okay. this $20.7 million, this was debt we did have recorded on the books. Um, you had been paying on it year after year, reducing that debt. And then, um, as Huey mentioned, you did receive, and we have a copy of the letter in our file, that you did receive loan forgiveness or debt forgiveness of the $20.7 million from MDEQ. What would this look like without that loan forgiveness? Yep, perfect. And, and just, for the, just for the public, our fiscal year goes from... July 1st to June 3rd. Correct. That's the period of time. So, good question. I have that in my notes. Before we include these um, two main, like the debt forgiveness and then also the capital contributions, as we call it, for the win and chip grant, uh, the water fund actually had an operating loss of $21.3 million. So, prior to reporting that debt forgiveness, it would have been a loss. So, we had the debt forgiveness. And then we had capital contributions. Those are grants you get from the state and the federal government. Um, they're not promised year after year. They're not recurring. It's you know not something that you always want to count on every single year when you are looking at that fund. Um, so that is why the revenue looks like it did significantly increase. And overall, in total, it did. But the operations-wise, you did have a operating loss. And the combined two things that made it increase was amount of how much? 20? So 20.7 million in the debt forgiveness that was new for this year. And then you did... How much was that? Uh, 20,700,000. 20,000,000. And it was two times. And then there was an increase in the chip and win funding over last year. That increase was ten million more than last About year. About thirty million or more. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a referral request that our CFO at the next finance meeting do a presentation on the current status of the water fund. I'd love to. I would um, ask that that be put on as a special order. And I would order that without any objections. Any objections to that? I'm not an objection. Okay, and so if we gonna do that, we'll see what time and how our schedule look. I order that on that request for a special order by Ms. Fields on the next finance committee meeting for him to do a presentation on the water fund. The so that's so ordered fund. without objections. And um, I'm out of the way. I do want to kind of add on legislative as well. We need to talk about how we are uh, going to disperse, which one is it, Huey, the wind funding or the... Um, uh, RAP. 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 <laughs> they both start with W. I can never yes. get it right. Mm -hmm. um, the RAP funding, yes. um, because we have citizens mm -hmm. who are applying, but they're not getting the money, correct? Because yes, we haven't yes. decided what we're going to do. What we're gonna do. And so I have a lot in my ward that are affected. I get the emails a lot. So can we, can I do that in your committee? You, you want to do it on this, on this committee? Not on finance, but on legislative. Whatever. Do it now. I wanted to do it before I forgot because it kind of flows that we put a, uh, a special order. Uh, to mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. But well, I thought we would be giving an ordinance, ordinance. No. I thought it would be an ordinance. I thought it was a uh, policy that we're coming up with. Uh, Mr. Newsom, isn't it us coming up with an ordinance and policy, or is it more? Yeah, so just so, just to refresh everybody's memory, if I, I know Councilman Mays, you remember that the $633,000, which you $750,633. Um, that pot of money we still need, to, I need to present a proposal to you all. Um, and we're still in, I say, negotiation and discussion with DEQ. So yeah, we're still that's what subpoenaing she's people from DEQ. And can I just I'm ask standing. a quick question, real quick? There is a wrap 
program yes, that sir. is active and working. Right. But to, okay, I just to, want to make sure that if we, I may, there's two pieces. Uh -huh. Right. The regular rep right. is up and going through G card. That's correct. And, and the only thing correct. we're talking about is the extra six hundred or so Except thousand dollars, dollars that the city has asked for from the state right. to see about dispersing that. That's correct. Perfect. Okay. That's correct. If That's I may, I, I would, and I, I know we're getting, we're going over, but I got to do this. Mm -hmm. I would like for us not to call that rap because that is not rap. <laughs> I knew that was true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, wait a minute, Mr. President. We're going to ask you to leave. Where you know, get yourself right going. Huh? Is the water rate in sewer rate? Sorry, what's that? The water where rate? Where on this graph is the water and sewer rates increasing? So the water um, would be in the revenue on slide number nine. You you won't see the rate increases. That's just the revenue. Remember, we didn't increase. We didn't, we didn't kept the rates be. flat. So if you're going to see a rate increase, and really you wouldn't see it here because it's skewed. You see as it on your bill, though. You will see. <laughs> yeah. What you're seeing here is just going to be the revenue that we were able to collect. <laughs> now what we can do is do a dissection of, okay, how much of this is based on rates versus volume, people actually paying versus having the, versus people not paying, et cetera. But all you're seeing is the actual money that we collected in terms of revenue. Right. right. And then where we spent it. Thank you. Ms. Worthen, was you done? You what? You answered the question. He was asking, do we, you was asking, do we need policy or legislation as it relates to the <laughs> rap program? I thought it would be legislative. I thought it was something you said. Well, we got some issues that we are negotiating and doing. It could be legislative if we talk about rules and policy. It could be finance. It could be governmental ops. So whatever you choose is going to be what you get, what you want. Okay. Um, I think that the rate increase that we're seeing 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 all right, perfect. So our expenses, our expenditures, then, you know, just increased slightly, not too much over last year. So now we're going to focus on the sewer fund. The revenue, the blue line here, revenue was pretty <coughs> flat over last year. Um, we did see a decrease in the expenditures. Um, we decreased the amount of transfers out that we had this year of about 900000 and with the new calculation um, for the retirement health care costs, too, we did see a slight decrease um, included in there with the allocation to the sewer fund. And with the pension, <coughs> there were some new reporting requirements about two years ago. They call it GASB 68, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board required um, the enterprise funds to record all of their pension liability. So we are amortizing that as we go, and there was a decrease in that amount of expenditure too. So it does show that those expenditures um, decreased over last year. So just, just to make clear, so what she's talking about, our, the pension charge and the retiree health care charge are allocated amongst all the funds, right? Mm -hmm. Based on would we'll say something for me. Mm -hmm. What she's talking about is there was a change in the way that's allocated based on Gabby, um, 60, 60, 68, 68 for pension, 75 five for, for OPEM. OPEM. Mm -hmm. Retiree health care is OPEM. So because of that, that's the reason you're seeing some part of that dip. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean that we're paying less in retiree health care. It's just how much the sewer fund had to take on of it. Correct. Chris. Quick question or sure. clarification. Sure. Okay, your first uh, slides when you're talking about general fund revenue and general fund expenditures, okay, just to be clear, those do not include any of the enterprise funds. Correct. That's a separate thing. Correct. Okay. It's do just you, general fund. Do you have any pie charts that show us per those enterprise funds, those things, revenue and expenditures? Just what I showed you, not a pie chart. We did the graph, if you can back mm -hmm. up. Like this one, this mm -hmm. is revenue and expenditures mm -hmm. for the water fund here. Um, I do not break it out. They're really for revenue and sewer, excluding any grants mm -hmm. and debt forgiveness. Is just user charges and a little bit of other revenue that we have coming into those funds. If you do want to look at 3-12, 
on the CAFR, the one that looks like this. It has the sewer fund and water fund, and it does have the detail for the expenditures related to that. It's um, 3-12. That so may answer the question that you're asking. Is it possible to get it in the pocket chart? Sure. Well, I, there's really just two things I'm showing. Uh, you know, the general fund has quite a few components that go into revenue. Uh, if I were, I could do a pie chart on expenditures if you wanted. Um, if that's what just you're asking, just mm -hmm. asking if it's possible. Sure. Well, what I'd like to see is what's been confusing for me trying to track mm -hmm. is the way the accounting was done. Okay, when we took money that normally would go into a 296 and put it directly into 591. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a pie chart mm -hmm. of all of that. So we have the regular fees everybody's paying on their water bill. There's that revenue. And then there's grant revenue that they've been putting in different uh, discrete 591 accounts directly. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to see a pie chart that demonstrates all of that. So uh, if you look on 3-12, and if we look at the second column for water fund, the top there says operating revenue, so we have user charges and other revenue. And then we have the operating expenditures. <coughs> then if you go down to the bottom of that page on 3-12, it shows the debt forgiveness, and um, we have capital contributions <coughs> recorded on 3-13. So the capital contributions are those state and federal grants that you did receive that are going in to work on the water lines so that we then are increasing our capital and then depreciating them over their useful life. And Dawn and I did talk before she retired and Huey and I had conversations about that too, of creating that 496 fund. It, for our purposes and for the CAFR purposes, it is combined into one fund on here and reported in the water fund as one enterprise fund. It is really for, when Dawn and I were discussing it, for internal purpose so that it would make it easier to track those grant dollars. So she can run, whoever's going to be in her position, they can run a report that says, okay, in 496 related to the water grants. This is the grant revenue, this is the grant expenditures related to it, and now I can see them. It was getting, not commingled, but hard to pull out of the water fund, because you have other grants in there too. And I know those specifically were large dollar amounts and it was going to be easier to track more of an internal purpose on having that 496 fund. So, for, so yeah. And to that point, it still can be broken out. It's just, like you said, I love the word commingled in there. But in theory, you could still put that in there because that is capital related to the water delivery system, which the 591 fund, which is the water fund, is supposed to reflect. Mm -hmm. If it was in the 296, that uh, reports capital assets totally different. It does not get recorded within the fund. And really in 296, it is not you know, benefiting the water fund. And really that's what it is. It's increasing those assets. It's going to extend the life. You have new capital assets related to the water fund. For non-accountants, all this is very difficult to understand <laughs> enough to be able to follow mm -hmm. these spreadsheets. But I, I would just like to take a moment to say, and I'm sure council would agree with me, that we are going to miss Don Steele very much. Thank you, Don. Well-deserved retirement. Uh, we hate to see you go. And who's replacing her, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> That's a long conversation. <laughs> okay. we, can, we can start that conversation. Right, she leave. She left. She gone. Mm -hmm. um, the 296 fund, what's that? Just capital improvement. Special, special, special revenue. Special revenue. Mostly, mostly the 296. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Don gone. Mm -hmm. She left before the holiday or after? Right before the holiday. Right before the holiday. Maybe Miss Galloway can do it. <laughs> okay, so now we're, we're getting into the, the um, national fund slides to present. We have the pension funding that is on slide 11. So the blue bar chart that we have here is showing the fiduciary net position. So that is really the dollars set aside um, specifically to fund the total pension liability, which would be the red bar here. So the assets or the investments is $197 million, and the liability is $543 million. 
So you have a net pension liability of $346 million recorded on the books. Now, as mentioned earlier, that does get spread across various funds. So it's in the enterprise fund. You'll see it in the water and sewer fund. And then it also is the government-wide also is reporting that too. Um, so I just want to point that out. That kind of goes back to how we were talking earlier about increasing our unassigned fund balance in our general fund um, for this purpose. And the next slide. It's that um, pension liability. That pension liability is, is what we have now, or is it projected in the future? That's a, a liability we have now. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yes, De definitely correct. Yes. And so um, each year when we pay that liability, um, say, for instance, this year, now I'm seeing 147 and then 543. Each year we walk away leaving it with three, four hundred million. What, hap what happens is, that's correct. What they're doing here is accounting for the projected liability. So what projected saying, how far in the future? For the lifetime of all the pension, for, for the lifetime of everybody receiving a Okay, so it's based upon the employees and their year of service and right. that and type of projection. Tables, yes. et okay, yes. it's and a, so it might not all be due now. Oh, no. no. But it's going to be due to run this operation. And you have to show it on the books. You have, you have to, to show, show it, it on the books. Mm -hmm. and okay. And so somewhere or another, in order to take care of retirees and others, we got to make some stuff happen. And we do. Because each year, say this last year, we probably put how much in that? Uh, 24 million. 24 million. Mm -hmm. And that's a long way away from 543. Right. So if somebody walked up and handed us $543 million, we'd be happy as happy. You put it in the plan and happy not spending happy. on something else. Yes. Well, no, you ain't. I'm talking about for that. Okay. <laughs> I saw that. So, yeah, there are, this is a significant estimate. It takes your how long you have been here. They project out if you will retire from here what your life expectancy is, and there are a lot of estimates that go into this, and you pay an actuary, I am not an actuary, to do this calculation. Mm -hmm. So they do this every year for you, and they look at it, they look at those expectations, they make sure that they have the proper discount rate in there, and they adjust it as they go. So this number is significant and is based on a lot of assumptions. And that, and that determines how, if we're managing it well, the percent funded, right. um, yeah. or do, well, like, well, let me put that as a question mark at the end. <laughs> MERS is doing it for you, yeah. Um, that's who you pay into, and yeah. they are the ones doing that. The city is not controlling the MERS, right? I understand that, but in the it. past, we've been getting a report that we're, we're, we're managing it pretty well, right? What well, uh, when you say report for are you talking about generally speaking, there's an actual report that will say. I mean, right now under MERS, they mm -hmm. give us a bill. Right. Now in the past, under FERS, we had much much more control. Unfortunately, right. I'm not I'm I don't think we did the best job of managing it when it was FERS, which is Flint employee retirement system. Right. Now that it's MERS, MERS has oversight over a lot, not all, but a lot of county, city, um, village townships, their um, plans and mm -hmm. they are the ones that are invoicing us. And making that blue bar, which we haven't talked a lot about, is the actual amount of money we have set aside. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And plus also the flows of the contributions. Anyway. But the other bar is where we, yeah. we're really trying to get to. It's an uphill climb. I mm -hmm. understand it's that. But 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 it has to be managed. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the point I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. That because the last report that we had last year is that we were we were managing it pretty well. Mm -hmm. We knew that we we knew that it was, we knew it that it's a juggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We knew yeah. that. But there has to be a plan in order to get where we need to be. That's a very good point. Um, I'm, you know, just real quickly, I think, you know, mm -hmm. not, nothing that you all have to be, well, actually, you do need to be concerned about it. Mm -hmm. um, probably in February, you will be um, presented with a, a corrective action plan for okay. the pension and the OPEP that will come from the finance department. Um, okay. Public Act 202 requires that all municipalities that are funded 40% um, in the pension, and I think I think it's lower than that in the no. OPEP, they have to present uh, corrective action plans mm -hmm. to show how they're going to um, somehow, some way, um, get to a 60% um, 
funded status. And um, <laughs> we haven't. We are working towards getting some getting that together, and that has to be board approved. So something just to be aware of that we'll talk. A, we'll talk a lot okay. about this over the next few months. Thank you. And you know, PA two two that report, and then obviously when we get to budget, it'll be <coughs> a very interesting topic. Okay. Um, Huey, isn't it true though? As statewide, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. where where do we fall statewide? Because I'm active with Michigan Municipal League, mm -hmm. and this is a problem mm -hmm. in most municipalities. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. as we talk about this, I would like for us to talk about where we sit mm -hmm. statewide, because we can be looking at ourselves saying, "Oh my goodness," but this is a problem that hasn't been managed by us as a state. And so, and, and not that, that you, you know, want to not feel so bad, but you can know that there are some things that not just the city of Flint didn't mm -hmm. do well, mm -hmm. that wow. there weren't really safeguards in place to make sure that many municipalities. And so maybe if we can discuss that as we talk about this and mm -hmm. even find out what some of the other, you know, municipalities are doing. Yeah. to get there. And we can do that um, I, you know, when we talk about the corrective, corrective action plan. I will tell you that we aren't in last place. We're not definitely not. There are some pensions that are in the teens. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one in particular is zero. I can't remember the exact one, but I, I'm not going to call out anybody. But, um, several, when we get to OPEB, which is next, mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of um, OPEB that have no funding, which we don't repay as you go. Um, so, yeah, we're not in the last place. I can, I can definitely guarantee you that in terms of the pension. We're definitely not the only one that's open <coughs> for open. So that's a bit of good news. Misery and joy is coming. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it. It's not so misery, but it's more people involved. And that's really why the state come out with exactly. that Public Act 202 and now are making municipalities report on that. Mm -hmm. I believe last year was the first year, and now they're following up. Okay, if you are not at that percent, what do we have you do? So now you got to mm -hmm. submit a plan, and it has to be accepted, and they have to prove it so you are totally correct that it's not just a problem here it is all over the state and so now they're trying to do stuff how do we fix this how can we help mm -hmm. uh, my question was actually uh, similar to Ms. Galloway's I wanted to know whether anybody uh, in the administration or Mr. Newsom have, have been in contact with our with the state and or with our legislators because now that we have a new governor Okay, what we had been told before in different MML uh, presentations was it really is going to take probably the legislative act on the part of Michigan legislators. So does anyone have any contact? Do we know? Are they in the process of proposing something to I help actually, us all out of this? Or? I actually had, an in, I'm going to say, an informal conversation with um, someone that has connections at Treasury um, today, actually, um, a meeting with meeting with him um, and, and so I'm, and I've had I've got several channels and a lot of communities are screaming and what I think needs to happen I don't know if it's Flint I don't know who is going to coordinate the screaming but there's a lot right now Treasury and the new government is being hit with this because we're not the only ones screaming and asking for you know some sort of relief what has to happen I think someone maybe it's Flint Maybe somebody else. Someone has to, you know, kind of play coordinator to really sit down and, and coordinate um, the discussions with Treasury and the discussions with the governor's office. Um, trust me, I guarantee you, she's aware of it um, because this is something that Treasury's been grappling with for so long. And, and I'm not going to get too far into my personal opinion. I think PA 202 um, is a step in the right direction, but <coughs> obviously, it's it's definitely the stick without the carrot, right? It, how do I correct it? I need money to correct it, right? You know, Flint, right now, we're seeing our, or right now we think our revenue is going to be fairly flat over a 10 year time span. But how are we going to you know, come up with $300, $300 million here and in development trust months. for retirees? Right. I'd, I'd like to make a request for a referral, a referral request mm -hmm. to ask. Um, our state legislators, uh, Senator Ananick and Representative Neely, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's someone else we should write, but um, John Jerry, to um, come and discuss this with council, perhaps not at the next finance meeting, but perhaps the one after that. Can you, can you do that? Uh, 
Um, Any objections? No. If there's no objections, then we would go not the next, but the next. And Ms. Brown, you'll help facilitate them communications. Um, so ordered without objection. Now, keep in mind, we did request and want them in the hearings as well. Might be a different subject matter, so we'll work it out with no objections at this point, so ordered. Because we don't even know if we'll still be in here and then we'll see, but so ordered. Um, how far are you away? Let's have, keep moving. Let's keep more. moving. Let's keep moving. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get up through this. Like we got a room full. Let's okay. keep it moving. Let's speed it up. All right. So the next slide, same concept here, but now we are looking at the retiree health care. You'll hear um, people refer to it as OPEB, other post-employment benefits. So that is what you see on this slide here. Um, the only difference is there's no funding source for that. We do not have investments specifically set aside. Um, it is pay as you go. So the city is paying it as you get the bill. You are paying it as you go. That a liability, that's a change for this year. It's called the SB 75. We're required to show that on the books for the OPEB liability, and that was $279 million. So that is recorded in your water fund, sewer fund, and in the government-wide statements as well. Okay, so I'm almost done here. So the last few slides I have really are um, any of the comments, recommendations, and findings that we had while we were doing our audit. We did have one item that we called a material weakness. So this was related to the capital asset reconciliations. Um, as was mentioned, you had a lot of turnover in the finance department this year, and when we came out to do the audit, there was um, some material journal entries that we found when we were auditing that needed to be posted to the financial records so that they did match. So you do have within the software that's used a specific module for capital assets and there was some reconciliations that did not match the general ledger. So we did spend quite a bit of time on getting those up to speed, working with the new staff in your office that is going to be doing it. Um, and I feel that He's up and running, and he understands it, and that it should be improved for next year. Yes. Um, my question for you was, what is what was the um, significant finance turnover? <laughs> we lost. Okay, so in calendar year 18, we lost our budget and grants administrator. We lost our deputy finance director. We lost. Um, deputy, who was the deputy finance? Well, director? deputy CFO was Don Steele. Okay, but we didn't lose her till December twenty first. Uh huh. And, but and remember, based on this audit, we did though, not, right? We did not have a budget and grants administrator for the whole year. Right? Okay. So we didn't have. Well, we also we also lost the executive assistant who was doing a lot of entries as well. So there was a lot of, sh and then we also lost Janine Thompson, Janine, yeah. who thank you, I almost mm -hmm. forgot that was a big one, who was our chief audit officer. Okay. And I guess my question, and the reason why I ask that question is because this, what this audit is based on what ended June 30th. Right. Correct. That's okay. when it ended, and that's the financial right. information cut off. The However, there's lots of yeah, there's the lots of work that September. happens after. Right. The city's not even ready for us to come out and start our audit Just until September. October. Okay. So there's lots of reconciliations that are being done. There's you know. Even if work is done in June, sometimes you're not going to get a bill for that until July, sometimes August. So if you're waiting on some of that stuff just to reconcile and get it. Um, lots of different departments, you know, that the finance department is waiting on information from all different departments to, you know, reconcile the grants, making sure they have everything, especially capital assets. I mean, DPW, police, fire, I mean, they're all spending and purchasing capital assets. So those things do take time, and it does take you know, from June 30th is a cutoff, but usually beginning of October is when we come out. And Jamie, the only reason why I ask that question is because I get that there should be some straggling. Mm -hmm. But but I guess, and, and you have to forgive me, I come from a banking background. You don't get to June 30th, and then you start reconciling stuff for the next three months. Mm -hmm. The next three months should be, I'm just saying, I'm just, we could, right? I, I don't know how municipality don't, mm -hmm. but... There should be, I, I would hope, or maybe we need to look at, are there other um, best practices mm -hmm. that can be put in place? 
Yes. So that by the time June thirtieth comes, <laughs> you only have the few because if the if the police department or some of the other departments are holding on to billing or holding on to different things that are really causing your team to fall behind, it just seems like there should be some best practices that are put in place where we're looking in April saying, hey, let's see where we are as of right now so that we don't have to look for that later on. Cause, and, and, and I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, when, when I hear, I just was wondering about that. And that's not something we no, discussed no, no, I just want to add a little mm -hmm. color commentary. I didn't want to get too deep into this because mm -hmm. of time, but I do want to say this. You are right. One corrective action, you know, we do have, I think uh, somewhere uh, we do have the corrective actions that we're um, that we're on. Um, presenting that and walking through it. Mm -hmm. Specific for capital asset reconciliation, you should be doing that twice a year, as you know, the, or really quarterly. We don't have the capacity to do it quarterly. Mm -hmm. You should really be looking at your capital assets twice a year. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we've talked about and going forward, we will be doing that twice a year. So currently the person that's responsible for this started looking at, at what at all the capital at all the um, fixed asset purchases, capital asset purchases, including maintenance, including uh, professional services that can be mm -hmm. capitalized. Currently working on it now for everything that, that has been recorded through um, December thirty first. Mm -hmm. So that will help, so that we're not under the gun. And I think you have a very good point. Mm -hmm. We should not be waiting till the end for for this specific one. Some things are recurring. Right. APs recurring, right? And, but for us to go through and look at all the transactions, say okay, this can be capitalized, this can't be capitalized. We should be talk stopping and doing that twice a year at least. And I was only thinking about yep. you guys doing because now that Dawn is mm -hmm. gone, she's been there a long time. Mm -hmm. That's a huge um, person that you have to make up. And so, um, you know, just making sure that even when new people come in, there should be something that they could take in case they can't get trained by the person that can help them just be up and running. Even if it's just a spreadsheet that says all you got to do is add things in and the spreadsheet will, you know, make sure you have it. So, yeah, whatever you need. We, we, we definitely have been looking at that. We can talk about that. Here, let me do this. Go ahead. Um, an example of a cash capital asset reconciliation in the police department. Give me an example. Yeah, give us that for great. So, okay, so let me, a great example, which is a pain point, would be the service line, the service lines. Okay. So, like we've been talking about quite a bit, in theory, when I go out and have work done to replace service line, to do service line replacement, it hits the 801 account professional services, but I still have something that I can capitalize and report as a long-lived asset. And that needs to be, we need to go through, look at all the things that hit AP, which is accounts payable, and say, okay, fine, it's capitalized. It's not to be capitalized, and then go forward from there. So, so there's certain rules that we have to... That, that you have, have to, to follow for follow. capital expenditures and capital assets. Right. You have to reconcile it. And so keep in mind, I'm talking today with loose teeth, so <laughs> Miss Fields, go ahead. Let's try to get through this thing. Um, okay. After this, let's try to get through this thing. I can't hardly talk, so y'all got it. Did the auditors have any problem with what occurred with this grant money being put into a 591 fund, allocated yep. within a 591 fund, rather than a 296. And, um, and now we've got yet another thing we have to track. So I don't know what kind of reports we're going to be able to get, but if I wanted to look at the water programs mm -hmm. and the wind funds and the road restorations from what, you know, it's going to be really hard to track, you know, 296, 496, 591, um, did the auditors have any problem with the way that was done? And Mr. Newsom didn't start that 591 thing, but how did the auditors view that? Was that correct for Mr. Sabuda to do it that way? To record it in the 296 fund? 591 fund. Oh, 591. Instead of putting it into 296 and then doing it as expenditure, etc. Yeah, it, it ended up in the right spot. If it was recorded in 591, the expenditures then are in the water fund. That's where we want them because what happens is you do pay for it and you expense it, but it does get recorded then as a capital <coughs> asset. So unlike the governmental funds, and I know this is way above probably what you even need to know, but in the governmental funds, so if we talk about your general fund, if you purchased um, some computers, you're just going to expense them. So you would have a debit to 
um, computer equipment, expense line item, and a credit to cash. If you purchase the same thing in your water or sewer fund, you actually have an asset, an equipment, is what gets debited, cash is, cash is credited. Yeah, so it's totally different accounting rules for what type of fund it's in. So by it being in the 296, which is the governmental, that's where they expense everything and don't record the asset, it needed to be in 591 or 496 so that you could record the water fund asset because it is extending the life. You do have equipment that's going to last more than a year. And related to this capital asset reconciliation, you know, there was so many with the lead line replacements. What got capitalized? You can only capitalize the city only owns a portion up to the house. Once you reach the house and the portion that goes into the house, it's not the city's, it is the homeowner's. So there was a lot of work that had to be done on those lead line replacements. But how are we doing, for example, part of the problem we're having now, uh, the contractors are going out and they're doing explorations to see what kind of line. Mm -hmm. So they end up not replacing lead lines. So surely the city's not recording that as an asset, no. piece of that money. No. So only the money only where the lines have been actually replaced. Right. Correct. Is capitalized. Mm -hmm. But okay. you still recognize the expense, expense. and mm -hmm. ask for the reimbursement. So it, regardless of whether or not we capitalize or, ex or expense, whatever we expended, we ask for it through a reimbursement request. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to see, you know, if we wanted to look at our assets versus liabilities. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand out of this <clears throat> water fund stuff and like, okay, now they go restore the road and parkway. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not recorded <coughs> as an asset, is it? Mm -hmm. It is? It would be, yep, improvement. It would be um, recorded in the governmental fund that's unless it was specifically related, like usually a major street and local street will do road work, and that does get um, added to the capital assets Well, as since well. we took the money, the grant money, and put it right into a 591 fund, including for restoration, how was that recorded as a there, government fund in There's an intercity charge that takes place between 202 and mm -hmm. 591. So that's how that would happen. So anything that is, any work that's being done in 202 would charge, there would be a flow of money through 591. Yeah, so inner city charge, so you have a revenue and an expense. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, just fair warning. I know you didn't start it, mm -hmm. but at some point in time, mm -hmm. you're going to have to figure out how to give us a report that shows us the whole picture of the water project. Mm -hmm. and revenue you could, and expenditures. You could run a 591 and 496 and then do a total. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But then show it separate so they can see a grant. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the good news is we do our, all that capitalization took place in one department code ID. That's yep. one thing that saves us in terms of what hit 591. Yeah. So, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and, okay. and one last thing. I'm sure. sorry. Uh, but maybe I'm moving on and you had a question about... No, I was getting ready to say, let's move on. But <laughs> One last I'm question. Turn the I went ahead and, you know, read, read your letter, and I forget what you call this letter, but um, uh, I noticed the comments about the procurement cards, the P cards. Yes. And, uh, uh, comments that weren't so good. Yes. And uh, yeah. I also want, at some point in time, Mr. Newsom, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't want to build up our finance because we have so many things going on, but I do want to talk about this, our procurement card policies and what we're doing because I am aware of a situation where uh, someone this year incorrectly used someone else's P card without authorization or permission. Mm -hmm. Point of information. Is procurement card, purchase card on that list? Yes, yeah, P cards. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, purchase same. card. You, I just want to make sure that same. Yeah. Same. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. yeah, so that does get to my next slide. Yeah. Um, we had the current year comments. So they are um, on in the stapled letter. It starts on page six. These are just comments and recommendations. So they are not things that we felt were significant, and we did not call them a material weakness or significant deficiency. These are just things we found during our audit process and procedures that we felt that would be a good way to help strengthen the internal controls and be more efficient. So I do have five items listed there. Um, you can read through them. Those are just our comments and recommendations, and they are on page six of the governance letter. So that's the stapled letter. 
um, the major programs that we turn to the next page. So because you do receive more than 750000 in federal grants, you're required <coughs> to have what we call a single audit. Um, that is what's included in this bound copy. And we did have to test four major programs this year, which is quite a bit. Typically in the past, the audits, um, single audits I've done for this city, we've only had to test maybe two, sometimes three. But we did have four because you did receive a lot of federal grants. So those are the major programs that we tested. And on the next slide, we did have um, no material weaknesses that we noted, and we did have three items that we considered a significant deficiency, and they're related to non-compliance. Um, the loan requirements, reporting, and the uniform grant policies and procedures. And those are also listed in here with a corrective action plan, which came from the finance department. So a couple of the items really were related to really old loans that you don't even have that procedure anymore. It's not even required. Um, but we do follow the federal guidelines. It's a checklist. It's a yes or no answer. There's really no gray area for us to play with. So those items are noted in here. Okay. And you understand them? Yeah. We, in fact, I have put together the corrective, the corrective action. Yes, so. it came from him. Right. Yes. I have a question for you, Jamie. Okay, sure. so um, long standing balance sheet account. You put in here. here that this was, um, that have remained unchanged in several fiscal years. Mm -hmm. But you didn't identify, or is there a page in your audit which you identify exactly what these? Um, long outstanding balance sheet accounts are? No, because this isn't a material weakness or significant deficiency, it was just a, comment, a recommendation and a comment from us. So what happens is we do run analyticals where we look at current year to prior year and we kind of scan down and we notice there are some liability accounts and they were not material, did not change from last year. So we just wanted to make sure that they were accurate and if they needed to be cleared out. Oh, okay. And then the second one, the purchase card. Mm-hmm. Um, I was you, back. Huh? Was well, I let her. I let her finish. <laughs> okay. So that right. she wouldn't have anything. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, oh, I see one. Yeah, you got one yeah, more. Yeah, I have one more slide. Oh, You're I'll good. You I can do the P card. So, okay. yep. And the reason why I'm asking about that is, um, although you only selected various cards. Um, I would like to know, Huey, which mm -hmm. card mm -hmm. you, you uh, selected um, because you put, as a result of our test, we identify one instance That's in which supporting documentation was not maintained for a purchase mm -hmm. and therefore we cannot conclude that this purchase was an appropriate expenditure to the city. In addition, there were several instances in which the purchase was not approved in accordance with city policy. And so my only question to you is, you only selected one. There's a lot of cars that are out there, one. Um, at one time, um, this body sought to change um, an ordinance mm -hmm. because there was some concern on how the cars were being used. And so my question to you is, would this be an area, one, that you could audit in and of itself, one? And then my other question is, when you did your audit, did you do any of the audit that had anything to do with the fast start and or our lead line replacement? Because we're getting so much money. Mm -hmm. Did you audit any of those? Yes. So back to the P cards. So the P cards, we specifically picked multiple people who had access to the P card where we felt there could be a chance for management override. So could somebody that has access to the computer and be able to submit um, a payment for that do it? Or is it somebody in a position where somebody could come up and just say, pay my card because of their position? So we picked four or five different individuals and we did pick multiple months and looked at the P card support for that. The, we did have one item that did not have support. So when we said, here's the P card transaction for this dollar amount, show me the invoice that goes with that. That could not be provided to us. We did have several instances that it was not approved by the proper person per the city policy. Also, I do know that the policy was changed January 
Maybe May. May, okay. Yeah, we, we updated May of 18. Right. So yeah. I will tell you that all but maybe one or two were purchases prior to the change in your policy. And just so you know, the we had a complaint from Alec Gibbs come in on that purchase and stuff to the ethics folks last night. They accepted it. We'll be reviewing the purchase and ordinance. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, what Wait. department was that? Also, uh, the Ingo's not able to. Oh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. We did multiple. Um, Departments that have P cards too. We didn't just focus on one department. We s spread it out. But uh, I did provide Huey with the results from that, as he had asked, "What is this?" You know, because when we find something, when we can't find something, we don't just write it down. We ask Dawn. You know, she tries to find it. It's not just like, "Oh, we didn't have it, so it's done." We did spend time to try to make sure it's not just missing or misfiled, or we couldn't find it. So um, these things were reviewed with Dawn, and then I did provide a copy to Huey as well. And Jamie, just want one last question. Sure. When you come in, um, how do you guys decide which areas that you um, select in your audit? So we focus on management override of controls as an area. Um, if there are any areas that finance feels maybe they're having an issue with or payroll, if somebody's not approving time cards, we listen. You guys are here on the day-to-day -day basis, not us. So we take direction from you know, various individuals that we talk to as well for pre-planning for that audit so that we can focus on those management override of controls. And just the nature of cities too, we're always looking at water sewer rates and billings. Um, for you guys with capital assets, we know you had a lot of grants coming in, so we did spend a lot of time um, looking at those grant dollars and the expenditures too. So we did we did test those um, so for your question. That, let's just say that like counts, like there's been, people in this community that have been asking for things like forensic audits for years, right? And so as part of the leadership, as the legislative body of mm -hmm. the city, do we have the ability to share with your company some areas that we deem might be a concern and you therefore take our concerns at face value and consider those areas as well? Not too much. I'm not talking about overloading you. But the, the reason why I ask that is because in hearing you as an auditor, and, and I only have banking background, mm -hmm. right? You don't you don't know when you're getting audited. They literally show up <coughs> at your door at the same time that you do, and so you don't have time to prepare for anything, and they audit every single instrument in your branch. Mm -hmm. So um, when I hear you say the finance department or other people in leadership will share with us <coughs> their concerns, it, it makes me, you know, wonder, mm -hmm. do, do we therefore have the ability to not have you, that's why I was asking if you had your own areas, to not have you, we navigate you away from some areas that we might be very weak in or we might need more things. That's why I was mm -hmm. asking that. Yeah, no, we work for you. So, <laughs> you know, and, you guys are the ones that hired and, us, so if you have and issues And we have the concerns. opportunity, our greatest thing is to inquire and get things done. And financially, you know, we don't hold it up. If it's something that y'all want to discuss a particular area, we can do it. We can do it in a regular meeting. We can do it in hearings, whatever. So we've got that ability. I want her to finish up, but I ain't, you know, before I start cutting people off, I'll leave the room and let President Winfrey chair because I ain't going to take back what I said. So, Mr. Newsom, I ain't going to cut you off. Go ahead. What you Just trying to say? Quick. I'm trying to get her to get done. Just real quickly, I, I will say that um, as part of the audit process, I remind council that you know we do, uh, Yo and Yo does engage with certain members of the council. Um, to make sure that we are, we, you all have kind of a voice in the business, so to speak. And I don't, I, I, don't, I think. I called two, but I didn't get any calls so back. I would strongly encourage council to go forward. Yes. I called two council members. Who? But 
I'm not here to point. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If I'm finding it, they, they, they better call me because I usually I'll answer my next phone. Time. Well, you might better okay. call this time. I might not even be here next time. So but, this was the time for me, finance check. But, this is we'll a, but I will strongly encourage counsel to take advantage call. of that. Um, and typically it is. I won't call people out, but... Hopefully well, I forward. called people out. Okay, let it let yeah, her finish. We, you know, I, I, I'm finna, I'm finna chair this to conclusion. Go ahead, no interruptions. Let's see what we can get done. Okay, last slide. Here we go. If you want to talk, come through the chair. I ain't gonna allow it. Go on, finish this. Up. <laughs> so I do have a slide for future challenges up here. Um, we have talked about the escalating health care costs, increase in retirement costs. Um, declining tax base. However, you did have a slight increase this year, but the previous few years have been a decline. Um, there's currently no revenue stream to replace the maintenance and equipment on the infrastructure that you have. Um, ongoing litigation is always a challenge. And then those two unfunded liabilities that we talked about related to pension and OPEB. And that is all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And feel free right. to reach out to Huey or myself okay, if you have look, questions after. I could say is there any questions, but they all been answered. So I know it ain't going to be no questions. Now look, my question to Ms. Brown, do we move to accept this? What action, if any, do we need to take, Mr. Newsom? Anybody know? If not, then by special affairs or counsel, if there's some action we need to take, Let's let's get it done, okay? Makes sense. Um, beg your pardon. Yeah, you usually accept it. Okay. Now, when when we usually accept it, if we accept it, it's by resolution. Yo and yo say we usually accept it. So, do we do we want to do it in committee or in council? We do it in committee. We do it. Yeah. Record. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's so let's do this. I want to entertain a motion to move the record of this discussion of the of Yo and Yo's audit to council, and um, then we'll accept it at council. So, Miss Mr. Guerra. Make that it's been moved that we make this record. We move this record to council um, for action of acceptance in the next council meeting. Is that fair, Mr. Gear? Yes. Uh, Mr. President Winfrey. I support the motion. So it's been moved and properly second that we make this record um, move to council meeting as we prepare to accept the audit presentation of Yo and Yo, any discussion? Janelle, you good with that, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. Ms. Brown? I'm going to talk privately tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any other discussion, questions, or whatever? Ma'am? No, I'm good. Thank you, sir. Mr. Newsom? I'm good. Thank you all for your time. Okay, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye or aye. raise your hand. Aye. Any opposed? I record that vote is nine to zero as I continue to speak <coughs> carefully. <laughs> okay, let's move this agenda some more. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> All right. The next item on the agenda, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the next agenda item would be 19000. This is a change order number two, AECOM, additional program management service, so forth and so on. Now I met with AECOM and others, and I done looked at this. And um, the administration seemed to be bringing this and recommending it. And so at that point, 
Mr. President, I was ready to introduce AECOM, but I always prioritize with council people. What are you thinking, Mr. President? Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm thinking that we ought to move it to council and then we can get some discussion on it and then maybe in a, a, a Okay, them out. rules going to hit. You are the president. You got the flow. What are you saying? I'd you like, say what you're thinking. I want to know what you're saying or doing. I'd like to, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move uh, resolution 190000 to council. There has been a motion on the floor to move 190000 to council. Um, Mr. Davis, I seen your hand. I was going to recognize okay. you, but then Mr. Griggs got my attention with his verbal. So, Mr. Griggs, you are recognized. And Mr. Griggs, he's talking to you. Mr. Griggs, he's talking to you. Mm -hmm. You are recognized, and you say you want to second it, yeah. moving it to council. So it's been moved and properly second to move this to council. And so um, any discussion? Mr. Guerra. Yeah, I won't be supporting that. I honestly think that maybe we just put this up for bid before we decide to go to ECOM again. Okay, Mr. Guerra, that's what you say. So. Anybody who will be supporting it, there's going to be some non-support and some <clears throat> support. I want to go back and forth parliamentary, parliamentary wise. So, I, anybody want to speak on supporting it, Mr. Davis? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I highly support it because AECON got the experience and they've been overseeing the project from the very beginning. It would make sense to open up the concerns, especially when it comes to health and and having a company of the capability of AECOM, it wouldn't make sense changing. So I highly support AECOM. I'm done. Okay. Any discussion, any more con? We've had some con, some pro, Miss Fields, that you've got the flow. Okay, a uh, number of things. Number one, I'd like to make a referral to the law department. I would like an opinion from our city attorney on whether she feels that AECOM actually fulfilled their current contract, their original current contract. You say you want an opinion from the legal department on whether they fulfilled a original contract? Correct. Well, Miss Wheeler is here now. You want to speak on it, or you want to wait, or you want to issue something written? I want a written Well, I, I know it, but I'll say she's here now, and I'm asking if she want to say something, not say nothing. I know what your request was, but that's what I said. You going to pass and wait? Okay, she'll pass and wait. Okay, Miss Galloway. Is Mr. Benzik here today? Rob Benzik is here. Mr. Benzik. Hello, come in, Benzik. come I in. I wasn't actually through. That was just my first thing. Okay, well, thing. okay, well, then, Miss Galloway, if she ain't through, you wanted to proceed? Proceed. Well, I would like that referral made, please. Oh, the referral? Yes. I'll see if I make it. I'm thinking about it. You want to proceed? Yes, but... I'm not going to argue over, but... It, it uh, well, you ain't the argument. only one arguing. Every, you got Miss no. Brown and Miss Worthen no. talking about it. I done received it. I'm going to deal with it. I just didn't deal with it now. Proceed. I know what I'm doing. I'm. Hey, hold up. Y'all over there taking the referrals and talking about that. I know what I'm doing. It's going to be done without objection. It might be done with objection. I'll get to that. Let me handle this meeting. I ain't treated nobody wrong yet. I heard what her referral is. Y'all want to make a big to-do about it? Let's deal with it. Now, what if I say I don't want to order it and y'all have to appeal? It's best not to make a big deal when I'm chairing. So proceed, Ms. Fields. Okay, I but this ain't going to be referral and order and stuff all day long because it bogs the city down. Let's proceed. I'm more than sure. You sure you want to proceed? Because Ms. Galloway is on deck. I ain't playing. 
I'm sure. I have a whole page of things I would like to note. I would like to note, number one, that, uh, and this may have been where Ms. Galloway was going, but on this resolution for AECOM, it is missing the signature of our DPW director, for one thing, Mr. Benzik, and there is no staff review form on this. So I think it's pretty strange that we want a $4.8 million contract uh, that's going to be overseen by DPW, and there's no signature at the DPW director. So I'm just going to continue and list mine, and then we'll talk about what we can talk about. Uh, I also want to ask whether during the uh, various uh, hearings or committee or whatever where Mr. Moss was there and they were asked about using the predictability model, he kept saying they weren't using that because it wasn't written into their scope of work. Well, one of my big problems with AECOM was that, in my opinion, they did not fulfill their contract. They only did, I don't know, 1,500, 1,600 lead line replacements where I read in the contract they were supposed to do 6,000. I think it would be wise to say you believe or allege they did. I don't appreciate statements right. such as that that bring, could possibly bring liability on the city. Well, I would they, ask they that we qualify. Mr. Mace, they themselves said they, they well, I don't know if I've heard that, so proceed. But that's not, that's you speaking, it's not the council. So Mr. Moss stated that they weren't using the U of M predictability model because it wasn't written into the scope of work. So I see nothing that changes that. And they use that as a justification for why they dug all these holes uh, which do not lead to actual lead line replacement. So that topic leads me to the National Research Defense Council, okay, who is the, the, some of the main litigators along with the ACLU on the Concerned Pastor Settlement. Um, I actually called Eric Schwartz because Ms. Wheeler stated uh, at that meeting that she felt the city would be following that predictability model. So I called Mr. Schwartz this week and asked him whether, in fact, AECOM or the city had been in contact with him about this. And he said, no, they had not, not directly. He said the NRDC had asked him to give them 6,000 addresses, okay, for most likely lead addresses. Um, and then they wanted to add two or 300 more as part of their proposal and then they wanted to come back after 2,000 addresses had been done and let have the contractors give him that info rather than him acquiring the info immediately as it was done under General McDaniels, not as it had been conducted under AECOM because it's a learning model, so you don't want to wait <coughs> until you have that many. So anyway, so then I asked uh, at a meeting today, uh, with Ms. Wheeler and say eight, some eight or yesterday, yesterday. AECOM people, um, uh, whether number one that we had received a finished <coughs> NRDC proposal, um, and whether council has to legally approve that because it's a settlement agreement. And Ms. Wheeler said she wasn't sure she would get back with me on that. Um, so I don't know whether we have some agreement with the NRDC about specifically how we're going to go about this or not. And I certainly wouldn't uh, want to put this through for $4.8 million until I have some sense of what is the settlement agreement that we're going to be held uh, accountable to. Uh, and I also am not seeing any proof that the city is currently um, working according to that predictability model. In fact, just the opposite. I'm getting calls, even though AECOM's contract ended December 31st, so we technically have no company providing oversight on the pipe replacement program, the contractors are out there still backhoeing, looking for lead pipes, but they're doing it according to whatever methodology AECOM was using that led to fewer pipe replacements. Um, so I, I don't know what we're doing. We seem to be very in a period of real confusion. It's not very well organized. We're not getting real answers. I don't know if the right hand knows what the left hand's doing. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't support 
this for those reasons. And I'll tell you, there's another reason why I couldn't support this. You got about a minute to tell it under the rules, so speak expeditiously. Okay, I want to say that the original bid review group for the AECOM contract are all individuals who subsequently have contributed to the mayor's campaign. The contractor itself, AECOM, and its um, individuals who work there have contributed to the mayor's campaign. The sub-consultants hired by AECOM have all, contract, have all contributed to the mayor's campaign. Now, that may not be illegal, <coughs> but I will say it's not appropriate to see this direct line between anybody involved with these multi-million dollar contracts also making contribution to the mayor's uh, campaign fund. So that's yet another reason. Miss Field, your time is up. Miss Field, your time is up. You yeah. don't get a second time. You was exhausted to five minutes the first time. That's the rules you made. Let me say this. I want to make sure that everybody hearing these things said their allegations. I've heard stuff said in there that ain't factual. Miss um, Galloway proceeds. So the media, y'all can look, listen, oh, I've heard stuff that wasn't factual, and I wish people were qualified. We are an elected governmental body with a responsibility as trustees to give accurate information. Miss Galloway proceeds. Um, Some of that stuff wasn't even matter. Well, I will say that yesterday in the meeting, or telephone, I have a telephone meeting, that was done with AECOM out of the um, number of excavations or whatever you want to call it. Th according to them, they replaced 1,614 lines. That came from them yesterday in a phone conversation. My question to you, Rob, um, Mr. Benzik, is um, in looking at this contract. Who? Oh, through the chair, Mr. Benzik. I'm listening. Um, when, when I looked at um, the original $5 million contract that came before us, there wasn't a lot that I knew about um, the contract. And um, you can go back to the record, and I said to you, I said, Rob, um, I'm going to trust that what you're saying, that you really need this, and, and, and if anything comes out that I'm concerned with, you don't even have to wonder. I'm just not going to give my vote away like that. The, the concern that I have and what I would like some research done, I would like to know how long General McDaniel oversaw this project in 16 and all of 17, if I'm not mistaken, until his end date. How many they were able to get done and how they were able to get done without us being in a contract with a contractor for $5.2 million. And now, after the this amendment and the amendment that was approved last month in December um, would bring this contract for a two-year period to just over $10 million. And the reason why that's concerning for me, not that they don't um, know what they're doing because, you know, they were learning, and the reason why I say they were learning is because that's what they said. When I was trying to get measurable expectations, I was being told, well, this is the first time something like this is being done. So we, we don't know. Um, and so, Rob, that's the, the work that I would like for you to do. I don't know that you can answer it right now. If you can, that would be great. Um, but what does the DPW director do, right? Because usually, I'm not saying that we have all of these projects going on at the same time, but generally, is it fair to say that the DPW director would be responsible for the oversight of some of these projects that AECOM is being responsible for? Okay, so you asked a lot. You understand the question? No, I asked a specific question right then. Yeah, but you had said something earlier. Yeah, you had you asked him, I've been yeah. listening. Mm -hmm. So you understand the question? I understand the, the latter question. The last yes. question. Proceed. Uh, if I can, Mr. Chair, through you. You uh, and her. Councilwoman Galloway, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I have a lot of things under my umbrella. So these projects are typically extra, really. So, I mean, the, the wastewater plant, uh, wastewater collection, stormwater, uh, water distribution, the water plant, facilities maintenance, transportation, street maintenance um, are all under my umbrella. 
So when you ask me, is it something that I would normally do? I do oversee AECOM. I oversee the work that they do. I am only one person and I can only do so much in a day. That's one of the reasons why we brought Mr. Hamilton on is to help with some of that workload. Um, I do manage projects every day. I mean, we have the Kersley Dam project. Um, we have multiple street projects that will be starting up. We also have multiple other wind funded projects that will be starting up. So my day is, is quite full um, most, most every day I'm here and I typically don't go home till six or seven o'clock at night and I start at usually eight o'clock in the morning. And Rob, I'm not gonna minimize what you do, not at all. But I am going to say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the first DPW to be paid the, the salary that you're paying, which is um, part of it is being compensated by Mott. And, you're, and, and I'm only saying since I've been here since 2013, and you're the first DPW director to have as many contractors or um, what is the word that we don't, we don't call it contractors. Um, what is it? Uh, vendors. Uh, no, not vendors. No, um, the the you, we have a firm, the consultants. We have a firm that is supposed to be overseeing the water treatment plant. Maybe I'm incorrect. That we are paying them. What is it? Three million dollars. Yeah. Three hundred fifty thousand a year, I believe. A th but how long is their contract? Five years. Five years. Okay, so. But but they're they're taking on a part of what you do because they're responsible for overseeing that and making sure that everything that um, the DEQ or um, the EPA is requiring us to do. And so I'm not minimizing what you're what you do, but I am saying that you probably, in my opinion, have more help <coughs> through contractors than probably other municipal. DPW directors have had in the past. And so I will end matter. with I will end with this. Although you do have a lot of people under you, my question to you, and I'm gonna end with this, is I want to know how much General McDaniels and the team that he had around him were able to accomplish in 1617 as it relates to what AECOM has accomplished in 2018 and what would allow us to believe that another additional $4.2 million is required to get us to 2019. I, and I don't your know if that needs to be referred. Your time is up. I'm fine. Okay. I don't know, does that Ms. need Ms. to be a referral, Chairperson? Right I'm now we'll you. get to that. You want to answer the question? Yeah. I can, I can you, answer some of this. If you, you if I did, you hear too. Yes. So we in discussion on a motion. We got rules. Five minutes. I didn't make them. They can move to su suspend them. They can get more as <laughs> ways to do it. We'll see what happens. So just look at me as rules. That's okay. I'm going to do my job. Go ahead, Mr. Bizzik. You know what's happening. Yeah. So if I can, Mr. Chair. So, so first of all, F&V does handle one facet of it. Um, it's not the city's practice though to have a vendor um, just just operate freely. So somebody has to oversee the vendor. That's a, that's a standard procedure. Um, in the past, we were able to acquire or hire a, a department, a division head that would handle the water plant. Um, we've been able, unable to attract that, that person in the particular uh, environment that we're in today. So that's just one of the things that I take care of. Uh, regarding General McDaniel, um, Colonel, um, Colonel Nick uh, Anderson and uh, Co Corporal Kyle Bazin, they did a wonderful <coughs> job with the project and the resources that they had. Um, but to be very honest, we've accomplished more work in 2019 than we did in 2016, or 17 and 18 combined. I'm sorry, 16 and 17 combined, we accomplished more work in 2018. <coughs> and and you guys, you guys, again, you're, you're only looking at lead service lines that are replaced, okay? Their, their AECOM's contract was to plan and replace. Planning, part of the planning is you have to find out where they're at. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know where they're at. Um, the other thing is there's not thousands and thousands of service lines left to be replaced. 
That's a fact. <laughs> Miss Worth, I'm Miss Galloway. You out of order, Miss Galloway. You out of order. If I don't want to do the warning. Look, strike that, Your Honor. Well, I'll show some leniency, but I mean, y'all can motion to suspend the rule at any time. Miss Worthen, that's who got the flow. Now, y'all made them, and I done been throughout frustrated by them cussing. So if y'all don't want me to cuss, to listen to me. Miss Worthy. Uh, I'm disappointed to hear Mr. Bendick <coughs> said that, say that there was more work done um, the last year than the last two previous years. Um, maybe you're referring to yards dug, but you're certainly not referring to lead line replacements. And that is the sole purpose of this project, uh, is to uh, replace lead service lines. If there's only 1,600 service lines replaced, that's not more work. That's significantly less. And so we need to keep that in mind. Uh, you know that uh, saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, that totally applies here in the case of the ECOM. Absolutely not should they ever get any more dime of our money, and yes, money that comes from the state is our money. We should be uh, proper stewards of that money and start replacing lead mines. Uh, I cannot support moving this to council. I would never give AECOM another dime of anybody's money uh, because they've severely mismanaged this project. Uh, I have people calling me about five calls lately uh, and their yards are being dug up and they were dug up already. I mean, literally their yard. I've got pictures. I have no one to talk to, no one to call because <coughs> it's chaos. This whole year, this whole project through AECOM has been chaos. I don't get the answers I need. They've never reported to us. Uh, I can't tell my constituents anything. I feel awful. Not only for the fact that um, my constituents are getting the short end of the deal and they have to deal with two times that their yard has been dug up when it was never properly <coughs> recorded for $6.2 million. They're digging up yards twice, twice. And for $125,000, General McDaniels uh, did the project, and I didn't hear about that happening, and $6.2 million, and they want another $4.8 million? It's disgusting. Hmm. Disgusting. And I want to apologize to my constituents that have had to deal with this project. Uh, I am very sorry that I can't help you. It is our responsibility to hire someone that will get the job done record uh, the information properly, use the predictive model, uh, and use hydro backing. And so it, no, no other company will get my vote until they make those promises. Um, Mr. Benzik, why didn't you sign the contract, if through the chair? I don't sign contracts. Mr. Benzik. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I don't. Mr. Benzik. Through you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Benzik. The resolution, I, I mean. I don't typically sign a resolution. Any more, Ms. Worthen? Um, no, I think I've said it all. Okay, you might oh, have no, one. I, I do have one thing, sorry. Um, I would like to make that referral to Ms. Wheeler about um, her legal opinion. Okay, um, we'll get to that. I done said I won't order that without objection. Y'all making it. You can make it even on a regular day. I can't stop it. It will get done. Don't y'all believe me? Y'all think I'm a liar? Maybe you do. I said I'll get to that. What's your point? You got the floor. You don't need no point. But if you want to stop your floor and do a point to save time, what's your point? No, but you can't make my lips say ordered without objection, and you can't make me get it in a discussion when when we on a motion. You can't make me do that any more you want to talk about as far as a point of information. What else do you think you can do with me? I'm, I'm good for now. Mr. You don't want to make the same referral Kate Fields made because you heard me say we'll do it later. And so it didn't work for you as a surrogate referral. We'll get there. I done said we will. Everybody in this room, if I leave off of this subject without a referral for a legal opinion, Tony, birthday to say, remind me. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Y'all remind me. Now, I'm not going to go on this nonsense with y'all. You're going to respect me. 
and you're going to respect this process in the chair, and it's going to be a lot said. So that's the response to your point of information. You want me to repeat it again? We'll get to that referral. Now, you want a grandstand? Y'all ain't never here. And now you got cameras in your face. We'll get to that. Mr. President, and then I think I recognize you. I'm watching everybody and listening to everything. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Benzik said that, Mr. Benzik, yes, would you repeat what you just said through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Benzik? You, you said that we had done more work in 2018 than 2017 and 16 and 17 combined. Is that, yes, is that, is that correct? More, we have more addresses. The, the uh, totals are higher now than they, when considerably you, higher this year than they were combined in 16 and 17. Okay. All right. And, and, and what, when you say that, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, and Mr. Benson, when you say that, what does that mean specifically? So that, so that the people that will hear him will forget all the, if there is grandstanding, all the grandstanding, they'll have, they'll have facts of what it is you Mr. Benson. Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, so the, the project is, is about replacing lead service lines. I won't debate that fact. Um, but it's also about, yeah. we have to identify our materials inventory. We have to update it for the EPA and DEQ um, orders. So we, we have to know what's in the ground at each of them. So the project, while, while about replacing service lines, it's also about identifying what material is at each address in their water service line. Okay. So when I speak of um, more work being done, we've achieved more, um, we've assessed more addresses um, than we have combined prior to um, the two years in the project. Okay. All right. And then the other thing, uh, Mr. Chair, is, is that uh, it's good for us to discuss this so, that pe so we can get the facts out there and so that we don't mislead, mess around and say something that's misleading to our constituency. Uh, my colleague mentioned that there were some folks that's connected or related to these, these contractors that had... Um, donated money to the mayor's campaign. I don't know whether that's true or not. It's of no consequence to me. Because though AECOM, the mayor did not choose AECOM. AECOM was chosen by a committee, and if my, if my, if my information is correct, that was assembled by folks from the state and they were selected because their proposal was hand over fist better than those other contractors that submitted proposals. The mayor didn't have anything to do with that, uh, nor did any other city official. That's the information that I have. Maybe you need to fact check me. I believe what I heard. I believe that's the way it was done. One problem that I do have is that AECOM had said that they were going to bring the community along as they were working in the community, and they didn't do that, and I don't think it's too late to do that. I would like to see them do that because then the com community would be able to, as you say, Councilwoman Worthy, would be able to ask their questions, and then they would be able to get answers from folks that's doing the work in the, in the community. I am going to support this because I want work done. I haven't been satisfied with some of the things that's been going on, but a lot of my work had the, my my uh, unsatisfaction or dissatisfaction rather what has to do with restoration, which I believe this is a <clears throat> fact that AECOM has nothing to do with rest restoration. So some of the and I and I've talked to Mr. Benzik about this, so we can get here and go back and forth. But I, but I think we all need, need to, to, to base our decisions on, on what the facts are, not what we want the narrative to be, or not what we want our narrative. What's your point, Ms. Fields? Is Mr. Winfrey aware that I said that the bid review committee who chose and recommended AECOM had all contributed to the mayor's campaign? And that is public okay. information. Okay. I didn't know. I don't, In I don't know. In addition to the contractor chosen. Okay. That's, we got your point. We ain't looking for okay. no narrative or okay, commentary, point of information. And thank if, you. Okay. Hold up. Let's deal with hers. Were you aware that she said that? No. Okay. No, now, so I, Mr. Thank Griggs, you what's your point of information? Did 
Mr. Winfrey just say that no city official picked ACON? Um, Did I misunderstand? Let me say this. As a chair, I can tell you what I heard, then he can answer. Okay. He said that city officials wasn't responsible. Um, is that what you said? That's exactly what I said. Uh, Mr. Griggs, now you know I'm going to rule you out of order. I don't want to get no warning, but you know I'm slick with making comments, but I got to keep order. Now, do you want him to yield, or do you want him to finish, and then you can get you can get the floor as soon as he's done? Well, I want to may I respond. You want an answer? I'll respond. Did I hear incorrectly that no city official picked Acon. Right, but then you made a comment after that, so that's what I was talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I didn't want to have that. I didn't want the point of information there, so we stay on the same page. Mr. Winfrey? Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Chair, to my colleague, uh, now you need to hear this. Uh, the information that I received is that AECOM was chosen by a committee that, and that committee was assembled by people from the state. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I did this. I said, fact check me. I think I'm right about that. Okay. But I don't think that, I don't think, well, I, I, you, you say I'm not. I think I'm right about that. So I ended there. I, I thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm done. Okay, Mr. Davis, did I see you want to be recognized earlier? Yes, Mr. Chair. I like to say this. I wish we could suspend the rules, but I really want to say this because I'm very upset. <coughs> Once again, this is not about AECOM. I had a meeting with, uh, with Tony and some members of AECOM th this afternoon. A nine-year-old can understand the mission of AECOM and, and the, the, the position of the city at the time of this crisis that we're in. This is about the administration, and the attacks is unreal that I'm hearing. They quickly say Councilman Mays attacked them, but they, nobody seemed to have a problem when they attacked the administration and the mayor. This is political just as with that bridge of Democrats and the Republicans. I don't care what nobody do. It ain't going to be good enough if it comes through the mayor's office at this time. AECOM is did everything they do. They the project manager over all of this stuff that's going on. And then have the nerves to talk about a, a Christmas party or whatever the donation of a fundraiser. That's, that's just blatant. I ain't going to use the word racism, but it, it's a word for it. And that's enough of that mess. Ain't nothing getting done. The city, once again, it became a dollar and a cent sign. Them folks sitting at the end of this table is, is having these back bar meetings and everybody's scared to say it. I'm not scared. I'm not political. I really want to do worse than you, Councilman me. I really want to cuss them out, but I'm not. The cameras, they stand here in grandstand in front of these cameras while they destroy a major company came in here to help us build a state or whoever. This is a crisis. And it ain't no right way or wrong way. You all hands on deck. Because you dug a hole, they going by somebody's predictive model. If you come to my house, bump a model, put your eyes down that hole and see, do I have lead or copper? Then I know I could drink out that sink. The mayor want 100 percent make sure everybody got the same credibility. But yet they want to go buy a piece. As it progresses to the end, ain't no way in the world all of it's going to be just lead, lead, lead. That's common sense. Pay the folks. We, they who started it, they need to be the one. These folks here ain't caring nothing about health of the community right now. They caring about their politics because of the, the, the voting that's going on in next by the end of the year. It's hypocritical that they sitting at this table. I'm ashamed to be with them. Period. And I'm done. Um, Miss <laughs> Winfrey Carter, let's keep order in the room. This is now, serious. Um, I know everybody. I ain't a hardliner. I'm just doing something. No big deal. Miss Winfrey Carter. I do want to see this project continue on. However, I think I'm looking at what, four point eight million. Um, I would propose that we start off with three million and then come back to the table if you need to come back to get more, to get the rest of it. I, I think, I think 4.8 million is a little too much to, to, um, to approve right now. Let's see how the pro, the project is flowing and then you come back 
and get the rest of the um, 4.8 million. So, but I do want to see this project continue. Ms. Worthing, you wanted to use some more of your time. Ms. Worthing? I, I definitely would like to see this project continue, but um, with us getting right, the work out. Um, for, uh, just for information, five review board members, um, as told to me last meeting by Mr. Binzik, are Rob Binzik, Derek Jones, Lois Fletcher, Ira Rutherford, and Clarence Pierce. Those were the people that chose. Um, also, we never had uh, the city attorney ask for or hold meetings with us, council, to discuss a change order. So um, there's been a lot of things within this project that have not been managed correctly. Um, we've heard from the mayor um, directly in her administration that she called the shots on some of these things, not AECOM. Uh, I have a huge problem with that uh, because it's, it is about health and safety, and uh, it, it, that wasn't taken care of. It was a directive. Council never had the choice to say you can stop hydrovacking, and it was in the contract. Uh, Goyette hasn't gotten paid for the work that they've done uh, because they refused uh, to let them use the hydrovac. Those are huge concerns, and we have money right now that's in limbo, and to go ahead and approve that again when we've got all these unanswered questions, in my opinion, <coughs> is a grave error. All right. Um, any more discussion from council members? You only got about a minute or 30 seconds left. Okay. Proceed. You got well, the flow, Mr. President. Mr. President, through you to Mr. Benzik, I would like to, I would like his comment on this resolution and how he feels, what he feels that uh, the pertinency of this, this, this uh, resolution. Okay, that's twice. You might have 30 seconds left <laughs> or 10 or 5. But Mr. Benzik, you want to respond to President Winfrey that you hear the question? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. I yeah. want to make sure I'm clear on the, you're talking about the AECOM resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we certainly, I think, I think we certainly need a project manager. Um, the, the Fast Start project is, it's a, it's a large project. Um, it's very intensive because um, you have to, to plan the work. You have to make uh, several touches with the residents. Um, and it's it's very demanding. So personally, I, I don't have the capability um, in a day to do it myself. So we have to have the ability to continue the project. Uh, the project is, um, quite frankly, nearing its end. Um, so we we don't have, um, you know, I think we're if we if we use twenty eight thousand four hundred as our uh, number of residential accounts, which I actually think is currently a little high. Um, we're just about at 20,000 addresses that have been identified, so roughly 8,500. I think we're a little lower than the 28.4. Um, we've been using 20% uh, as our hit rate for lead service lines uh, that we've been finding. If that rate continues, um, I think there's what, roughly 1,800 of them, a little less than 1,800 that would need to be replaced. Um, so. You know, we still have a fair bit of work to do, but the, the project has moved along nicely. It is ahead of schedule, so we're not due really to be done with, uh, well, we, were, we were due not to be done with the 18,000 until the end of 19, mm -hmm. so we've already achieved really that goal, but the, the scope of the project has changed. Um, we, we believe, and the, the mayor's directive is we need to identify every line, which we also are obligated to do from uh, the EPA, uh, order and the the DEQ and the new lead copper rule, so we have to have an updated materials inventory. Um, and if if we don't go forward with the project and use the wind funding to identify that stuff, the city is going to be on the hook to come up with an updated materials inventory at these addresses. Okay. So that I mean that's my opinion on, on how I think the project needs to needs to go forward. Thank you. Let me say this, Ms. Galloway, I'm gonna work it out. But y'all watch the clock. See that red thing moving? That's going to be one minute. When it gets to four minutes, that black hand should be somewhere about here. Mm -hmm. Watch me manage my time wisely. I will not be a part of nothing to do with, we in an emergency. This ain't no game. We still in a state of emergency. Everybody on my street, and I'm getting called now, they skipped my house. They didn't dig. 
the residents want this. You better not hold up 4.8 million and then the program falls to the wayside. The weather has been permitting. I'm all in favor of working through the winter. AECOM has no comparison to General McDaniels because General McDaniels didn't do a project plan. General McDaniels didn't get us 77 million that you didn't already voted to accept. General McDaniels and his staff ain't gonna monitor that stuff. Be careful, Mr. Um, Woodson. Y'all keep it down, whisper a little low, I hear you. But you're okay. You ain't out of order yet. I'm just messing up minutes and seconds responding to you. I see you, I hear you, I see the whole room. So you gotta understand. Did y'all look at y'all pockets? And Mr. Woodson, I can't even talk about it. Because of this too. Boy, I tell you, I ain't got no dinner. But check this out. Check. No, we don't. I ain't got no. But check this out. It's a packet. Did y'all see this packet? You got, I ain't going to get my council people's attention because I got such a great sense of humor. They too busy laughing about my teeth. But this is real. You don't know if the water made them loose. This is a serious business. When you got residents out there with hair losses, this ain't y'all money. 4.8 million. This ain't y'all money. This grant money. This state money. We supposed to spin it and fix stuff. You got 30 some people out there with jobs. Vio Luster. Y'all didn't see his name on here? The prices of what this money is being spent for? I ain't heard y'all talk once about what money is spent for. I heard y'all talk about some individuals who, according to law, went to a mayor's gala fundraiser. I done been to balls since Woodrow Stanley, Don Williamson, and Mayor Weaver. That ain't no reason not to vote to fix these people's service lines. Folks ought to be ashamed of themselves. I didn't hear no substitute motion. I'm hearing referrals. I ain't heard nobody discuss the documentation of what they do. Look at that clock. Watch how smart I'm gonna use my time. Who from AECOM will speak? Come forward. Miranda, Ed Thorpe, I know who it is. And then I'm gonna give you a seat to explain on my time what services you want to provide for the 4.8 million. People act like they know what's happening here. And I know for a fact people ain't asked the right questions. I ain't even heard the right thing said. Go ahead, watch that clock. Because in the middle of mine, I'm on motion to suspend the roof. This ain't nothing to play with. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Council. <laughs> My name's Ed Tharp. I'm the project manager for the lead service line and replacement activities. Um, I have with me uh, Mike Weingard, the vice president, uh, Marinda Russell. Uh, uh, the, you need uh, to join us at the table. Administrative assistant and Mr. Sam Cox, you need who to come is to the, the table, president Wayne. of ARCO, you who is our major subcontractor. You, you want to be at the table. <laughs> As has been indicated, uh, the, the whole purpose of this is related to the lead service line replacement, the concerned pastors agreement, etc., which required the removal or the exploration of 18,000 uh, lines or addresses prior to January the 1st, uh, 2020. And at this point in time, through all phases, one through five, up through January the 3rd, we have completed a total of 19,883, which is very similar to what uh, Mr. Benzie uh, was discussing. And as he had indicated, the total is somewhere approximately 28,400. So there's about 8,500 potential uh, addresses that still need to be investigated 
that meet the qualifications of the concerned pastor agreement. What AECOM does is manage all of these addresses. As I said, uh, that 19,833, of that 11,050 have been explored during 2018. So we are assigning those addresses to the contractors. We are then taking the contractors, or taking where the contractors are exploring, and we are doing inspections or observations of all of the work that they do, recording that information in a database, which is part of what has to be done to be able to report to MDEQ, NRDC, and a variety of others. The Department of Health and Human Services gets involved, et cetera. There are approximately 15 inspectors out watching the construction or the uh, excavation and or replacement of the lead service lines if it is a lead service line. And those are employees that are basically local hires from the city of Flint. In addition to collecting that data and so, uh, observing what the contractors do, they also have another set of individuals, which we call our uh, community engagement representatives, who are out taking a look at filter flushes after a replacement has been done. According to the regulations at NRDC, established in the middle of 2018, we have to do that within a 72-hour period, and sometimes it's necessary to go back several times to be able to do that. We've got approximately 50 individuals uh, doing that who are, again, local hires from the city of Flint. The data itself, then, goes to a data center and we have created a database that has incorporated data from the county, the city, the water department, uh, several other contractors. Hold up a minute. What's your point of information? Uh, Mr. Thorpe, yep. in your part of your presentation, will you please take the time to talk about the hourly wages that you and your other executive team are being paid? as a part of this presentation. Continue. Continue. But we recognize the point in you. Uh, the contractors then will take, after they have completed their work, they'll want to get paid for it. So they submit an invoice to us. We review those invoices to compare the addresses that have been done the work that has been done at each of those addresses, so the quantities and dollars are correct. If there's a problem, then we get it resolved with the contractor. And then we take and look at the CHIP addresses, which are another funding source for the city of Flint. And if it is a chip address, then we need to notify or Mr. 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 Thorpe, yes. I want the media to notice the ones in my opinion, because I'm still on my time when you speak, I, ain't. I want the media to know the ones who already say what they ain't going to do, I don't even know if they really paying attention. Proceed with this point good information. information. What's your point? Is Councilman Mays aware that this information that's being shared with us now was shared with us during our meeting? Um, I'm aware of a lot. Okay. Proceed. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how you're going to vote. Once we have on my time. the on my time. check the addresses for their CHIP eligibility, then we make a recommendation for payment to that and send that on to the City of Flint, which the City of Flint can incorporate into their 
request from the state for reimbursement. It's kind of a little overview of, you know, what we do. Uh, there are numerous other people and groups involved in the background accomplishing all of those things. But what I would like to do next is take a look at what some of the differences are between 2018 and 2019. And I think you have a handout that mm -hmm. has been given to you uh, that's a two-page handout. One of the things that we would anticipate is that the 219 program would incorporate University of Michigan model. We have additional, more restrictive uh, reporting requirements for the NRDC and uh, MDEQ, which becomes very labor intensive to get uh, lists of various things that they're interested in. The work that's done, the filter checks, which is a weekly report, uh, et cetera. Well, as we had indicated earlier, there's about 8,500 homes that are yet to be explored. Uh, that, that's an estimate, obviously. There's going to be more in-home copper checks that need to be done. There's a backlog of copper checks that we're still working through from 2018 plus all the work that would occur in 2019 where we would do that. And by in-home copper checks, I mean when we find copper at the curb, which would indicate that that line is copper, then we need to go inside the home at the meter and make sure that it is copper at the meter, such that there is copper all the way into the house. In many instances, you can find that there are splices somewhere between the curb and the meter. So that is a third check, if you will, to make sure that we get all the uh, copper out, or all the lead out. The production uh, uh, will decrease in 2019. Now we are to the point where we are not in blocks, in streets, like we have been. So we're going to have to move around and skip around. The contractors are going to have to mobilize and demobilize uh, during their investigations more. One of the things that we have found is that we need to review all of the data from phases one through four. Uh, initially, we had uh, been told that that data was all complete. We didn't need to worry with those. And we have found that there are several of those that were hydrovact, determined to be lead, or unknown, but not replaced during the programs up through phases one through four. <coughs> and there are some other reasons for that, uh, accessibility is one, trees being in the road, etc. So we need to clean up all of those as part of this particular contract. And then another special consideration is the SHPO zone, which is uh, the Indian burial grounds in Ward 5 that takes special requirements because there has to be an archaeologist on site during that investigation, and there has to be an archaeologist with each crew or when each hole is dug simply to protect any potential uh, problems that could arise or uh, disturbance of a grave site or anything like this. Some of the benefits to continuing the program is it's got the jobs for the approximately 30 local residents of the city of Flint. We have trained these personnel, uh, given them lots of construction related training that they could utilize for other jobs, not just to do this. We have a database that has developed and that will be turned over to the city, which is a valuable resource for not only just the water department, but for all of the city's activities because it, we have uh, combined numerous databases to get to a single database. 
And with continuing with AECOM, you're going to have the consistency, you're going to have the continuity of the work that we've already started, right. and the momentum that we've already got built up with the team that is in place at this point in time. As has been mentioned before, we're basically a year ahead of schedule. Wow. And what we want to all do is increase the confidence and the reliability of the system for the city of Flint residents. Wow. So, What's your background? You're an engineer? I'm an engineer. I yes. just want Mr. Griggs to hear that. He's an engineer. Oh, yeah. um, hey, look, uh, excuse me. Did you point he's a PhD. Point of order. Point of order. You're going to get a warning. <laughs> You're fooling with the wrong chairman. Point of information. What's your point? Is, is Mr. Thorpe, is it? Uh, Hart. Is Mr. Thart going to address the salaries, like his salary specifically? His hourly salary. As Your part point of is understood. Your point of information. There was an earlier point of information about salaries. Some of them, Ms. Galloway, are addressed here. Correct. Mr. Thorpe, how much money you make? I honestly can't tell you what my salary is. <laughs> You get a check every week, every two I get, weeks. I, every two weeks, I get a check. What'd it be? I can't even tell you that. You okay. You'd have to ask my wife. He had proof. He'd have to ask his wife. So <laughs> that's the answer. You know any? What's your point? Does Mr. You, I'm on the first point. Let me finish the point. The first one. He makes three hundred and twelve dollars and ninety-seven cents an hour. Okay. Well, he's saying no. So let me let, let let I know you want to use the points of information to get the flow. I'm being lenient. You said one, but now it's turning into statements and comments, and we I'm trying to help you get it with the one. I was on thought. You asked him and others. This was some more. So you got to let me finish one point of order. Because I'm going to start ruling if you following up because the answers ain't coming back like you want. Like, we got investigative hearings. If you don't believe what he say about that's his wife, put him under oath. You want him swore in now? So I'm just saying, let's come on. Let, let's do this. Anybody in the room know what they make other than what's on this sheet? Mr. Thorpe, Miranda, Weingarten. May I ask Mike? You can sure. explain the number that she's saying. Identify yourself salary. for the record, Mr. Weingard. Well, let's right here on this page. Wait, Mike Weingard, uh, Vice President of Income. Uh, what the rates in there, uh, Councilwoman, include are all the overhead of the firm, fringe benefits uh, paid to employees, et cetera. So uh, roughly... It's uh, basically three times what the actual salary really is, or divide by three, because that includes all the overhead uh, of uh, our company, uh, again, all the vacation time, all the benefits, all the health benefits, pension benefits, uh, the uh, real estate that our buildings are on, uh, the uh, turning the lights on, uh, secretaries, everything else. So roughly, whenever you see a... Uh, accounting firm or a law firm or an engineering firm. If y'all want the answer, if they don't want right. the answer, quit giving them the answer. Yeah. Everybody talking, let's keep moving. They asking the question, I call them loaded questions, ain't wanting the answer. Right. Let's keep moving. Mr. Griggs? Yeah. Uh, Name Mr. Thank you for an engineer. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Miss Galloway, you out of order. You out of order. You out of order. Now, I, I do sympathize with ACOM because they were told to not hire back when it was in the contract, the initial contract. Miss, what's going on? I'm talking about ACOM. ACOM was told not to use hydro back. You savvy? Yes. Okay. One contractor can't use hydro back, and they never could. They're not capable of it, but Stevens. I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know why they didn't use hydroback. But they didn't, they didn't use the predictive model because they weren't told to. Uh, now they're told to, and now they're going to use it. 
But whoever told them to stop hydrovacking, I don't know. That's another one of these commands from the sky. I don't from the sky. Nobody will answer who did it. We'll get an answer. Uh, maybe one day. That's, but anyhow, that's a reasonable rate. I worked for a consulting engineering firm in St. Louis for a number of years, and that's how they figured their rates. There's nothing unusual about that, and it's not too high. I'm done. Thank you. So. I did. I want, <laughs> I want Mr. <laughs> Mr. Um, Luster. I want this count. Hey, look, this is what I want to do. I want to entertain a motion to suspend the rules because the five-minute rule ain't working. Ms. Galloway won't back in. They done used their five minutes, had cameras in their face, ain't studying the rest of the conversation. So I want to entertain a motion to suspend the rules so maybe we can get the full attention of the council people who spoke first. Ms. Ms. Fields. I'd like to move that we give one more round of a total of two minutes no. for each council person. Still That's my motion. Um, it's a motion on the floor that the council people get one more round of two minutes. Is there a second? I second that. It's been moved and second that the council people get one more round of two minutes. That would give me and everybody else an additional one round of two minutes. Is there any discussion on the motion? Ms. Um, Mr. Davis. Suspend the rules so you can handle this business because obviously people at this table, council members, don't understand what's going on or the scope of the, the seriousness of this matter. This is a serious matter and it's taken so lightly like it's a joke. Be able to answer all the questions so the public and why you got media in the room can straighten out the lies that's been construed and the, and the slander that's been put out in the media. Let's just um, go to You're going to get a warning, uh, media lady. Uh, you going? Okay, good. Mr. Davis, is that a substitute motion? So it's a substitute motion to suspend the rules. Yeah. I didn't hear a substitute. I asked him. You didn't need and I didn't need. I say is it That's correct. I help everybody make motions, Miss Fields. I'm the one that said I'll entertain the motion. That's why you just made a motion. I help everybody. I asked him was that a motion? And he said, Yeah, I help you, I help him. What's the point? Is there a second to the substitute motion to suspend the rule? Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Support the motion. So it's been moved and second. Is there any further discussion on the motion to suspend the substitute motion to suspend the rules to discuss this? Ms. Fields. We don't need to suspend the rules, especially all the rules. And Mr. Uh, Councilman Davis didn't say the rules for this particular issue for this amount of time. So I believe my initial motion was more apropos because at least it would give council people who had used their time to comment on this handout we were given okay. and comments that were made by AECOM. So I feel an additional two minutes for each council person would be adequate rather than suspending all of the rules in total. Any other discussion on the motion? Mr. Davis, then Mr. President. Okay, I'd like to say this. Who cares what she feel? I feel like this. This is an important matter. You slandered everybody. And, and this here is a major resolution that should be moved to council. And it's, it's got some roadblocks because of ignorance at this table. Of people who think they're so savvy and don't know a hill of beans about being an engineer other than Mr. Griggs. I give him that much credit. Some things we have to learn to listen and go with the credibility of the company. This is not a peon company sitting at this table. This is a water crisis with the oversight of the feds in the state, and we still ignorant enough to do the same thing that got us into this predicament. We're trying to do it all over again. Learn to sit here and be resp responsible for the seat and the people you represent. Let's suspend the rules, uh, Councilman, and let's try to get an understanding to help other people maybe come along because it's not a joke and I'm done. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. As, as it relates to the substitute motion, yes, uh, uh, my colleague, Councilman Davis, said he, he, he initially said uh, he put a motion on the floor. And as we've set a precedent on this council, if the motion wasn't made correctly, it was either uh, there was assistance from either the chair or other council members when the, when a, when a member didn't say Absolutely. the right thing. So you just said... Uh, what it should be a substitute motion, and you said it. So let's go make so a big we did. Out of it. 
Yeah. We that did it for the executive session earlier. I assisted Ms. Word, and that I ain't going to make time. a big We've deal out of it. I'm listening who making these oh, nitpicking. Hey. Any more discussion on the substitute motion other than the discussion that's going on down there absent from our overall discussion? Any, Ms. Worthy, you ready to discuss it publicly? Uh, yeah. I would like to let um, Mr. Davis know that I assure you I'm no engineer. Science is my worst subject. But I understand the contract, I understand what's in there, and I understand they didn't fulfill it. And to call uh, your colleagues ignorant and, and to state that we don't understand what we're talking about, uh, that's that's not correct. I that's just put correct. that on the record. We understand completely. Um, and I would question anyone on council that doesn't understand. Maybe you shouldn't be here. I'm going to say this, Ms. Worthy. I done tried to take the high road, but in politics, you know my position. When they go low, I go lower. Let's not go there, because you and Miss Fields held a press conference and called me a racist. You forget so soon. Miss, Miss Worthen, now I'm going to rule you out or then we'll be on the appeal because y'all just being disrespectful to this board and to the public and to the body. All this laughing and talking and disrespect and giving false facts. Now you want to go back and forth with Mr. Davis. I know for a fact in front of these cameras, you called the press conference and called me a racist. That was disrespectful and unprofessional. So who are you to not all try to be defensive? I thought it was nasty. I thought that point was ignorant. That What's, your point? What's your point? What's your point? That is not germane. Um, I'm going to deny your point because it was germane. Oh, here we go. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Because you should have said it wasn't germane when she ruled. So I'm going to honor your point or your appeal, and I'm going to have a ball talking about the different treatment in this appeal. She's made an appeal on the ruling of the chair. So if you withdrew the appeal, I'm going to continue saying what I was saying. Don't you and Miss Fields go on TV calling folks racist and then mad when somebody say you ignorant to the facts of this contract. I ain't going to put up with it because I see the games that's being played with the people of Flint's lives. We in an emergency. Y'all want rules to discuss something for five minutes and it didn't work. Now, Ms. Fields want two more. Point of information. What's your point? Is the chair aware that the city would have been better off removing an additional 4,000? Ms. Fields, you out of order. You, you, you out of order. This is what? your second warning. If you use point of order. I appeal. Okay. If you use point of order and point of information and properly get the flow, the rules say you shall be removed. Do it again to get the flow and make a statement. Get ready. You shall be removed. Um, what's your appeal? I'm honoring your appeal. State it. You're not, you're not being germane to this whole conversation. Man. Okay. I rule that I am being Jermaine, Tito, Marlon, and Jackie. Them the Jackson Five. So I overrule your appeal. I am Jermaine. Is there a second to her appeal? No. Ms. Worthen seconded. So now, this is the appeal. She said when I was discussing what Ms. Worthen and Mr. Davis was discussing, it wasn't Jermaine. She said that the people's behavior and actions and communication ain't germane. She said the two minutes versus five minutes ain't germane. I denied it and said it was. This is my five minutes. I'm going to use it and be germane, Tito, Jackie, Marlon, and the other Jackson Five. Any discussion on this ruling and appeal? Any more discussion? If they're hearing none, I'll say this and call for the vote. I done sat here quietly for over an hour. I get five minutes just like everybody else. When I start my five minutes, Ms. Worthen and Ms. Fields, they start to tag team. They think I'm ignorant. They think I'm a racist. Maybe they, well, anyway, as a chairperson of this fine committee, I won't have it. 
I'm going to watch this vote like a hawk. I'm not Jermaine. Talking about the same thing they talking about. If you vote yes, that means I was Jermaine. If you vote no, that means Kate feels right. I should have shut up. All in favor of the vote yes signify by saying I raise your hand. You right. confused on the motion? Yeah. Let me get the motion straight. I was using my five minutes. In the middle of that, Miss Fields, point of order, you're not Jermaine. You don't know what was being talked about. I ruled I was Jermaine and continued to proceed. She appealed. Eva second. We're in discussion on the appeal. Go ahead. Okay, so I I didn't hear that. I heard that as the first one. But the second one, and please correct me if I'm I'm wrong, the second one that I heard her say was a point of information. <coughs> Do you realize that we would need to replace such and such number that you looked on your paper? And when she got done, you stepped up and said your appeal, I mean your point of information is out of order. You use it to get the floor. That's correct. Of which then she appealed. That is so, correct. Okay. And so. and so you got to understand that what she was talking about didn't have nothing to do with five minutes, two minutes, or suspending the rules. It was I ruled that it was used to get the floor in properly. Okay, so then and though I ruled her said, out of order and she you appealed. You started talking about the races and that wasn't Jermaine. No, she, they start talking about ignorance first no, and calling each other names. So just I'm just trying to help you catch up how the races come in because she so said. What's the appeal exactly? <laughs> the appeal is I ruled that she can't keep doing points of order and points of information to get statistical data in, and she then appealed. Yes, it is. And you were right. She appealed me, ruling her out of order, telling her if you use it improperly, you shall be removed. That numbers then had nothing to do with five or two minutes, okay. Miss Galloway. Okay. That was the point of why it was not proper at that time in my ruling. What was it for? To get the flow, just make some statements about some numbers. Didn't have nothing to do with the five or two minute numbers. And I ruled out order. Lobby of Miss Fields, go ahead. You still got discussion. Her and Monica want to talk. No, I'm, she talking to you. You looking down. She talking to you. Y'all ready to vote? Yes. If you vote yes, you uphold the ruling of the chair. If you vote no, get ready for a whole lot more. <laughs> All in favor of the ruling of the chair signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Oh. All abstain. Okay, so the appeal fails. The, the vote is four yay, three no, and two abstentions. That's so the, the appeal fails. Let's keep moving. And, and, and so that means if you continue to use that technique, Ms. Fields, I'm going to ask that she shall be removed. Because we fixing the vote whether you get more time to state them figures rather than try to be slick. With a point of order, a point of information. That wasn't no point of order, stating them facts. Mr. Guerra, what is it? Uh, we're on, just to be clear, we're on now the vote for the suspension of the rules. That's correct, Mr. I want to call the question down. In the middle of me with my five minutes, so it's so done. Now, he didn't call the question. Is there a second to the call of the question? I second the call of the question. It's been moved and seconded. Um, the call for the question, if 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 it passes, we vote. If it don't, we continue discussion. It need to be six votes to pass. All in favor of the call for the question, signify by raising your hand. I my hand ain't up. <laughs> it almost went up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All opposed to calling the question. So the motion passed. We vote now 
on the motion to suspend the rules. All in favor of the motion to suspend the rules, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. The motion to suspend the rules failed. Okay. Now we got another original motion. That was the substitute motion. Before somebody called for the question, I'm going to say to this, Mr. Guerra, because it ain't funny to me. I deserve to speak on motions just like y'all do. And if y'all want to play the call to question game, this chair, I'll speak first. And it won't happen to me no more. So I don't play the games. I don't treat it y'all equally and let everybody say what they want to say. But when it comes to me, I'm interrupted, the question is called, and I'm shortchanged in the first ward. That ain't going to sit too nice with Councilman Mays while people laugh. You can roll your eyes if you want to, Miss uh, Worthy, but the ninth ward speak, the first ward going to speak. And if they don't, I'm going to think it's being discriminatory and racist on y'all part since y'all think I'm the racist. I wouldn't care if you're white, Hispanic, black. I'm going to demand that my ward have a voice. And the ones on the other council who strong down me and didn't give it to me, they gone. Kerry Nelson, Jackie Poplar, they had a ball. So keep playing games with this chairman and with this councilman when it's time to debate. Don't have y'all say, then call for the question on me because I'm waiting to be last. I'm going to go first and appeal that. That's how I roll. Now, any more discussion on the original motion? I want to ask y'all how many votes you think it takes for this to pass. Five or six? Five. He say six, y'all say five. It's a sus type of suspension of the rule. We'll see. I hope it don't get the fault. Because this is crazy. They done talked and talked, used their time. Now they want two more minutes and voting to keep me from talking one time. How dare you? How dare you? On four million, 77 million, the water crisis. I, I let the games begin, folks. I'm in discussion on the original motion. Y'all done played a heck of a game. Y'all knew before y'all come here, before y'all heard what you vote. I heard people say before any presentation, I'm voting no. I done heard inaccurate information from Miss Fields. Just inaccurate information. We want to know what you're saying. Oh, That's yours. Give it back to her. Don't do that. What are you saying? That's yours. Yeah. What? Go ahead and rule, Mr. President. You out of order. That's your first warning. Okay. Now, I'm going to get order. And folks going to be respectful to people speaking, whether it's him, whether it's me, or whether it's you. This has been got out of hand. It's embarrassing and it's wrong. People who don't understand our rules and procedures and how y'all cutting people off and cutting this discussion off, I understand it, particularly when it happened to me. Don't call the question on me. Call the question on Kate Fields and Eva and, 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 and Monica Neer. If you want to be a smart third ward councilman, I knew one. His name was Kerry Nelson. He gone. Now I'm going to tell you something. Play these games on cutting people off. It's a problem. All in favor. All in favor of giving an additional two minutes. Raise your hand. That's the original motion. Even the makers of the motion don't want it. All opposed. The motion for two additional minutes failed. Anybody who done used up their right. time, I'm going to ask you. I want them out when I call them out order because they ain't even got no right to appeal. They're going to get took out of here. Now, that's what I'm asking. They can holler, appeal, do whatever. They done exhausted their time. Continue, Mr. Thorpe. I have no other. Mr. Luster, we was at a point where I was asking you to communicate with them what's going on out there with these service lines and the management in the winter and the spring and what's going on. Mr. Thorpe, let him have your seat. Talk to him. Uh, if 
you had a, anybody have a specific question, but they ain't uh, got no time. Okay. You tell them a narrative I, what you want to do. She got some. I you got a question. question? Go ahead. Yeah, how many more? Um, it's your second time. Let me see. How many more months do you think this project project will take? You mean if we continue? On if the you continue, we are, if you continue, it's hard to say because of the winter. Uh, typically, we're doing anywhere from 350 to 500 uh, expirations per week. Okay. So if there's 8,000, you look in that, uh, divide that by two, 16 weeks, roughly, give or take. Okay. So three or four months, maybe five, depending on the weather. Okay. 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 I think that... Yeah, because I, I can calculate that. Okay. Okay, so what we do is uh, typically on a daily basis, uh, we try to get the residents of the city of Flint to comply with the uh, standing orders and, and mm -hmm. protocol that's laid out. And that is that we got a consent form and we try to go around uh, Mr. Thorpe was telling you about the uh, in-house team. So what we do is we carry those forms with us as well because what we do is try to make it as less uh, intrusive to the residents as we possibly can. But unfortunately, and I heard somebody speak earlier about us returning back to the neighborhoods, but that's not because we're not doing our work. What, what happens there is typically we'll get a resident that was inactive and now they become active. And what we do is try not to uh, exclude anyone from the program. As long as they consent, we, uh, we try to get it done. And I heard him mention that we were um, deploying and, and redeploying. And that's because some of the residents, if you guys are familiar with Flint, and I've been in Flint majority of my life, uh, we have a lot of rental properties. And and I can speak to this because my dad was a landlord of over 150 rental homes in the city of Flint. And people move out, they turn the water off, leave the water running, and the account isn't, the account isn't active. We have to go back because the landlord wants the service line repaired, at least investigated. I have a list today of about 10. I had a list yesterday of about 10 or 15 that are what we call redeployment. And unfortunately, some of these were deployed in 2015. And for whatever reason, they didn't get done in that uh, phase, whether they ran out of time, money, I don't know. That's not my, uh, that's Ed's uh, problem. <laughs> I have enough problems. <laughs> but my, my, uh, my charge is to get it done, to make sure we get the contractor assigned get the residents assigned, line it up, schedule it, and do it. And what we do, again, like I said, typically we do anywhere from 300 to 500 a week. And God has been good, the weather's been great, and we've been digging like crazy. Now, um, the contractors have been really compliant with us. Uh, Rob's team has been really compliant with us, and we've been moving. Uh, every day we get calls from different uh, entities within the city regarding the process, regarding residents that's having issues, and we try to uh, address them real time. Um, typically we, we vet or vent or visit our complaints within the 24-hour period uh, if we can make contact with the residents. You know, if I can't get someone on the team to do it, I do it personally, whether it be Saturday, Sunday, or Easter Sunday. If they say they're going to be there Easter Sunday, I'm there. Uh, and that's because, not that I'm trying to be a hero, but what you'll find is when you go to these elementary schools and you see the kids with behavior problems, mm -hmm. and you know where it's from. So it's a mission. It's a mission. So, you know, that's what we do every day. And we try to uh, accommodate the residents in any kind of way, shape, or form. 
Uh, we have issues with them sometimes uh, because they get misinformed. They think that it's, it's costing them. Somebody put a rumor out it's costing them $7,000. We get that all the time. We get people going out. They put on a vest. They get from Home Depot, and they go out and say they are a fast start person, and they want to get in people's houses. We all carry badges, uh, ID badges with our picture and our name on it. So if you get somebody in your ward or you hear of somebody in your ward that don't have a picture and ID, do not let them in your house. Don't even entertain a conversation with them. Just call the Fast Start office. Call me directly, uh, Mr. Thorpe's office, Sam's office. We have about 20 phones that can be reached 24 hours a day. Uh, the people, and we do try to respond. We respond to the contractors when they have an issue. We respond to the city. We try to uh, mediate between the residents and the program because so much has changed. When we initially rolled this program out, I had inspectors trained to do a specific job, and we have, like Mr. Thorpe told you, we have retrained them probably minimum of six times with updated information that been uh, mandated for us by the DEQ, EPA, the NRDC. I have the governor's office here with a company called Tetra Tech that overlook every move that I make. And I don't know if you guys are aware of Tetra Tech. Tetra Tech is here. They bring uh, professional plumbers here. So we have an oversight from professional plumbers that they do a sampling of the lines that are installed, the process, and the quality of the water. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot. You know, I just can't sit here and tell you all of it, but I say this to you. Uh, thanks to Sam and the AECOM team, I have a brand new pickup, and it has, it's, it's fully equipped, air conditioned, and I ride you all day on Sam's dime. <laughs> you know, if you guys want to see the process. As council people, <laughs> you know. I've been out there in the field. Let me ask this question. Can you describe, hold on. This has been going on all meeting. Talk to seven of us, particularly, or six, because folks ain't receiving what's going on mm -hmm. at this end. Mm -hmm. And it's disrespectful, and it's been <coughs> continuous. And that's why they don't know know all the details. Can you tell this council who will listen some of the technicalities as it relates to moving equipment, coming back on streets, doing a street versus addresses on a predictive model? What's the application of that use in reality? Can you ex if well, you understand? Yeah, I understand the question perfectly. Uh, and I have to be... Uh, totally honest with you guys, I did this contracting thing for over 35 years, and my specialty was service line replacements and service line installation. Uh, I worked for uh, most of all your large general contractors that do water lines and water service, water mains. Did General McDaniels call y'all to help him when he first got here? Yes. Yeah. We, we That's consult. a fact. We consulted with General McDaniels Told on a regular what to basis. Do. Yeah, we consulted with Directional him on a regular basis boy, everything. to get it out. Uh, but okay, what happens typically is a contractor get assigned addresses. We like to assign them, as Rob can tell you and Mr. Thorpe can tell you. We try to compartmentalize it so that the contractor don't have to do what we call. Uh, uh, e initially, we called it uh, mobilization. What we try to do is keep the contractor's mobilization and demobilization down to a minimum because he lose hours in the day, and hours in the day losses is, is, is another service line that maybe didn't get done that day. So typically what we try to do, and that's what Ed was talking about, his team, uh, they work very hard on bringing all that data together, analyzing it, and trying to put those addresses that get deployed to the individual contractors we got the 10 zone and what we try to do is make it as easy for that contractor during the day so he reduces his uh mobilization and uh demo and remobilization and all that because typically it takes him two hours to move a machine three blocks because he's got to load it he it looks like all he does is drive it up on the machine on the trailer but there's a tie-down process that's mandated by the uh, Department of Transportation. And if he fails 
to get one chain out of place, he can be fined thousands of dollars by not having a chain in place. So and the state inspectors are out there. Well, yeah, we right. we have them. As long as we there, they're there. Uh, I don't know if you guys have those phone numbers and addresses. There's some expenses that's going to go along with the predictive model. If you got two addresses on route and three on Laredo, and then another here, <laughs> you you moving. These well, prices going up. Well, we try to. It ain't them. even practical. Yeah, we try. And to then you getting calls from folks. What's your point of information? Did you, can you use your five minutes? No, I'm letting them use them, and then I'll continue to let them use them. I'm gonna deal with your point of information, point of orders, your appeals, and I'm gonna keep shopping on them quick with questions. That's what I'm gonna do. Because that's the speaker, and I'm the chair. I cause them and bring them up. Well, and I'm doing it in my five minutes. Ms. Worthen, did that answer your question? No. Okay, well, I done answered it. Don't use it to interrupt me. Proceed. Mr. Get Mr. Griggs, is it something on your mind? No, I'm just explaining where I'm going with the bathroom. Okay, now I'm wondering, and the reason I'm, the reason I'm asking, because I know if people have to leave, we want to vote, so I'm just not being nosy. I have to go no, to the bathroom, you. too, but not now. Proceed. Hopefully, I answered your point of information, Ms. Worthy. Okay, so the, yeah, so we don't want uh, the contractors to have to be taxed with uh, several hours of non-productive time. That's, that's basically what it comes down to, because you figure each crew is running the contractor. We figured we did some calculations. Sam and I did some rough calculations. It's costing them somewhere around six to seven hundred bucks an hour to be out there. So we try to make it as easy for them, uh, expeditiously as we can, because you know recognizing that they're burning dollars. So uh, it's uh, team. We've been really uh, making these addresses the best we can to keep them compartmentalized but it's tough it's very tough like i say because like today i got 10 addresses that need to be redeployed i got two from phase four i got one that the lady said they came out did all of the work exploration work and then do their line and that was in 2015 and this is 2018 so you know i don't even know where to start with that address so i call rob <laughs> And he tried to figure it out, and we, some kind of way, we get it done after uh, trying to go around and around and try to figure out what happens sometimes. Uh, but the bottom line is, and I heard somebody say that this is a, a large scale project, and it absolutely is. Uh, we are, believe it or not, we up to the we're up to the task, and I guess you can see that we're a year ahead of schedule, and that's because we own it. We are, we are on it. We are not leaving no stones unturned. Now, Mr. the restoration, Mr. we don't Lester, have anything to do Mr. with Mr. Lester, mm -hmm. what's your position on HydroVac and that issue that come up? Well, it, it depends on the, I, I like HydroVac and for excavation purposes. There's, <coughs> there's, there's some pros and cons to it. We've expanded our envelope. And, and we expanded our envelope because we were receiving a lot of uh, splices. And those splices were instituted during a process that Rob and I talked about before, I mean, Mr. Benzik, where the city would allow a, a, a resident to repair their service line because they didn't have the money to put the whole or total line in. Point so, of information. What, what is an envelope? Um, point of information. Well, Hold up. Oh, I'm sorry. What's, the, what's your point of information? Mr. Luster used a term I'm not familiar with. What is an envelope? The excavation envelope is the actual um, is the actual dimensions of the excavation, and uh, we've uh, we've we've changed that several times based on what the NDRC wanted, what the EPA wanted, and what the DEQ wanted. In some kind of way, it all got synthesized through Ed's office, and Ed and uh, came up with this is where we want to do, you know, based on all of these people asking these questions and wanting a different, uh, I guess they just want a different look. I don't know exactly why they asked that question. That would be something. Hey, that ECOM is like a department when you have to ask questions and 
different cities and towns with their resources, them questions get answered. Without that department and that expertise, every time we had some come up, we'd have to call somebody in. I'm not going to be voting to empty out the resources of the city as it relates to infrastructure, and particularly the <coughs> $77 million that we finna implement that they can help us with as we move forward. Continue, Mr. Lust. Okay, so and then in the latter part of the year, and, and, and Mr. Benzik and Ed can probably talk a bit more about this, uh, the NDRC gave us some different set of rules. Uh, what, Ed, probably two months ago, three months about ago? About two months ago. Maybe. About two months ago, we got a different set of rules. And, and, and I'm not belittling this. What, what typically happens is I got these inspectors, and I train them for a specific task. And if you guys ever come out or if you want, we can show you the forms that we use and how we collect the data and the process we go through. It's not, it's not hard. You can follow it pretty easy. But what happens is typically when Ed calls me and says, Vio, we got to do this this way. Okay, so now what I do is I got to bring the inspectors in, the uh, in-home service team, the filter people. All of us have to come together, and we have to uh, institute the changes that have been uh, passed down to us for whatever reason. Uh, basically, we retrain them. And uh, that can typically take from anywhere from eight hours to 16 hours. If it's a safety issue, sometimes it can take up to uh, 24 hours, you know, because we have to do the mandated, what we call uh, FaceTime. In other words, it's not something that you can do online if it's, if it's instituted by either the DOT or the EPA. You have to actually sit in the classroom and view the materials the hours that are mandated by that particular rule. So that's what we end up with. The, the um, tablets y'all use to shoot the data back. What's your point of uh, information? That's a question for the city attorney. Doesn't the city attorney feel that if the settlement agreement is changing, that council should be made aware when our contractors are given Ms. Fields, you using that to get the flow. It ain't a quick inquiry, nothing to do with this. You're trying to be slick. You're out of order. Mr. Luster, proceed. You the one voted not to have more time. Well, I, I don't know about that part. But anyway. About what part? What that, she talking about? Yeah, I don't know. But, it's a lot to him. But know. what we do is we terror. have to we have to comply. And compliance is what we do, so we have to we have to put the information in there. And we have to train the people so that they do comply, because if if, if at the end, at the end of the day plan. we do all that work and we don't comply, we really don't have anything. You know, we really don't have anything. So you know, compliance, focus on the task, uh, get the work done, is our main goal, and we try to. Like I said, not impede the contractor, stay out of his way, let him do his job, and make it his uh, when, make it a, a partnership. When General McDaniels first got here, what did you do when y'all was called out? And what changes did they make? They point was pulling order. stuff versus directional board. What's point your point? Order. Councilman Mays, um, I've been really polite where you're concerned, but at one point you did speak on this specific thing and you told us to watch the clock. And I am telling you that you use at least four minutes of your time when you were speaking and you have gone well over the five minutes and you've been the only one able to interject. Okay, let me rule on your point of order. I said watch the clock. When it went about two minutes, I started calling Ed and everybody else up. When you call speakers up, your clock stopped. Did you know that? No, Did you know? Well, it's true. Well, it's true. So that's what you're missing. When I call speakers up or you call speakers, you was talking to him. Your clock stopped when you were talking to Rob. We know that rule, Miss Galloway. So I'm going to rule on your point order. It ain't valid. When they speaking, I'm purposely using two, three minutes, calling them up. And as chair, facilitating. Y'all been interrupting, doing. I'm going to call two more up before my last minute that you just referred to went out. I know exactly what I'm doing. If the motion wasn't made on the flow, they'd have spoke before any motion. But I had to entertain a motion was made, and it handicapped y'all in the five minutes. I tried to get you out of that. Point of order. So, 
What's your point? So in essence, you're ru- you're running this 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 portion to a, to allow us to hear everybody. That is correct. Under my time. Okay, just so you know, if you continue along this line, I'm not going to be staying as long. You, you can leave now. I'm you a council answer. person. Well, but I ain't in my point, Miss Worthy. I'm ruling on the point order. It ain't no buffalo. She say that's what I'm trying to do. She don't speak for me. She don't even speak for the people in the first ward. I'm trying to give the good information to the council that I had came here to do before a motion was put on the floor. We heard from accountants. We heard from others. We gonna hear from AE County if I have to use my time to do it. That's what I'm doing. What's your point? Well, you ain't got it right now. I still got it. You'll get it after me. He still got time. I think Griggs do. Everybody else exhausted. So I know what I'm doing. I am trying to move on. What's your point? Mr. President, can you make a on this? Um, you out of order. Move um, the seat, please. Um, you out of order. Continue, Mr. Uh, I'm the chair. I'll wait in. Okay, so we train the we we train uh, the inspectors with the new data that we receive. We uh, AECOM uh, refines the data on a pretty much daily basis. You know, they refine the data, they refine the process pretty much daily, so that it's a it it meets the criteria that's that's mandated. For us, and I think we're in compliance. Nobody said we wasn't, and Ed would tell me if we weren't. <laughs> I'm sure we in compliance. But then we cross train the team so that all members can back up the other member. We cross train them, and some, you know, as you guys know, people, you got to take more time with some people. So that's when we have to do one on one and hands on stuff. But at the end of the day, we get it done. And. Uh, it's so critical for us because, like I said, and Rob will tell you, if at the end of the day we don't meet our criteria and our compliance, if we're not in compliance, we, we really don't have anything. And then we have you data that we have to so. share with Rob's team. They share data with us. Um, you know, it's, it's just a lot going on. There's a lot of balls in the air on a typical day. And, uh, you know, you really have to see the process. You really have to just kind of – look at it and, and, and just uh, absorb it, you know, because there's a lot going on. And there's things going on in other cities and other towns that's affecting this project based on the data that we collect and send off and it's it looked at, reviewed, and then in that process, on top of all of that, you've got the contractors that are requesting payment and, that ha- and that's a whole other process, you know. But we have to have the data so that that when that request is made, that Rob ain't got to spend 20 hours trying to figure out did we do a service line replacement at ABC Street, or did we do a partial or a full, or was it lead, was it copper? What we try to do is make sure that Rob has the most current information so that when it hits his desk, he can review it and get it turned around in the shortest period of time. And I think we've been... Uh, I think we've been pretty good with it. Before I was interrupted, I had asked you about General McDaniels and what they call you in to do when he first got here, because a lot of people are high up on him and don't know. Can you explain what y'all did different from Lance in the Flint with General McDaniels? Point well, of information. What's your point? Councilman Mays, can we move the other resolutions? Since we have spent two hours Mid- on this No, we're going to continue okay. to have my say just like whatever. I don't so know you what your, what's your position on this one. It doesn't matter. Okay, There's it matters to me. I want to have my say and my discussion just like y'all do, Miss Galloway. I got the right to call folk up. Y'all so rude. These people is legitimate folk. And you don't want me to have my five minutes and do it under the rules? What's your point? I make a motion to take You ain't the got the flow. You, you do a point of order. order. I say, no, what's I your didn't. point? I didn't give you the flow. You ain't going to get the flow. He ain't getting the flow till I finish with the flow. I know y'all maneuvering and whispering. Let me have the flow. Continue, mister. You out of order. Okay, so 
It's an appeal of the decision of the chair that I got the flow and ain't got to get her the flow. Is it a second? You recognize me. That's what I'm I said, what's your point? What's your point? Um, it's an, are you out of order? I'm trying to see if it's a second, Miss Galloway. Y'all don't run this. Y'all ignorant. And it's pissing me off. And you guys are looking foolish in public. Is there a second? There's a second to the appeal by you, Miss Worthy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's been appealed and seconded. The appeal is that she wants me, she mad because for our rule, I got the flow. I recognize a point of information. What's your point? But I ain't give you the flow. And so I'm ruling we still got the flow and Mr. Luster can proceed. And if you vote yes, you uphold my ruling. If you vote no, then you then I to do something that she wants me to do. Your discussion, Ms. Galloway. Councilman Mays, I didn't do a point of information. Yes, you did. You did a point of order. The point of order had already been done. And I came back because you wanted to say something. I say, what's your point? Yeah, but I didn't. But that's what I said. What's your point? I didn't give you the flow because he wanted it before you. I didn't give it to him. And he got time. You ain't got no more time. You can't get the flow. The, the problem that I have, Councilman Mays. The is problem is, is you're discussing just, an appeal. I am. Okay, I then am. go ahead. I am. Councilman Mays, you are the main person that will stop any of the outside discussion from other people to make sure that your colleagues have the floor. You hate when people do it to you. You'll say, Miss Attorney, I know that you want to speak, but I want to see if any of my colleagues want to speak first. Now you're not even upholding the, the rule that you... Y'all didn't exhaust your about. time, Miss Galloway. Do you understand about, that? I'm not even talking about just me. Mr. Garrett... Yeah, yeah he can time. get it after me. He could have got it before me, but he didn't ask. I asked him anymore. I get to get the flow. He then not let me know he'll get it after VO. He can't just but get that it. Would mean that you've had Ms. Galloway, are you arguing the appeal? Because if am. you ain't arguing, I want my I colleagues to recognize that you have manipulated your time by calling up every person you would like for us to hear and therefore monopolize the entire time using it under your five minute time frame. Okay, that ain't so really arguing the appeal. Is. That's something else. But Ms. Worthing, go ahead. You mad because you didn't call them up? You could have called them. They ain't eat time. You mad? Go ahead, Ms. Worthy. I'm just going to be frank here. Uh, the reason that Ms. Mays <laughs> is doing this is so that one of us that are going to vote no on the AECOM contract will either leave or get frustrated, will say something, and it'll kick us out. Um, Mr. Winfrey is our council president, and he gave us questions for council leadership. For a point of information. Oh, point of information. Hold up. Point of information. Are you 100% sure between you and God that's what's happening? Y'all make allegations. Y'all call folks racist. That ain't what I'm doing. Proceed. You got some. Y'all done caught up on conspiracy theories. I'm tired of white folks telling me who I am and what I'm doing. Calling so, me racist. That's um, what I don't care who stay and who leave. By you, you be gone by now. I'm not gonna let her stay up there and say what I'm doing. Just lying. You gave her the floor. I did give her the flow, and I can be out of order, but I'm just I said point of information because anybody can do it. I asked her if she's sure that's factual what she's saying about me. That was my point of information. Proceed. I got the right to do that. She don't know factually what she's talking about. Mr. She ain't going to answer, though. Mr. Winfrey, yeah. right now we are held hostage. And what I expect from our council president... Point of order. We own an appeal. Address this behavior. Point of order. We own an appeal. Stay germane to the appeal. The appeal is because you are abusing your chairmanship, Mr. Mays. And our president refuses to acknowledge it because it's a yes vote for AECOM. Well, that's what you want to say about me and the president. Miss Fields, go ahead. Absolutely. Argue the appeal. I'd also state that it's very, very clear that uh, you, Mr. Mays, are abusing your position as a chair to keep speaking beyond the time that is allowed to your colleagues. You're trying to manipulate this rule. You're going on, I think you've been speaking for an hour, too, using the device of calling up other people and giving them time. And I agree with both Ms. Galloway uh, and Ms. Worthing. 
And I think somebody needs to put a stop to your abuse of your position as chair. And, and the simple fact that even while people are speaking, like this murdering, you just start interrupting her at any point in time. You are an incompetent chair, and uh, I agree with the appeal. Um, if there's any more discussion, Miss um, Miss Miss Fields, y'all didn't went point of information and interrupt repeatedly. I hear your point. Any more discussion on the appeal? If it ain't no discussion on the appeal, I don't care how to block a four five vote. I don't care what allegations they make about me. Miss Worthen and come up with. He's trying to make us leave. So our five votes that we didn't talked about that they know that I don't know, just lying. She usually gone by now. But now they want to talk about what I'm trying to do when I talk about what they say. You're not germane. I didn't bring up nothing about nobody leaving in this appeal. This appeal. This appeal got to do with Monica Galloway appealing because I'm facilitating a conversation with AECOM. And she want me to stop and get a flow to her and or Gary. In the middle of me got the flow. Entertaining folks legitimately. I had the secretary put a council rules. This is what the duty of the chair is. And, that, and we didn't did these rules so much. Hold on a minute. Go ahead and read. Come we didn't did these rules so much, and Ms. Fields and them wrote them. The chair, if you try to call somebody up, I'm going to say, come on. If I say no, you can appeal it. But I'm going to show you where the rules say the that. chair facilitates calling people up. You know that to I be do, true? Yeah. But you so, uh, Ms. Ms. Galloway, you said a point of information, a point of order. And that's how you got recognized. If we discussed that, I feel so <coughs> glad that I followed up and said, what's your point? Because you had your hand up. I said, what's your point? I didn't say I'm giving you the flow. I said, what's your point? That was a fact. Did you hear it, Mr. Winfrey? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. You might not have honestly didn't it. hear me. I heard you, but just because you said it doesn't mean that it was cool. That mean I give you the flow when I say, what's your point? Yeah. Oh, no, it don't. Only for a point of order, a point of information. Order. 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 You was already discussing one. It's in close proximity. If I had ignored you, you'd have said the, pre the president or chair, presiding officer, shall decide all questions arising under these rules and general politary practice, subject to appeal, while on all questions of order and interpretation of the rules and the priority of business, it is the duty of the chair. Now, this is rule 1.2, to decide the question. It is the privilege of any member to appeal. If the appeal is second, if the chair states his decision, so forth and so on. Now, when we get into the discussion of the motion, that's a relevant appeal. I thought it might have been in there. I'm going to show you where y'all wrote and voted on that a chair calls people up. You say you know it's in there, Ms. Galloway, but yet you appeal it. The president knows it's in there. But yet you appeal it because you think you can get the flow again in an exhausted your time. You can't get the flow. No more on this discussion because they voted not to give you more time. But I'll honor a point of order, a point of information. I walked around there and told you that. Now you want to use it to show off against me. Well, that's what you're doing. I'm going to read it. Let me read it. And if you want more discussion on your appeal, you can. But it's getting to be a little ridiculous. And you know the rule, and you're trying to use it on me. Councilman Mays, I wasn't trying to get the floor to have discussion. You ain't got the flow now. you out of order. I don't know what you were trying to get the flow and what you appealing for me not giving it to you for. But you appealing, you right in there with them. I, appeal, I would draw my appeal. Okay, fine. Proceed, Mr. Lusk. 
Well, where it, where it pertains to uh, the general McDaniels, when we rolled this program out I'm not initially, we had a procedure we were using called a pull method. And uh, it was probably, at best, maybe 10%. Can effective. we have one meeting? Is it? Can we get some respect to listen to our guests? Please. This has been going on repeatedly. It's just disrespectful. <clears throat> I mean, just, just pause. They're not interested in hearing this. They ain't interested. I know you ain't. You ain't got to say no out loud. We already know. You ain't even listening to learn. And I'm not going to have guests disrespected, whether they're yo and yo, attorneys, black folk from the North End, White folk from AECOM, it ain't funny, Ms. Worthing, because y'all are known for calling me a racist. And that's the problem. I don't appreciate people who act like y'all publicly against my reputation. I dealt with Walling and Scott and them in this room. You ain't no different. You ain't going to get no free pass from Councilman Mays when I'm trying to deal with order. And I done paused to deal with your order. You keep talking and saying stuff slick. If it continues, I'm going to ask you to remove them. I'm going to see what you do. Uh, Ms. Wheeler, I done gave warning after warning. If they discriminate and don't remove them, I'm going to come and sue. Because I'm not going to be treated differently when I chair and ask them to be removed and when Mr. Winfrey chair. And I'm howling out appeal. I'm already about to file that lawsuit. So can we move on now? Because we will move on, Mr. Winfrey, but guess what? I'm going to chair this meeting, and they're going to respect our guests. Proceed, Mr. Um, what's your point? Councilman Mays, um, how much longer is this line of questioning going to go? It ain't been a line. It's been some statements, and y'all missing it. It's going to be some more statements. We don't know. The quicker y'all cooperate and be quiet and quit your points point and interrupt. What's your point? Are you aware that we started on this resolution at 735? I'm aware this finance committee started at 501. Yeah, I'm very aware. Proceed, Mr. Luster. Okay, we used a pull method to replace the service line on the lead and the copper, but because of the... Um, because of the type of soils we were working with, we were probably 10% effective. So what we did is, uh, with the uh, help of uh, everybody involved in this room, we decided that uh, the best way would to go would be what we call micro tunneling, HDD, hydro, hydro drill, whatever you want to call it, directional drill. Um, order, Mr. Um, Mr. Metcalf, can you get Ms. Worthen out of here? Can you remove her from this meeting? Ms. Worthen, will you remove yourself? No. Well, will you remove her from this meeting? And if you don't I tell the public why, will you remove her from this meeting? I, um, I was appealing and you removed me as a black man. I'm asking the white lady to be removed. When, when I appeal, you walk up and talk to me. Walk up and talk to her and treat the white lady like you treated the black man when her wanted me removed. I'm asking you as chair, remove her. What's your position? There's you didn't talk to the president when he said and asked. On the floor. Um, I, it was one on the floor when I got removed. I'm asking okay, you, you go, you're already acting differently toward white folks. What you going to do? I'm asking her to be removed. Was I'm at, it was one when I got removed. Yes, it was, I guarantee you. And I'm going to sue. Uh, That's what's going to happen. It was one when you removed me. I was appealing. But, Councilman, you and I talked about that. I'm going to sue. Angela, I'm going to prove when I appeal, he walked up and removed me. Didn't, and he didn't ask was it a second. I'm doing the exact same thing and can't get movement when I'm removing white folks. She, she just appealed. <laughs> they didn't, so I've been treated differently. Let's say I'll take the high road, honor the appeal, but you already treat me differently when a chairman speak, treat me like you treat that guy. When he wanted me removed, I said, I appeal. You walked up to me, I can't resist, it's a felony. I know I didn't resist. That's not how it happened. I appealed. I appealed. 
I appeal. Whatever I did first, you point of information first. Angela, I'm going to sue. Diff discrimination, people acting under the color, it might not make sense to them, but it'll make sense legally. Um, what's, your, what's your appeal, Ms. Ms., 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 um, Ms. Fields? They finna get sued. He gonna get sued for treating mine differently. I guarantee you. So since he wanna consult, what's your appeal, Ms. Fields? Is there a second to the appeal that Ms. Worthen should not be removed? That's my rule. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Go ahead. For steady talking and being out of order at this table. And we'll do you too. I don't wonder once or twice. You're going to be in order here. It's got, it ain't a joke. It ain't a game. Miss, Miss uh, Fields. Once again, you are abusing your power and authority as chair to uh, just in your peak of whatever it is, temper tantrum that you want Ms. Worthen re re removed, and you're <coughs> being racial about it, which is totally unnecessary to begin with, uh, and I really object to that. So I do not think that Ms. Worthen should be removed, because I don't think she did anything to be removed for. You don't think you did nothing by calling me a racist. You don't think you did nothing by being on TV calling you me one with her and got her doing it. I know y'all don't think like I do. Call it a cultural difference. Call it black, call it white. These are the facts. Call it disrespect in a meeting. It's been repeatedly going on. All meeting long, laughing, I'm hearing it, people speaking. It didn't happen for you and yo. It didn't happen for the attorney. Y'all not gonna be in this meeting, which I tell, disrespecting folks, loud, Distraction is just ridiculous, and I don't want it. Now we at a point where the police officer ain't following the chair's instructions, but he follow other chairs. It, and so it's going to be paperwork filed. Different treatment of a chair, removals, appeals. When I appealed, I didn't think I was going to get removed it after the appeal was exhausted. And the film going to show. I'm saying to President Winfrey, I appeal. You put me out, I appeal. You don't remove me from my elected seat. And then these folks can sit in public acting a fool and ain't getting removed once. Not under my watch. I'm the first ward councilman. I happen to be black. I ain't a racist. And I'm tired of these two. And it can come to a head. And I'm tired of you, sir for following some chairman's direction, but won't follow mine. Is it because I'm black? Is that a factor? Is that a factor? Is it because they white you won't walk up to them? Is that a factor? I'm making a record, Mr. Winfrey. I'm speaking on an appeal. And I'm telling you, I stick with my ruling that when something is out of order and I done warned it once or twice, I can ask that it be removed. I don't have to put up with this mess. I ain't going to put up with it. don't care how you chill, how you feel, but they trying to blame you for me. I done seen every trick in the book here. I done heard everything. This man ain't going to be respect, disrespected. He going to be respected. And when Miranda come up, she going to be respected. Now, there ain't even enough votes here, Maurice, to, to even win no appeal. They ain't gonna win or lose. Call for the vote if there ain't no more discussion. All in favor of holding the ruling of the chair signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Continue. Okay, so what we did was we, we called a pull method. And the pull method is you put a cable you in. You get to stay. That's what y'all, y'all confused that you get to stay. What you laughing about? Y'all act like y'all don't understand the vote? Point I'm going to explain it. Um, continue. Point of information. Continue. Point of information. If you're using it wrong to get the flow, I'm going to ask again you be removed. What's your point? Ms. Hey, hold up, Miss Galloway. You out of order. It's a point of information. What's your point, Miss Worthy? 
Yeah, don't go there. What's your me. point? She has um, a point. Mr. Davis is Are you aware of the fool you've been acting ever since you've been here? That's inappropriate. Y'all been inappropriate. Continue with your point here. of information. Y'all think y'all run something. Um, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Luster. I ain't got time for this. If you use that to get the floor again wrongly, I'm going to ask the court to be ruled. You mouth. shall be removed. Okay, so we so ain't no pull, game. we uh, we instituted a pool method in 2014, 2015, and it was only 10 percent successful. So we went to the directional drill, uh, HDD. You know, there's several names for it, micro tunneling. But what we did is we went to the directional drill, and we uh, we consulted with uh, I think it was Wade and Trim, and uh, Row Engineering and worked through that process and got it uh, changed so we could use the directional drill system. And we've been pretty much with the directional drill and something we call a missile. Uh, we've been pretty much 99.9% uh, .9 <coughs> accurate with what we, uh, what we do uh, as far as installing the service lines in the home. Yeah, so that's the, uh, and that took place in 2015 and we've been using it successfully. Uh, up until this point, and it's 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 been a success as far as I'm concerned. You know, we haven't had we do get some com complaints, but that's in a project this size. That's not it's not un, uh, unfounded to have some complaints. And like I said, we try to address those complaints within a 24-hour period based on the knowledge and the information that we receive back from our uh, IT team and the uh, team of engineers that review the processes based on the uh, criteria that we are mandated to uh, follow. Uh, it's considerable, uh, but we get it done. And, uh, you know, I think we've hit our stride at one point during the year. We were down as low as 100 uh, service uh, expirations a week, and we've hit about 500. We have hit as many as 650 in one week. And uh, we're a year ahead, so I guess the proof is in the pudding, <laughs> you know. Anything else you want them to know as they consider AECOM? You subcontracted out on AECOM. You and how many more Flint residents or people locally? Well, we got 30 to 35 local uh, people hired and trained. <coughs> We've actually trained more than that, but we retain about 30 to 35 of them. We probably trained 50 in the last uh, two years overall. Um, some have moved on to other positions. And the training that we give them, as Ed told you earlier, the training that we give them is intensive. It's focused uh, specifically on the tasks that we do so that we cover all the bases so that you guys can have better information to make better decisions. And Councilman Mays. That's your point. If we lose council people and this resolution does not pass, does it fail and stay on finance to the next I'll month? I'll answer that. Continue, Mr. No, I'd like uh, for you to answer that. You might like it, but I'll answer it. Proceed, Mr. Lusk. You can't make him answer it. Okay, so, so what we have you're, is... Uh, you're using it to get the flow on something you want to discuss, and I, I'll answer it, but not right now. Proceed. Okay, so what we do is we train, like I say, about 50 people total in the last couple of years, year to two years, based on that. Some have moved on to other positions. And uh, the training that we give them is certified. We give them certificates for the training so that they can use it wherever they go. It's uh, Usually it's a national training. Yeah, I don't brings, remember uh, this, how y'all treated these people. Mr. Luster, they not listening. Okay. Um, Sam, you up next. Um, I apologize for my colleagues. Point of I, order. What's your point? Councilman Mays, I'm simply trying to help the resolution if it has the ability to have life. Do you realize that? And well, this speak process on it. is speak mistreating people do a, that do a point make of them information want to that you are um, willing to support it. I don't know where you at because you didn't discuss matter where I it. It matters to me. Not Miss right Galloway, you out of order. I'm calling him up. Us. Well then and leave you on your own. I ain't gotta have you removed. Miss Galloway, I want her removed now. I feel it. Okay, it's an appeal. I, I, I second that. It's second. 
Miss, just remember what's happening here. It's a different treatment by him, for one. Um, I'm saying you ain't going to just take over and holler. I rule you out of order. You was out of order. You appealed it. I'm going to, if you vote yes, she was out of order. This is crazy. Anybody else want to discuss it? I want to discuss it. You got the floor. Councilman Mays, in the event that you are hoping that people are going to be interested in changing their vote, wherever they might be, this seems like tactics that people would have you in a room for like 13 hours without water, hoping that you will be so hallucinative that you will finally decide, I'm just going to do it because I'm being tortured. And I just don't think that this is the lining, and I don't think that this is what AECOM is hoping to get done in an effort to win some votes. I respect Mr. Luster, but this has gone way too far, and you haven't gotten the buy-in of your colleagues whatsoever. You are holding us hostage when all we want to do is make a decision on the resolution. Ms. Galloway, that's a damn shame you use that analogy on oh, some really? discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Winfrey. Uh, I have a question, uh, Council Mays, on the discussion of the uh, appeal. Didn't you ask for, didn't you, didn't you do a privilege motion? Yes. Didn't you say a point of information? And, and so, Council point, point, point of order. So as she was explaining to you a point of order, you cut her off. You know, you gave her the floor by a recognizing. And so you may not have agreed or disagreed with what Ms. she was saying. Ms. Winfrey, sure. point of information, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you, did you hear her point of order? And if you didn't ask her what yeah, it was, yeah. I can tell you. Tell us what it well, was. Well, what, was, what she was trying to say to you is that the method that you're using to get 1900 whatever uh, uh, passed your colleagues feel that they're being point of information. A, is that really a point of order? Well, I think it is. I think she's uh, uh, me. I would have not me. I would have stated it in a shorter version. I asked you what she said and what I. Well, you think that was really a point of order? I think it was because okay. I, I think she was. And so I it. ruled on it. And yeah. once I ruled, she went to steady talking. That she was out of order then. Okay, that's okay. what I ruled. All right. Because she was high, hyper, don't care what happened to her. That's what she was doing. Okay. You, did you see it? Did you see it? I've seen it. So I entertain the point of order. Okay. And we'll continue. I done entertain points of order, points of information. I done said people abusing them to get the flow and make statements. I don't want to interrupt you. But I just state the facts right. She went overboard. And I ruled out order. And to the point where I asked her to be removed. He didn't move. So I called that to Angela's attention because I'm finna sue somebody again. I'm, my chairmanship ain't gonna be made of my free up. When I say there's something going on, he need to move just like he moved for you and Kerry Nelson then. And everybody else. If it, the shoe was on the other foot, he'd have been and walked up to me. If I resist, it's a felony. I'm not playing with this thing. And I'm making a damn good record for my elected seat. And he who lasts, lasts, sometimes lasts best. It's a 42 U.S.C. 1983. It's a Title VII. It's a violation of the rules. It's discriminatory. It's different treatment. It's all of that. That's what happened before. And now I done proved it. I didn't move when you moved on me. I just build the record. Miss <laughs> Fields, is it something you want to say? Call the question. Yes. It's been a move to call the question. Um, Y'all know what the question is? Mm -hmm. Anybody confused? I'll restate the question as a chair. I ruled out order for her behavior that went on after a point of order. Ask that she been removed. When I did that, she appealed being removed. If you vote yes, then I got the right to remove people who act a fool. If you vote no, people who act a fool can stay, except for if they <laughs> mean. Now, that's the paraphrase. Okay. But I ruled she was acting a fool, and I wanted to remove. Okay. Now, if somebody wanted me to restate it, I will. But I ain't got time to go through this all day and patty cake with y'all. Y'all understand the appeal? Y'all understand my rule, and I ruled out of order and asked you to be removed. She appealed. All in favor of the uh, ruling of the chair, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
point of information. Call for the question. All in favor to call for the question. Now stand corrected. Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Any abstentions? The vote for the call for the question passes five, seven to two. All in favor of the appeal, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. If you're in favor of the appeal, that means... Um, or we in the middle of a vote. We ain't in the middle of discussion. Of and it's a call please for the restate. question. Please restate. I didn't restate it. I didn't stated it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. We don't have discussion after call for the questions and votes. All opposed, say nay or raise your hand. I'm going to do it again. All in favor, raise your hand or say aye. All opposed, raise your hand. All uh, abstain, raise your hand. So the vote would be one yes, one, two, three, four, five, six no, and two abstentions. That's what I see. That's what I'm going to record. If there's any objections to that. I asked them, was it okay to right. abstentions? Now, if they say they want to be a yes vote, we're recorded. That's the process. What's your vote? <laughs> you know what? Yes. I, Just I let's get the vote count straight. You know, What's your is. vote? Abstain. So the vote is recorded. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. No. One yes. And two abstentions. That's what I said. And that's what it is. Point of information. Could the chair restate the motion? However, um, let's move on. Let's move on. That vote has been voted, decided, recorded. Let's move on. Okay. Um, are you done talking to yourself? Good. Um, Mr. Cox, you got a question? Because it ain't the flow. I'm calling up Mr. Cox. I just, I just, I just, I just want to say, can we um, perhaps <coughs> move this to council or wherever it's going to move? Mr. Cox, yeah, after happened. I hear from AECOM, and normally we are here from them, but they got so but slick you know, in motion. Ms. Ms., Ms., with Ms., all due Ms. respect, Councilman Mays, with all due respect, I think we all have Miss 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 Winfrey Carter. You out of order. If you got a point of information or a point of order, but I'll call him up. I'm trying to treat it as a point of information. Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox, identify yourself for the record and who you are and what you do. Good evening. My name this is, is serious business. Oracle Systems. I'd like to thank you for your time and your consideration over the past year. It's been great working with you. Uh, I'm going to say one thing. Ed Thorpe is a PhD of engineers. It gets no higher. Uh, Vio Luster has been on the fields almost 40 years all over the, all over the country. Again, uh, a great team. There's none no better. Have a good evening. Miranda, is there anything you want to add about AECOM, the staff, the work y'all did, and what y'all plan to do? Any differences from this contract to another? No, I think Mr. Weingart. No, I, I think we've said everything. We, I think we've said everything unless there's questions. This is, you, want, you want it to flow, but y'all call for questions. I'm going to finish up my spot. And then I'll see who else got something to say, and we'll take it from there. Um, my position is this. Point of order. What's your point? You've already used your five minutes, sir. I disagree with you. And so I'm... Okay. It's an appeal of the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded to appeal the ruling of the chair. The chair ruled that he didn't use in five minutes. The chair ruled that he called him up and he got the right to do it. She appealing that I don't even get a minute to say nothing. So is there any other discussion on this appeal? Ms. Galloway. Councilman Mays, how much time do you have left? 
Oh, I said I might have had a minute or two when it started. And so whatever it is, that wasn't discussed. So whether it's a minute or whatever, y'all can laugh, Quincy. You can joke, but I'm dead. I'm going to call your name again, and if you tell me don't, I'll try to get you removed. Is there something you want to say to this councilman in this meeting? I'm asking your colleagues to get you from calling my name. Okay, well, my colleagues can't get me from saying Quincy Murphy. I'm going to say it again, Quincy Murphy. Now, if you something you want to say, what's the point? Well, and they ain't going to communicate with me, neither. And they ain't going to be out of order in this meeting. I'm going to call it again, and I'm going to keep order. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it with you and your name, his and his name, and anybody else in this room. Now, back to the appeal. And it's going to be order in this room. From Quincy, from everybody. Is it something, Mr. Mr. R. Murphy, you got, you going to keep talking? I'm going to ask him to be removed now. Um, what is it, Mr. Palladino? Um, I want him out of here. Gone. That's how I roll. You ain't running this. You ain't them. They, they making that bad example for you. Keep listening to Eva now. Get him out of here. Hold on a minute, Mr. Palladino. Well, to get him out. You my problem now. Bye. No, you got a Bye. You need Bye. To go get some you help. ain't even you case. need to go get some help. God bless you. You need to go get some help. God bless you. You need you need God some bless help. you. Bye. I ain't the one. God bless you. They ain't God, neither. They letting you they just ain't go, go over them like Bye. that. Bye. Bye. Nothing. Don't Is it something I, Mr. Paladino? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mays, man, this black and white thing. I'm going to let you know right now, I don't mind this. But thank you for giving me the floor earlier. I am embarrassed as a resident. I did enjoy listening to him. I did enjoy hearing this. I do enjoy hearing you. But here's where I'm at. Mr. Palladino, Mr. Palladino, I'll let you dollars. back, but stop right now. They've started to race stuff. Man, I'll get you I back in. I'll get you back in. Stop, when we get stop, a stop. When we get a I'm asking speak, you to stop. We get a I'll get to, to that. I'm asking you to stop. I didn't know what you want. I'm going to ask you to stop. They don't. I know it. We'll get there. They brought up the race thing first. We'll get there. What is it, Mr. Woods? My question is, I mean, AECOM, when they went to Mott, they said that they would come back May the 31st. Okay, I got you. Let's stop. I'll get to that. But let's finish up where we at. We on the appeal. We on an appeal. I'm just trying to see what y'all talking about. I'll let it you. I guarantee you before this meeting adjourned, you'll have your say. It's a public meeting. Let me do this. This is foolish. We on an appeal. And they, uh, anybody else want to speak on this appeal? Do y'all know what it is? No. I'm going to tell you what the appeal is. Beg your pardon. Yeah, she said I didn't have no time to make a statement after them people. I disagree. They appeal. That's what this is. I don't care if it win, pass, or fail. They've been stopping me. They think the whole time. I'm going to show them something. Miss Arm Fields. I wouldn't let y'all to know I didn't chair at this meeting from 501 to now. Way more than that, what you saying. I'm going to continue to chair until y'all are heard on your issue, which I promise you you'll get after we finish this internal business if you choose. I'm going to say this. Gara, and then if there's any other discussion, if not, I'll call for the question and we'll do it. Gara stopped me when I waited last with a call for the question. If you don't hear from AECOM, you ain't going to hear from nobody if you're serious about this. When I try to sum up, she appealed and said, I ain't have no more time. This chairman, Mr. President, 
And Kate Fields been saying, I've been abusing the chair ever since she got mad and resigned. I know folks jealous because I'm the finance chair. That's what it's coming down to. And it's been maneuvers ever since the new council um, for the new term with press conferences calling me, trying to remove me from this finance chair, Tony. And it's been by Kate Fields and Word. And every now and then they'll get a little help from Santino, Griggs, and mine. So my point is this. I ain't give up the chair of finance. I ain't resigned. I ain't no racist. And I ain't abused the chair like Miss Fields and Word and them try to make. They playing politics with a seasoned politician. That's what they doing. And every time I try to sum up and move on, they appeal, and we'd be done now. Nobody else from AECOM want to speak. I'm trying to wrap up. I know these rules like the back in front of my hand. And here go the gamesmanship. There's been accusations of what's going on here. And I'm looking at factually what's going on. I'll watch this vote, but I know that I purposely pointed at the clock just for me and went to calling people up. And now here we is, as I try to sum up, after the real people who supposed to speak were supposed to speak. It shouldn't have never been a motion until after they spoke. That was my plan coming in. They tried to weave them out. I give them my time. You're right. I used the system wisely. And they disrespected their information because they done round robin. Might have illegally discussed it before they got here. That's what the other ones used to do. Might have. Since they say what I have done, I say what they might have done. They didn't say what I might. They say what I'm doing. So they ain't even seasoned on talking right. And it's offensive, it's nasty, and it's wrong. And this is the second maneuver to try to take a minute, a measly minute or two away from me. That's what I see. And for all those who think it's funny and laughing, I'm up for politics. Been up for it. And ain't been doing bad. Any more discussion on this motion that I'm out of order, didn't have no time after they finished? That's the gist of it. Everybody understand the motion? If you vote yes, I did have a minute. If you vote no, take it. Who cares? All in favor of the appeal signify by saying aye. I don't We're in the middle of a vote. All in favor of the appeal signify by saying aye. Is a restating of the Hold up, hold up. What's your point of information, Ms. Worthing? Because I asked with any questions on the motion who understood it. What's your point of information? When it comes to a vote, call it. You can't get points of information, points of order. It's really wrong. What's your point of order or point of information, Ms. Galloway? We in roll call. I just want to know if you could reset. Remember this, because I'm going to do it in the middle of a roll call vote, Ms. Brown. Never mind. I know how to vote now. Okay. <laughs> you ain't got the flow. You out of order. She talking, Ms. Worthing. Ms. Worthing, you out of order. What is you talking about, Miss Galloway? I just didn't understand the way that you posed the way if, how we vote. What I said was this. Okay. If you vote yes, you uphold the ruling of the chair. The ruling of the chair was that after they finished, I say I had a minute or so to wrap up. Okay. They appealed and said I didn't have no time left. So if you vote yes, you uphold the ruling of the chair. If you vote no, then you deny the ruling of the chair. That's the way, to, that's the way it reads. Mm -hmm. And you know what the ruling was. Now I'm gonna go back to roll call. That's where I was at. It's like calling for the question and doing a point of information or a point of order to have further discussion. I don't buy into that. But if you do that, when I do it, I don't wanna hear nothing because I'm not gonna let the different treatment continue in my elected position, Ms. Wheeler. And I'm going to show y'all something. Point of information. What's your point? Councilman Mays, um, <coughs> is it correct that having the restatement of the motion is acceptable before 
a vote and it's different from a call for the question? It ain't, it, it, it ain't acceptable. It's practice. The chair should restate the motion before he called for the vote. That's what I did. And I continue to do it. And if there's any clarification, then I say to people what it is. This one I restated by saying if you vote yes, you, uproot, you, you uphold the ruling of the chair. And the chair ruled he had one minute or so or two minutes left. They appealed and said I didn't, and we on the appeal. I've stated that, and it is proper. It's mandatory, really. We don't always do it, but the chair should always restate the motion. As is it understood, call for the vote. I did that call for the vote in the middle of roll call and vote. People went to doing point of information and points of order. I'm saying once you call for the vote or call for the question, that ain't really good to entertain points of information and points of order. And if y'all did it, when I do it, I don't want to hear people <coughs> howling foul because that's why we keep treating folks different. That's what I said. Now, is it any more discussion or clarification on the motion? I'm going to call for the vote again. Hearing none, all in favor of the ruling of the chair signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. What are you doing? I thought he had a minute. I so the mo voted. Thank you. Any abstentions? Yes. Okay. So the motion fails. The appeal fails. Four yes. Four no and one abstention. That's the recorded vote. So I'm going to continue with my minute. That's what happens when an appeal fails. I'm really disappointed in this. This is a $4 million contract. I'm going to put a motion, a substitute motion on the floor <clears throat> that we send an amended resolution to council. And I want that amended resolution because they don't need to pack up and leave while y'all sort this out. And residents don't need to be served. I mean, not served. So I'm going to ask that we amend the motion right now to... Um, Three million. And so that's my motion to amend that to three million and then come back on the one point eight million at a later date. So move. Is there a second? We had a Is there a second? I second that. It's been moved and properly second. Miss um Miss Miss Ms. Um, Brown, do you want to say something? Yes, I, I think as a matter of procedure, elementary-wise, you're the chair and you can't make the motion. Right. Yes. So you I did, and you can, and it's done. So Ms. Point Brown, order. Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown, you've been recognized. What's your point? Point of order, Ms. Yeah, okay. uh, Brown is correct. You cannot make a motion as a chair. Okay, um, I made it. I ruled I made it. And whenever I get the flow, I'm going to make it and going to continue to make it as a council member. I'm not giving up my rights to second or make. We went over that. Bob. Could I second? I second it. I don't give up my rights. Um, is there any more discussion on this motion? Okay, well, it's an appeal of the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? So it's been moved and seconded. And this is the appeal. When the chairman get the flow, he can't make a motion. I say he can or she can. Particularly if everybody else can talk, then it's something to be done. He say I can't. And so any Miss Um Miss Um Brown, um, Janelle, bring the Purple Roberts Rules book in here and we'll see if it's addressed in our council rules first. We'll turn to our council rules first. Yeah, Ms. Brown, go ahead. If I recall correctly, in the original discussion, this was the party, the proposal was that the she could make the motion in order for us to count all the proper procedures and laws. Can a chair second it? You have I seconded before we gonna do that. Okay. So I hear what you're saying, but go ahead. 
I'll make the motion. Yeah, that's right. We ain't on we ain't on that right now. It's um it's an appeal on the flow. We're gonna get to the bottom of it unless it's withdrawn. Miss Brown, you can't run this meeting. So what's your point? I'm telling the point. You we didn't heard you. We know what your point is, so now if you want to continue, go ahead. We in the middle of an appeal. It's going to be decided by some council folks. You want to continue, Ms. Brown? I was only reminding the council that Ms. Winfrey Carter had proposed $300 before, and she couldn't make the motion. Um, Ms. Winfrey Carter didn't have the float, and I wasn't jeopardizing no call from the question by Gara. Had you used up all your time? But we on an appeal. We all on an appeal. Okay. So right now, speak, Jermaine, to the appeal versus rectifying a motion. We going to find out. I'm going to order a three-minute recess without objection till we find a, a language in the appeal. We're in a recess. I'm not going to give up my right to make motions. I give up the chair before I give up the right to make motion. Oh my God. Okay. Well, we had recess, Mr. Guerra. You don't do action when you're in recess. I ordered that without objections. If somebody had objected to the recess, I said a three-minute recess. That's what I said. I can't monitor these folks and look up rules at the same time. Hey, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs. You vote with them because they're talking to you to keep you here. No, I made it three, but I'll drag it along if I can. Robert's rule. Under Hold up, we go to council only time rules the first. The chair can introduce a motion or second the motion is if the chair relinquishes the chair to the second in command. Ms. Only Ms. After Galloway. discussion on the motion has ended, may the chair resume as okay, the chair. Okay, good. Good. But right now we're looking at council rules. But I appreciate Ours that. Is not, I don't think but I appreciate that. Okay. You know. So a chair can make a motion, you just have to relinquish it, give it to her, make the motion, and then get it back. Well, a chair can make a motion. After the discussion. So you don't, don't make a motion after the discussion. No, you make a you motion, can, that's what causes the, the discussion. Chair, chair you can get the chair back oh, I know, after, after the, the discussion. I heard what she said, okay. but I'm talking about a chair can make a motion. It just was done but maybe wrong. But they ain't going to take my right to make no, motions Doria away as a chair. Listen, but I hear what's being said. Hold up, let me read our rules first okay. before they come back. Okay. So we'll know what both okay. say. Uh, when you're dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars and don't want to make mistakes and you're dealing with beats of folks like this is serious. Well, we don't know yet. And so if we do know and they know, I don't know. I'll know when they count it. This is showtime. This ain't nothing. I ain't in no clicks with. Let me look at this first. And I, I'm, I'm perfect. Let me look at this. I know where you're coming from, talking with them. I ain't coming from that. So, I mean, I'll have a conversation, but really, let me do this. I'm a fair guy. I ain't tripping. It ain't the end of the world. I'm just looking. I'm doing something. They've been very disrespectful and nasty, and it's going to bite me. And I'm going to win my litigation. Watch. If it ain't settled ahead of time. Yes, I'm going to 
Boy, they into something, ain't they, Maury? See how you gonna line up? Uh, I'm looking at it. They're coming out swinging. And that was done before we got here. You know what? Because they ain't heard nothing, and they already had to no. it. They, they violated. They do their back bar, dude. Mm-hmm. And Santino and um, Gera, three. And I wouldn't care if they stayed or leave. I don't care what they say. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Man, superstar. Oh, you gotta do it, be negative. Oh, they all learn when them people get on them about these pipes and what they ain't doing and yeah. turning down money. They'll come back and home. Money. And them white folks that are eating up what they saying got yeah. cameras all in their face and they don't even know what's happening. That's why I keep talking black and white. Because they in their face when they calling us a racist. And the minute we talk black and white, it's an issue. Hey, Hey, so why did TAC get paid $300,000? TAC is the technical advisory committee that they brought out during the floodwater crisis. Hey, where's the nail? Okay, I want to see if she'll hand me a copy of the charter when she comes back. We got that. Janelle, can you get me a copy of the charter real quick? We're looking at the consultant. We got that. Whenever you, but I need a copy of the charter. Thanks, Janelle. That's not the average. That's not the salary. Is what they say. No, I'm looking at the rate. I'm not. What I'm saying is, so that's the that's because I just I spoke with Grace. He understood because he kept saying our fees are much lower. Which I didn't know he worked in the petroleum industry. That's why consulting oh, okay. fees were higher there. No, but what I'm asking is, why is Dane Walling put the tax together? The technical advisor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm not it sure. Doing, it was doing October. Uh, it was doing 2015 when the advisory letters came out. He put together a technical advisory. Yeah. So I'm not aware of anything. But in here, it's, so why are you getting paid 312 now? Is that? The Econ's Technical Advisory Committee? Quincy called itself along with me. I ain't yeah, each, each consulting firm has that. That's the They senior, don't do what yeah, they do, not represent. with me. Uh, they send a bad example area. for you, and you so falling into it. We had I treat people nice to the act There you go. Uh-huh. James Heath. Okay. And then he worked with DWSD for over 40 years. Yeah, he he was the one that consulted with Flint. Yeah, he got paid $32,000 for one month. Well, no, that's yes, a consulting fee. Yeah, yeah it was 32000 when he quit and had brain surgery. Can you explain the labor and how this Yeah, they're trying to block every move I'm making, my time. I don't want to speak. I'm like, if I got to be Miranda. active, I, you tell. Miranda. Hell, I ain't tell this for five years and got more done and the going to continue. And she been howling about abuse and jail for months since she resigned. I'm finna, they finna, um, I'm finna go all out on these. Uh, okay. I I'm 
Okay, fine. This is the longest three yes. minutes break I've seen. Councilman Mr. Griggs asked us to make this one. Don't be a minute. Oh, this done went way. This done went way. We ain't even got a point. <laughs> Mr. Griggs has for a couple more minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to call this finance committee meeting back to order. We don't have a quorum. Yes, we do. Oh. I looked at that. The question before this council on appeal is whether the chair can make a motion. I've looked in the council rules and I don't know at this point if it's addressed, if I find it later. Ms. Galloway read something under Robert's rules and parliamentary procedure which says you can if you give up the chair. So technically you ain't the chair. And so unless something else is found in these rules, which I haven't. Um, no motion must be debated by council unless it has been stated by the presiding office. It must be reduced to writing if requested by the presiding officer or any council person. Um, resolution, but the city department may be decided and made upon motion um, if a question before the council is susceptible. So I do get to interpret it, and I did that, but then it says that if it's not addressed here, you turn to Robert's rules. So my interpretation might very well be wrong because it ain't addressed in council rules and we turn to Robert's rules. And so, Ms. Galloway, yes, sir. read what Robert's rules say as yes, it relates sir. to that motion by a chair. It if says, you still got yeah, it available. Under Robert's rule, the only time the chair can introduce a motion or second the motion is if the chair relinquishes the chair to the second in command. Only after discussion on the motion has ended may the chair resume as the chair. Okay. So we had that question come up. I looked at it when I seconded a motion by either one of y'all the other week. Nobody appealed it and went through. So after this, we'll know the rule. If I save my time to last as the chair and I want to make a motion, I would relinquish it in this case to Mr. Winfrey, the highest presiding officer other than me. And if he wasn't here, it would be Ms. Galloway. Then I would make the motion. But I know I wasn't going to give up my right to make motions. So if it's a will, it's a way. And I thank you for highlighting that, Ms. Galloway, and I stand corrected. Um, so the appeal was whether or not a chair can make a motion. I rule they can't. Now, I'm still trying to rule out right. But um, maybe technically a chair can't unless they do this, that, and the other first. So we're still going to vote on it. So the appeal to the ruling of the chair, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Ah, uh, point of order. Point of order. Any abstentions? Did you state the motion? All 
in favor of the motion. The motion is, yeah, that's all we talked about. Can a chair make a motion? If you vote yes, now we can't do this every time. Yes, it's the chair's ruling. Let's get it down pat. If you vote yes, you uphold my ruling. If you vote no, you disagree with it. This is simple. We went over it. Now, I'm not going to keep getting in the middle of votes and going back in discussion, but you write the point of order. I don't think I stated it right before calling for the vote, Ms. Galloway. And that's a proper point of order. But y'all got to do better than that. When we get the roll call, if it's some prior to roll call, let's do it. Don't let's keep getting in roll call and keep going back over what's happening. So uh, is everybody clear? Have the motion and the appeal been stated clearly? Yeah. You know what yes mean, you know what no mean? Yes. Okay, so I'll slow down if I'm taking for granted too much. All in favor of the appeal vote yes. I vote yes. All opposed vote no. 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 Okay, the appeal, the ruling of the chair fails. And that's the right vote. So what I'm going to do, Miss Winfrey Carter, did you want to make a motion? I will. You ain't had no flow. I'm giving it to her. I made a motion. You ain't getting the flow, man. You out of order. You out of order. What's your point? All right, you, if you've got a point of information, a point of order, but I give her the flow, and you're howling out. You're out of order. point of order was that I have You didn't call a point of order. You just howled out. Okay, what's your point? She got the flow now. Um, she got the flow now. I had the flow to make a motion. She got point, point of order. You say I had the flow next. You ain't got the flow. She got the flow. Um, so you, you ain't got the flow, but your point of order is recognized. I have to your that you ain't got the flow. And it's been seconded by Miss Fields. Yes. So he ruled in who I get a flow to, whether I give it to him or her. And I said she got it. He said he appealing because I didn't give it to him. So guess what? Is there any discussion on the appeal? Um, go ahead, Miss Fields. You had given Mr. Santino the floor. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, but anyway, I'll discuss that when it gets to me. Any more discussion on the appeal? Miss Worthy. Ms. Ms. Worthy, can you stay germane to the appeal? Yes. Y'all show have been acting foolish today, and it's a good joke. It's fun, but we going to have a ball with it, because when y'all demonstrate unprofessional and acting foolish, I'm sure up for the test from now on. Y'all might have made a very big mistake here today. Um, Ms. Guerra, you got discussion on the appeal. Yes, the reason I say that I had the floor next is because you stated earlier that I had the floor after you were done with the AE comps because I was next in line after you had spoke for yourself. And I still had time left on the original motion to speak, and I think it was clear to everybody uh, that I had the floor next. Uh, Mr. Mr. Guerra, I'm going to say to you, it ain't that you ain't going to get the floor next, but I had the floor. And we had an appeal that I had a minute left. Now we didn't have a ruling that I can make a motion this way, and that's what I'm going to do before you call for a question or do anything what you're trying to maneuver. I done had my hand up in meetings plenty of times, and sometimes chairmen will accidentally make a mistake and go to somebody else. And I ain't never feel them say, I want, you just got a desire to call for a question to do something. I know what you down there talking about. My position is I hope this council don't set this president. We done did an appeal. You know what my motion was. Now we done went on how to do it, because I said, Chair, I ain't going to give up this opportunity to make a motion. And y'all steady trying to maneuver Miss Galloway. Councilman Mays, um, I'm glad that Councilman Gear reminded us. You did say that you had a minute left. With your minute, you made a motion that was appealed. <clears throat> And so, technically, your time has expired, and he would be next in line, based on where we were. Ms. Galloway, that's now, your ruling that my line time line expired. You don't know you if I had two seconds left, um, three seconds left, or ten seconds left. I was interrupted in my minute with an appeal because I made a motion, 
and it was stated by Ms. Brown, I couldn't make the appeal. So you don't know if that's what you said was factual. So you arguing to support him was next, and remember, you gonna chair. So I'm telling you, once we came out the appeal, anybody would sense know this, I said I gave the flow to her because I'm gonna make she gonna make a motion or I'm gonna make it and give it to her or whatever. That's yeah. where we was at technically. I know what y'all trying to do or he trying to do she in my opinion. Miss Galloway, I didn't interrupt you. Well, I still I didn't interrupt you. Y'all got a bad habit, don't you? You you went on. Miss Galloway, you. interrupt me and go ahead and say what you no, want to say since you can't wait to turn. Go it's ahead. It's my turn now. Not when I was talking. Because you interrupted me. Okay. Councilman this Mayor, is I'm not saying that you don't still have 10 seconds left or whatever. We'll watch it. But the point is, once your time is up, the next person, according to who was next, was Councilman Guerra. And you've decided to change the order. And I'm just making I that. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Y'all do it all the time. I might have my hand up and y'all call on Kate Fields. Down. So I don't care what you do. Okay. That's a good blessing. Um, is it something you want to say, Miss um, Winfrey? Yeah, y'all nitpicking the day. And I'm going to be I up for it I think what is now. happening, since the appeal, because um, I guess he was not supposed to make the motion because he's the chair, so I'm going to make the most motion. So that's why... He gave the floor to me to make that motion. It's not a motion. And I can pass the chair to Herb and make the motion right. myself if I He's choose to. But I don't motion. have to get him the flow because of something I said. Yeah, I know what I said. That ain't no that ain't no nothing. So point of information. Where, where point, of in, point of information. What's your point? So you are can you have the flow. That as the chair, you don't have to be fair. I do be fair. Y'all should be fair. He shouldn't call the question when I ain't had my chance to speak. Y'all shouldn't cut me off when I got a minute and I got to fight for a half an hour to get a measly minute. Y'all ain't fair. So when y'all ain't fair and y'all maneuvering, I don't have to do that. That's the way it is. And I'm telling y'all what y'all done did here today then opened up a whole can of worms with this chairman and councilman Mays. Don't ask me to be fair and y'all been disrespectful to me and everybody else. Don't try it, Ms. Galloway from Ebenezer, talking about fair with me and y'all ain't been fair. Don't talk fair with me, Ms. Galloway. You ain't been fair with, with them, hanging with them. They've been nasty, they've been disrespectful, and you've been right with them, it seems. Point of order. What's your point? Councilman Mays, you are not. You said something about fair. I'm talking fair now. Go ahead. What's your point? My affiliation with whatever, and I haven't stuck with anybody. I am my own person. And whenever you are trying to make a What's point your point? No, nah, that you out of order. That ain't Stop a point of order, Miss Galloway. You out of order, Miss Galloway. That ain't a point you of order. Are. You use it. Do I get to rule Man, you out of order? Can you remove her? <laughs> she out of order. I didn't wonder. She's using points of order. Let me read this rule. It say when you abuse them, you shall be removed. It don't say may. She can't say no point of order and then go giving me a speech. She said something about me being fair. When I said something about her being fair and honest and ever neither, she hit the ceiling. Now, you ain't going to use no point of order to get the flow and make no statements. You're out of order. And the rules, you out of order, Miss Galloway. Right now, you out of order. And when you out of order, you shall be removed. It don't say may. Y'all want to appeal that and then read that? Y'all reading what you want to read. I call it selective read. What's your point? Does it apply to you? It apply to me and everybody else. Do it apply to you and y'all? Because it says shall. You want me to read it? You want me to read it? Dare me to read it. Shall mean must. He just don't move for this black chairman against women and white folks. But he moved on black males. He grabs them, handcuffs them. And I'm getting tired of it. And I'm going to prove it. I'm not going to be discriminated against and treated differently. And you're not going to accuse me of fair when all that's been mess and yeah. If you want to be honest and fair and go to Ebenezer, I go to Shiloh. 
Don't pull the game on me about I ain't fair. Point of information. What's your point? Does the chair realize that he said that he can say someone would be next and then decide not to? Yes, I realize I said that and stick by it. Okay. Stick by it. And I'm going to show you why I do it. Okay. If I know Mr. Griggs going to call for a question and I say he was next and I catch on and Mr. Davis and Winfrey got something to say, I ain't calling Griggs. Right. I know what's going on here. Yeah, I know what I said. I also say they've been disrespectful at that end to the guests and to me. I ain't going to call on them next. I know what I said, and I'm saying it loud. If you want respect and you want to be honest, deal honest. But if you want to politic and call people names and you want to roll with them, Miss Galloway, that's your business. These people calling folks racist, dishonest, playing a game. I wasn't honestly playing no game to make nothing go long. They usually been gone. But what you doing ain't helping nothing. That's what I'm talking about. You got the flow. I would like to make a motion. Oh, we on the appeal. Oh. So the appeal, any more discussion on the appeal? The, 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 mo the, the ruling of the chair is this. I don't have to be locked in by council people on who I call in as the chair. I called on her. He appealed. I can't call on her before I call on him. I said I can. And I ruled that I can. They appeal because I guess they want to rule to call on him. I still ain't going to call on him if you win the appeal because I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to. This is an appeal that I can't call on her. I say I can. He say I can't. I can relinquish the chair to you and make a motion. I'm just telling you, you ain't going to accomplish what you want because this is simply a ruling on whether I can call on her. That's what this appeal is. I called on her. He appealed a ruling of the chair. If you vote yes, that means the chair can call on who he want her. If you vote no, it means he can't call on her. I guess that's what it means. So all in favor of the ruling of the chair signified by saying yes or raise your hand. Yes. yes. All opposed signified by saying no or raise your hand. Okay, the, uh, the appeal of the ruling passes. So that means I can't call on you. But what I can do, Mr. Um, Mr. <coughs> Davis, mm -hmm. I can call on you. Yes. <laughs> You got the flow. I would like to say. Oh, he, he appealed because he was next. Right. No, he didn't. He appealed my ruling. My rule, I could call on her. I know what. Look, you got the flow. Y'all out of order. What's your point? What's your, you out of order. She got a point of order. Mr. Garam, that's your first one. That's your first one. You out of order. What's your point of order, Miss Worthy? It didn't pass that I could call on her. No. That's what y'all ruled. I couldn't point call on her. No. Okay. What's your what's your point of information? Do you realize that he appealed because he was next? No, I, I ruled I called on her. Well, that's and that's what we appeal. I stated it before you voted. Oh so y'all out of order. Mr. Davis, you got the flow. Point of order. Point of order. What's your point? Point. Yeah. That's a point. It's a valid point. But you still gonna have to get around me. Cause y'all steady trying to surpass me. So that's a valid point, but we're in the middle of appeal. You get that point? No, Somebody didn't appeal the ruling of me calling on him. No. Then you no, got the flow. No you, can't. you can't appeal. You got the flow, There's Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, you got the flow. Y'all out of order, be quiet. Mr. Davis, you got the flow. What's the point? She has no time. Mr. Davis has no time, and that last vote, you could not call him. Mr. Davis, you got the flow. You are, 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 okay, we got an appeal of the rule. Hold up, Mr. Ms. Hold up. We got an appeal of the ruling of the chair on the floor. Um, is there a second? No. 
Hey, no. Is there a second? A motion. The motion that you made. There's a second to the appeal. Um, I'm ruling that I'm giving him the flow. Um, any discussion on the appeal? Mr. Gill. Because he had raised two times for us, and we were eligible with it. And meanwhile, because I was next on the list, and we already voted that it couldn't go to the good party. That's all I got to say. Any more discussion on the appeal? I'm going to state the ruling that I gave him the flow. It was appealed on. Any more understanding? All in favor of the ruling of the chair signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Nay. Any abstentions? The appeal of the ruling of the chair is affirmed. I would say they were right that you had spoke. Had you spoke, had you spoke twice, Mr. Davis? I did. He did, and so you were right. But then nobody appealed, and I'm going to rule him out of order for telling y'all what was going on. But that was what they should have did, Mr. Woods. Okay, look, before I call for a vote and use my last minute, Mr. Winfrey, would you chair and allow me to make a motion? No, he already used his minute. Some of the names they're saying you already. Okay, well, I've been caught up in appeals. I, I didn't use them. I didn't use them. They used them. I was in the That's middle of a motion. Right. So let them play the game. I'm asking you to chair while I make a motion. trying to make that motion. I ain't studying what they're the doing. They, I would use my minute to make so the motion. By right, he, he they can try to, to block it if they want. So if this you refuse in the chair, I go down the house. Because I'm going to make a motion. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah, go. They're running, huh? They're running. All I'm saying is, it is not appropriate for us to use profanity. Hey, hey. No matter right. how yeah, absolutely. angry we are. Hey, right. Right. That's like yeah, the lady yeah, saying she's going to be playing and stuff. This is, yeah, this is ridiculous. Right. Folks it's can cuss. It's ridiculous. You might not like it. Yeah. But folks cussing. <laughs> folks cussing. We're in a professional. We're in a professional. Are you guys acting professional? Who was cussing? Are who you was acting cussing? professional? Who was cussing? Y'all all of a sudden professional now? Yeah, are you acting who professional? Who was cussing? <laughs> Let's get this Act meeting back in order. We'll take a five minute recess. Oh. Oh. Well, then y'all better focus. <laughs> because who cussed? I want order. Oh. <laughs> Y'all want to talk business or some other shit? <laughs> I'm just getting tired of it. Is this a joke? Who was cussing? I just cussed. But who was you getting up talking about cussing? What's going on down there? Because I said this is bullshit. It is. I got arrested for that. And so now y'all having cross conversation and it's just ain't been respectful. Did y'all plan this before y'all got here, the five of y'all? Had y'all had conversation previously? No. Would you swear to it or no? Because this is ridiculous. You might would. You might would because you honest and fast. But you want to criticize me. Ebenezer. Man, I ain't studying that. I'm going to continue to call you Ebenezer because you hold, act like you holier than thou and you're talking about me. I'm Shiloh. This is way out of hand. Miss Galloway, you're winning. Now, this is where we at. If you don't want a chair for a motion to be made and they done voted that you can't even get the flow and you ain't used your time. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. I ain't right. never they seen nothing like this they before. Shut it down. Yeah, it's not they right. gonna shut it down. It's not right. I'm gonna order a ten minute recess without objection. If there's objection, we can go through the vote. Because I ain't never seen council <laughs> folks on this end of the city or this end of the table treated this disrespectful. Call the question. It ain't you ain't got the flow. Let me say this. Y'all out of order. That's all they want to do. Y'all out of order. Y'all out of order. You been out of order. Y'all done wasted this city and council's time. You done disrespected folks. Y'all wild, running wild. And I'm going to get wild with you. Not just this day, 
but from now on. And I'm going to be talking to the people about it. Then I'm going to call folks in. They is clowns. They ain't looking like it. It's a clown show. And Mr. Guerra, you want to vote and laugh with them? It ain't a joke to me. And I'm going to show you and some old folks that I ain't joking. I don't think the mayor joking. I ain't joking. And the people we associate with ain't joking. And it's past November. It's due time to straighten this council out. That's what I'm going to be about the business of doing. Mr. Winfrey, you refuse to take the chair in order for me to make my motion, yes or no. If I take the chair, Councilman, I want to move this thing, because look at that. We are we're I ain't giving you the, you the chair to move, and I'm giving you the chair to make a motion. I just want to know straight up what you're going to do, yes or no. Go ahead. You gonna take the chair and I can make a go motion. Ahead, go ahead and make your motion. Okay, I move that um, we amend this resolution to three million or some satisfactory number with the other coming at a later date as we try to get the handle on this. And when I say fair the motion, any other figure, they don't need to be packing up and gone. I so move. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? There's a second. Uh, Councilman Garrett. Uh, Councilman Mr. President, David. I second. All right, there's been a motion on the floor to amend the uh, uh, motion to $3 million, and there's been proper Or statement. any other appropriate figure. Or any other appropriate from. figure. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. these, these guys in this team, in this department, I got not. They was packing up. Mm -hmm. They gone. And they still might leave. We don't need to start all over again. Just because these folks all of a sudden, three million, like it's theirs. They helped us apply and do over 77 million. The emergency managers made a mistake worrying about two, three million dollars. I done heard information that I know 100% ain't been factual from Ms. Worthen and Ms. Fields. A hundred percent. Mr. Newsom. Yes, sir. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Newsom, can we hear his feelings on the money, which we ain't discussed? I want to hear from the financial officer as it relates to the four million, the three million, and AE con. Mr. Newsom. They so big they don't even want to hear from Newsom now. I'm looking at him. Just disrespectful, Monica. You got an order. You, gotta, you can't call the court. Proceed, damn it. So let me ask you, let me start with a question. Is Go there ahead. a specific question, or do you want me to start giving some, some general feedback? And, and, any way you want to do it, but I want to hear about 3 million, 4 million, AECOM, well, what you I, think we should do, fast start type replacement, well, what's going yeah. on here? Because so we got five colleagues or four or whatever that just don't give a damn what folks say in the day. They came here with their mind let made up. He asked me to explain something. Okay, all right, now proceed. So just so, I mean, I, in terms of what the right dollar amount is, I did, and I shared this with uh, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter, um, you know, we, we worked the um, proposed amount from, I believe it was $8 million down to $4.8 um, for them to finish from 8 out. million to 4. Yeah, 8. I can't remember the exact number, but it, it went from like 8 million to 4.8. And I also provided a counter proposal to AECOM to get that, to um, knock another million dollars out because I felt, based on the analysis that was provided in your packet, that um, at least a million could be re could be reduced out of the, out of the um, contract. Um, and Who managing the restoration, Mr. Chairman, if I may continue? Yeah. Who managing the restoration? AECOM, the city? The city of Flint. Through Rob Benzie? Yeah, phase five is being managed through the city of Flint. Yeah, so, so going forward, I did communicate that to AECOM, and there was some back and forth. But this is kind of where um, there was a settlement. Um, it, I hate to use the word settlement. This is kind of where we left it where um, the number was 4.8. I still feel, if you look at some of the rates that are um, assigned to inspectors, if you were to use 48.14 per hour versus, I think, 62.14 per hour, whatever it is, and um, 
do some things to, sh to um, reduce the amount of administrative overhead in task number one and task number two, then I, I'm, I think you can knock out a million and still get um, and still get the amount of work you needed to get done to replace all the remaining pipes. Mm -hmm. um, so the contract might have to be altered. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it should be. That was that's been my recommendation um, to AECOM, and I provided Chairman. that feedback to them. Mr. Chairman, through you to it, or is there a mount that could keep y'all from packing up and leaving and are y'all authorized to deviate or how long would it take for us to know? I can't answer that. I don't know. My Mr. Weingarten. Mr. Weingarten, um, go ahead. Again, we're, we're, we're virtually out of money, so uh, we can keep, you know, putting Band-Aids and keep going and, and we'd be open to that. Um, but again, it's, it's, there's going to come a reckoning again when we run out again. So um, we really believe it's going to be $4.8 to finish this. Uh, once the field work's done, we got months to go just to wrap things up and, and do the uh, data management and all that. Um, but if, if you want to give us $3 million and we go until that runs out, I mean, we would, we would be receptive. What about one or two million to keep you here till we can get this mess sorted out? Well, yeah, I mean, you're receptive. Cause y'all been staying here on your own dime. I understand that, um, Mr. Chairman. I would move that we postpone this to special affairs. There's a motion on the floor to postpone this to special affairs. Is there a second for that motion? Second. I'll second. I'll second. It's been moved and processed. No, I'm going to put you out if you keep going. I, I, I want you to be here. I can't help it. I, it ain't yeah, we're doing something. And it's serious. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Yes. Sure. What happened to the other motion about writing it to three This is like a substitute motion. It's proper. This is a substitute. It's a substitute. It's a substitute. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can do two amendments to motion. You're wrong. Say what? You're asking me a question, right? What is your question? My question is, we're forgetting about the three million. No, we ain't. Yeah. That's the substitute yeah. motion. Just send it to special affairs as is. Yes, as the motion. As the as substitute, substitute. motion states. As wasn't clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No three well, then it's uh, mm -hmm. Nope. The intent is to send it to special affairs. And the original motion. The substitute had three million or whatever figure. That was the original motion, and I just asked him about one to two million to keep it going. So, I guess if I may, Mr. Chairman, it would be a substitute motion to send the last substitute motion to council. We can do up to two amendments, and so whether you call them substitute or amendments, you can do it. It's yeah. compatible. No, you don't have to. Okay, so the, let's. Uh, what is they saying, Mr. They're Kent? saying you, you, you have a substitute motion to That's send correct. it to. So, what they're asking is. I'm not saying that. No, and you, so asked, I'm, you, asked, you asked me a question. You asked yeah. me what are they saying. I'm and they, you now what I understand saying. what they're saying. They okay. want to not entertain a motion that's been made and probably second. Mm -hmm. And they want to go back and vote on the amendment. And I'm saying and they saying might don't want that to happen. You said you, said you don't have to do that. Proper, no. So you can you can you can do two amendments. And we've had two two substitute motions on the floor. Yeah, it before. can be done. I so, don't have to do what they want. It doesn't work for our records. I'm sorry. Well, figure it out. You ain't going to do that. You ain't going to determine so that. Now, come on. It ain't going to happen this day. We've done it differently. Yeah, it ain't going to happen now. I don't right. care what they records are going to do. Write it with opinion. Well, as chair, as chair, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. You want, what do you have? What do you have? Read to me what that substitute motion reads, how that, how that reads. To send it to special affairs as a no, the, the motion before. That's how it reads? The first motion. Man, you know how many things we didn't clarify. We didn't clarify stuff in roll call. And I know I'm on my clarification ain't been to be boggled down. What happened to the three million? We have to vote on that if we're going to do it because maybe not everybody wants that. 
<laughs> we'll find that's, out. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Y'all are doing too much. If you're amending a resolution, changing the amount, you all have to vote on changing the amount. And we might do that in special affairs. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm asking what we is We don't have the, to vote on that the, first. Councilman, I can't. What, what is the number that we're voting on now? Don't tell me as is. Give me a figure. 4.8 million. No, we're in. No, he's that wasn't. That, that, was, yeah, that wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't. Or whatever figure right, is the proper wording. was before. They're doing too much over there. That's right. It was a substitute. There was a motion. Right. Right, but you're doing the same motion. No, I don't. Yeah, but that's what. That's what I'm. That's what. The first motion was to amend it to three million. Yeah. Or whatever figure y'all missing that. Yeah, he said. He said. I made it clear. Or whatever figure. But I, you didn't put that down. I think you just put Shit, three million. I know what right? I don't know what whatever figure means. No, but I'm asking. We do. I'm trying three million. To, three million. So here's what I'm recommending. Let's either vote it up or vote it down. Let's don't spend no time with all this rhetoric. Let's either vote it up or vote it down. And if we vote it down, somebody come with another motion. And then we move. But what are you voting on, Mr. Is it What's the amended version of The amended motion of four. I think it's the amended version of a motion, the amended version of 4.8. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's right. what I'm thinking. Wait, was not the amended. No, I said I think we're amended on the right. amended motion. Well, the amended motion, the, the first one was 4.8. Then there was an, a substitute motion for 3 million. Right. That's the one I'd like for us to clear up, and if we're not going to send it for that, then we don't. And then we put another motion on the floor for whatever this body approves. Mr. Chairman. I think it's quicker. Because look at us. We're spinning time, just spinning wheels. Point of order. What's your point? Point of order. My point is this. It's been a motion made and properly second to send this to special affairs. In all effect, that's like tabling it. Whatever you do, whatever you had before it, it's tabling it to special affairs. That's proper. You can do a substitute motion to send this to special affairs. You ain't got to look back on the other stuff yet. You ain't got to look up at You ain't got to look back on the other substitute motion. You ain't got to look back on the original motion. You can say, I do a substitute motion, a second amendment, a table to special affairs. This is simple. So what is it? What is the motion? You, so you're putting a substitute? I put a motion to send it to special affairs. We ain't acting now. Now, <laughs> whether you say table it, but you know in the middle of the dialogue, we just ain't in discussion yet, unless we are, because wasn't it probably second? Yes. That means in between now and Monday, we going to see if they can stay, whether it's a million, two or three, or we going to see how hard line they is on moving forward. So the this. motion, so we ain't, so we the motion now. We're on sending it to special affairs, whether you call it substitute table, it's proper. You ain't even got to go back to the other stuff. And they're trying to convince you, you got to go back. No, I'm trying to, to the, I'm trying to straighten I'm it out. I'm trying to tell y'all. I tell you, you told them to be quiet, so I waited till y'all were talking wrong, and now I'm talking. Councilman. Councilman Winfrey. Um, we can usually when we send resolutions to special affairs it's because we need more information but now we've decided to change dollar amounts and decide to send it to special affairs mm -hmm. really with no dollar amount and so for me it seems like it would be appropriate to send this resolution in its form to special affairs and between that time figure out dollar amounts because if we're changing what and we don't have is. what is that? That's no, 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 no. We keep going. To, it's not my motion. Mm -hmm. And so the way that it's being discussed is confusing. Mm -hmm. Not just for the records, but for how we usually do things. And so we're, we're as a council, we're changing mm -hmm. a contract that I'm not comfortable doing because I don't even know um, how much three million covers. What scope it cuts out, how long it lasts. Order, order. So, what's order. Your point? What's your point? We ain't discussing the three million. It's relevant, but we on this procedural thing. 
And if we ain't, then we on discussion of the motion is going to be whether we send it to special affairs. So I'm hearing what you're saying, and I don't want to go long well, on a point of information, point of order, but if I don't know what she had, she got what to are flow we through sending? a point or something. What are we sending? That's how she got to flow through a point. I didn't. I, I got the floor because no. I was recognized. Okay, then, my bad. Go ahead. Um, if, if, we're, if we're sending a resolution to special affairs, it needs to either be the resolution as it is or the substitute resolution normally. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to know if we're sending it to special affairs, are we sending it in special affairs at the 4.8, which is on here, or is it at 3 million or whatever? It doesn't look like we're going to send it anywhere uh, because it's hard for us to decide what to do. I mean, nobody wants to move forward. Somebody, Everybody wants to do what they want to do. What's your point? We all want to move this forward. Mr. President, the out order. Point yeah. of information can't be used to get the flow so, and well, make statements. I have five now, votes come right on now. now. This, this is getting ridiculous. What's your, what's, what's your I think I understand now. The motion okay. is just to send it to special affairs and right. we'll decide on the amount on Monday. Right. Yeah. It's the resolution okay. 190. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. I do have <coughs> Mr. President, yeah, the intent is for us to really do something for the city. If they'll stay for a million, two million, three million till we can get this thing together, because they act like they got some questions they won't answer, but they ain't really paid attention and asked them and did. Some of them going to be infinite questions. Some of them going to be policy and procedures. Some of them want hydro back. Ms. Worthen said she can't vote for nothing to hydro back is back in. And it was another thing she said. Ms. Fields, she wants well, some information. Okay. I don't know what Mr. Um, Guerra looking for, but my point is this. I'm concerned for the city. So they were talking about four million. I'm talking a million. I'm talking about keeping folks in place not having to regroup, keeping this weather. So we'll see. That's why I thought it was important to say, I didn't say three million. I said three million or any other figure that we could get this done until we sort that out. That was the motion. Who didn't record it? Who didn't hear it? Ms. Galloway was 100% right. When stuff ain't together, and it sure ain't together now, and it ain't going to be together in a day, we need hours, days. That's what will happen between Wednesday and Monday. If them five want to knock it down and send them out Monday, so be it. It won't be that long. Okay. And at the same time, you'll be chairing. We'll see how you treat yourself and you treat me and how you let these others treat folks because it's on. But now my position is this. I'm trying to keep y'all here. I know y'all was packing up and leaving, and I'm going to try to do it in an acceptable way that might fit for everybody. Let's see what happens. Thank you. Ms. Galloway and then uh, Councilwoman uh, Field. I just had a question through you to um, Janelle. If we are sending it with blank, how are we? Oh, so at the 4.8. Yeah, we postpone oh. special oh. affairs. Never mind then. We tied all this conversation. My question was, was that ever seconded officially? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. Okay, I call the question. Okay, you probably didn't have to call it because there was no more discussion. <laughs> I was going to ask right. Okay, any other discussion? She called point of order when they call for the question, oh, you must oh, do it because that's, that's what trap they that's put true. me in. Right. But if right. they want to acquiesce to you, right. Councilwoman and Fields treat has you called for the question, is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Councilman Griggs has supported it. Okay, all in favor of uh, call for the question, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Nay. Nay. How did you, do you vote, need a, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? I'm ready for the question. Okay. Please restate the motion. So it's six to what, three? Six to three. Six to three. Yeah. Six to three. So the motion passes. Call the question. Yes. Call the question. And then the, the uh, motion is to send 190000 to special affairs. That's special affairs. Okay. All in favor of sending 19000 to special affairs, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed to the same sign? No. No. 
Yeah. It does not go to special affairs. Wow. Stays in committee. Five or five years that was that was. I vote. I voted wow. to send it to. Uh, to uh, uh, special affairs. So that was five to four. Five to four. Wow. Okay. Just another call. Read the read the uh, result, please. That was five to four. To not. It's okay. Failure. Uh, right. Four to five. I'm sorry. Four Councilwoman Williams. I call the question to the original motion to send this to council. There's a motion. There's a call to uh, uh, the original. Uh, the original motion was to send a one nine zero 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 two to council. Is there support for that motion? I second that motion. Point of order. Point of order. Oh, one nine zero zero zero. Point of order. Oh, order. What's your point, sir? They can't just pass the substitute motion for the original motion when they have eagerness and aggressiveness. So it's out of order to entertain it in the second it because it's still a substitute motion on the flow prior to the original motion. That's the order. You got to first vote yes or no on, on the, the substitute, on the substitute motion. motion. So I rule. That's true. In my point, is they out of order. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So on the you're right, Councilman. You're right. I stand corrected. So on the substitute motion. What is this body's pleasure? First, the what substitute motion was... Point of order. What is your point, Council? Have we exhausted discussion? Um, and if we haven't, um, before you call for the vote, I got a second round or first or whatever. And that, that, uh, that second round, that, that, uh, that, that substitute motion was to... Um, the substitute motion was to... I, to was, I think it was three... Three million. Three million. Or whatever. Or, or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. Is there any other discussion uh, on that? Point of order. That, that was not a substitute motion. You can't have two substitute motions on the floor at the same time. Well, we didn't have to. Well, yep. that's what that's what we did. Well, no. It was actually a motion. Yeah, it was a... It was actually a motion. Point of information. What's your point? I dare her to prove to me. Can she prove to me you can't have two seconds, two amended motions? Or yes, you can. She, she just makes statements. She don't know what she's talking about. And people who listen believe. So then let's do And the media all in her face. Right. So, she, feels, she don't be knowing what she's talking about. So let's do this. There was a substitute motion for three million. That's killing the city. Or what other figure? We're going to get rid of them. And yeah. I want to know if there is any other discussion on that motion. Um, yeah, Mr. President. Go ahead. Nah, they dug in. If they vote this down, leave. Just leave. I'm asking A.E. Com leave and don't look back. Just leave. I want everybody to see them and regroup. That's what we did right. with down there early enough. I'm done. If they vote this down, leave. I ain't finna do none of this mess. Just leave. Don't look back. God bless you. We glad you was here. Bye. Don't look back. Now that's my position. Cause they think they've been here since five to eleven. I've been here since five to eleven. In every logic, and Gary, he, mm -hmm. I guess he's steady laughing. If they want a victory this bad, at the expense of the people what? and led service lines, let them have it. Down there early had it. Now he can prosecute it. Might end up in the penitentiary. Scott Kincaid had it. Jackie Poplar had it and Kerry Nelson had it. Just leave. Don't put in another proposal. Don't amend the proposal. Y'all a billion dollar company. <laughs> Sam, we'll figure something out for local people. Just leave. Handle other cities and other towns. I know I can't tell y'all how to do y'all money, but that's my position. Don't kiss their butt. Don't beg them. Just leave. If they don't want to work with y'all a million, two, three at a time, just leave. Let Kate Fields manage it. Let Eva manage it. Maybe Griggs will help them. Just leave. Maybe Santino will be the youngest pipe replacement manager in the country. Just leave. 
This is ridiculous. You in the middle of, you in the middle of an emergency and they worry about whether I got one minute, three minutes, and I'm discussing a hundred million dollars. Like I'm an ignorant black man, didn't go to Michigan State. They done call folks racist, and I'm gonna let it be known. They just nasty. They ain't nasty to just me. They were nasty to the majority of the people in the city. This council used to be made up of more whites and two, three blacks. Now I see the white folks sticking together and acting a fool and calling black folks names. Councilman Mays, would you keep your remarks, please, to the germane? To they the are people. germane. The personality I and the, and the demographics this is, this of this vote. The, the wider crisis, the Civil Rights Commission ruled race was a factor. Now, when you get to be naive and don't believe race was a factor in this wider crisis, you're going to buck against the Civil Rights Commission of the state of Michigan. Race is a factor. You got folks jealous and envious of black folks in a majority city, three white folks and a Hispanic run together with one advantageous black who want to be president or something. One. You got one minute. That's what I see. Minute. You got one minute, Councilman. I got one minute, and I'm going to use it well. I done been talked about here today. I done been called not fair and dishonest. I've called abuse of the chair and did nobody say all oh, leave him alone. I just took it. And everybody here know what they said. But the minute I talk personal, and the rules said, since they called me racist, and I said, I ah, Eric Mason's, the rules say no personal attacks. And they don't do nothing, Angela. I'm going to add it in the litigation. It's a new day in Flint as of this day with y'all. Y'all got my attention. I'm unfair. I'm an abusive chair. I'm doing stuff to make y'all leave. Y'all already leave. That ain't what I was doing. Just leave and don't look back. But if you choose to beg them, that's you. I won't. I'm done. Why? I'm about to wrap up in 10 seconds. Time is up. I want to end by saying, when she speak, I'm going to be, ooh, ooh. I'm tired of evil words. Any other discussion? Yes. Council Looking Davis. like her. I hope they have a change of heart before a special I affair. Almost said because something. I'm going to tell you something. They don't know how serious this is. To try to overthrow a, a mayor and administration that tried all they can for the safety of this this, the people in this city, just because of dislike in politics and back by me, and I'm just telling you the truth. Every time the administration come for, I don't care if it was Newsom, she grabbed the mayor grabbed the best talent in the world and put it here to help the residents. But how dare somebody have the white horse back by meetings and then Here's grab the people that was minutes. was wet behind the ear and still is wet behind the ear, pull them in to fight against administration. Some people wouldn't be sitting at this table if it weren't for administration. Now Same you got a billion no dollar company. People, water will not be complete if this company Bring walk out of here. Who in the world are going to call the, with the expertise this company got? They are the project you managers. Too, they are not general. Hear you, sir. Councilman Mays. He yeah. out of order. We he can talk to. down here. No, 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 no. You still just like they Councilman, can talk Councilman, among Councilman. themselves. Councilman. Don't check You're me. Still you should have been checking me. I would talk to Miss Fields. Leave me alone. Uh, uh, Santino. You didn't mean it. Miss Fields, Santino, Miss Worthen, Miss Galloway, yeah, use your heart Check as well as Mr. Green. This is beyond the administration. With no Everything the administration do, it's always me. like this. It's don't always me. like this. Don't fuck with you just said what to me? I said don't fuck hold with on, me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, don't fuck with me. We're going to go east side on that ass. You finna get out of here. I want him out of here. Councilman Mays, you ain't supposed to be arguing with him. You're not supposed to be arguing with him. Yeah, let that go ahead. Mr. Metcalf, Mr. Metcalf, Mr. Metcalf, let him stay, Mr. President. No, not now, brother. Well, then go. But you ain't going to mess with me. Bye. You want to hear it again? You're not No, all right, Councilman, you're going to be going with him. Yeah. Proceed. Yeah. You can hear they it again. They need you to perform right now. Yeah, well, I will perform. They need you to perform. So they're not going to perform in Let this go on record. You ain't, I ain't studying it. No. Hey. I try hey. to be nice to them. They, they need run Eric to perform. Because all day long, yes. but, but, but now. constantly. Listen. You ain't going to run this meeting. Hey. They ain't going to run it. This is too important. 
I'm hoping y'all have a change of heart to reconsider. Use another platform to politics. You got all of this. The people have nothing already. Their houses, they help people dying, and you got nerves enough to send the only company that's qualified in the United States out of here for four, give them every dime they need to finish this job. It's not our money. It's the feds in the states. They just want to stop the man messing with this politics coming in November. Monica, do the right thing so you won't end up across the street at that court, and I'm done. Because somebody going to get prosecuted. It ain't going to be me. We're going to see. I, I, I think that it's um, it's interesting that a, a council person, and, and I'm speaking specifically to my colleague that just spoke, um, because, and, 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 and we don't have the respect for each other. This is not about my heart. This is about six million dollars just being spent and and there you go mr davis talk no, about no, 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 what no, no, behind no. the ears that's what you are yeah and you act as though you are you want to, you want to check up or take make it personal he said point of order point of order point of order your point i can assure you the rules say no personal attack it does. and so you so every angry. time y'all make them and we make them back don't get upset yeah. Because it started on y'all end. But now you're telling right, him how we're yeah. That's your point. You made your point. What's so the ruling? Thing. What's the ruling? I, I, I'm not Can she make that. personal she attack? Make personal attack. Attack. Personal attack. Personal attack. 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 I beg your pardon? She can't make personal Okay, well, I said you. I appeal the ruling of the chair. I appeal the ruling of the chair. Your job is to say it in a second. I appeal the ruling of the chair. That's what they did. I appeal the ruling of the chair. I said point of order. Yes, and I said, Rue, wasn't okay. she made a personal attack? I said she... Uh, you okay, so I appeal your ruling. You say she didn't. I appeal. That's not what I said. What I you said, say? You said, your question to me, Councilman Mays, if you slow it down, you said, can she make personal attacks? I said, point I of said, order. She can't make personal attacks. You asked me, could she make them? I said, she could not make them. Okay, so we and agree. so... Um, okay, <laughs> if we agree she can't make them... Quit telling him how his ears and look and all okay, that. Okay, now listen. Don't listen to him. But just well, proceed. you gonna listen to me if I appeal. Yeah. No, but I'm saying you gonna she, instruct her but, if she but, lost but, and she can't make him. Proceed. President Winfrey. Without making personal attack. Do you attack. feel he's personal right attack that I'm went behind here? Ever since we've been here. Okay, I appeal. A point of order. But the point is this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He has a point. He has a. That's what they did. They mad when they did me to death. He has a privilege. What you hunting for? He has a privilege. Point of information. You've got a privilege motion on the floor, and you study talking, Councilman. I'm trying to address it. What's your motion? What's your What's your point? Point personal attacks ain't gonna be tolerated, and when you make them, they deserve a warning and a subsequent removal. You agree or disagree? I disagree. I agree. Okay, I agree. I the... No, 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 I agree. You're right. I so agree. I want a warrant. Okay. Well, Proceed. I want a warrant. But, 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 but wait a minute. I'm Councilman, done. you've done it too. Right. So then I, I, I would, I would I'm be able to appeal the ruling unless I hear something rude on that she doesn't want. Proceed. Been Proceed. I appeal the ruling. There's an appeal of the ruling of the chair on the floor. There's a second. Uh, Councilman Mays, go ahead and state your case. Yeah, if you're going to uphold. My point of order on these personal attacks, and then I ask you to warn her and deal with it, and you tell her to proceed like ain't nothing happened. I got a problem with that because I asked him that he feel personally attacked. Yes. So y'all want to just blow it off and proceed? No. I ain't down with that. No. And regardless of what they did when I chair, I told you from this point on, since they want a point of order, since they want a point of information, bull. I'm not like Jerry Winfrey Carter. Bull me on my rules and how I say, buckle down, because it's going to be a long ride the rest of this year. Okay, good. So I'm you saying mean? you going to warn her. I done warned her, couldn't get them removed, but I'm appealing you ain't warning. her. You okay. telling her to proceed Thank and she you. were wrong. Now, That's a problem. His, 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 uh, his uh, uh, appeal is He's correct. When, I said when he said, I'm going to talk just like they were talking down there. Then you have no right to even complain about them if you're going to do the same thing. Y'all didn't do nothing. They still going. So growing. you were the chair. Okay, well, and you were voting. And so here we go. Mr. Uh, President, 
You voted well. Councilman Mays, if you're going, not going to allow me yeah. to finish your appeal, then well, I'm going to lose you out of order. Proceed. <laughs> what he said was correct. You're not supposed to attack. And you said that you felt uh, uh, attacked. And, you, and, 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 and he said that I didn't tell you that. I told you to proceed without attacking. That was my ruling, proceed without attacking him. So it wasn't like you said. It wasn't a shallow form of, it was, I told him not to do that. But you're so engulfed in warring, you're even missing what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with you. She's not, not only her, nobody should. And if the rules are going to be uh, 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 against her, then they got to be across the board, Councilman. You know that. You a rule stickler. So now if we can proceed on with this the thing, appeal. we can get some things. Any more discussion no. on the appeal? Because I got some. As it relates to the appeal? To the appeal. Okay. When you're talking about attacking, mm -hmm. I s repeated what Councilman Davis said. He's the one that said people on this council that are wet behind the ears being drawn into something. Councilman Mays begin attacking me by saying, I think I'm holier than thou, mm -hmm. calling out where I go to worship. And so don't act like he hasn't been attacking all night. I and just said that he no, had. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying it for his oh, okay. benefit. He's making it seem like I deserve a warning when all of these things were said and brushed over and we didn't say anything about it. Councilman May, I mean, um, Davis is attacking. And, and unfortunately, the attacks come because someone doesn't vote the way you think that they should vote. We are nine council people that represent nine different wards. And, and for someone to act as though because the $4 million comes from the state of Michigan, which is all our taxpayer money, is irresponsible. The finance chair <laughs> sat here and said it started at $8 million. Let's No, because, and then he said. Yes, what well, order, Mr. President? This ain't about no appeal or it personal is. attack. It ain't. Right. Uh, uh, point of order. I'm done. I, I'm, I'm hearing you. It ain't about, she way off, bitch. Okay. Uh, one more person. Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim. Call the question. You don't have the, I, I haven't recognized you. Go ahead. Okay. And that's the game. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take your time. That's the game they play. Take your time. Leave. Don't leave. I need you to take over. I got to go. I got to go. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Proceed. need you to take over. He needs you to take over. Recess to her, get back. Miss Galloway, what you talking about, we say after what they say is a no consequence to me. What I look at is when folks sat right next to you and called me racist on either side, Griggs called the mayor racist, she called me racist, that's when it started. See, y'all forget the history of how stuff started. That's like slavery. If people start making personal attacks against me and call press conferences, when I start cussing them out and talking about them and you start rolling with them, don't try to make me act right after the fact. That ain't my style. That's a punk. That's somebody who gets beat politically. I'm not a punk. I'm a stone Christian on a path trying to make it, knowing that I can sin. I cuss, fuss, have sex out of marriage, and still can make it. <laughs> so ain't nobody no more holier than thou than me. Because I pray on my knees. My heart is good. I'm going to probably make it to heaven, Lord willing. But I ain't for no foolishness. Folks can't come in a public meeting on TV and call me a racist, a bully, a misogynist, a narcissist, and don't know me from Adam. I got folks from high school, Mount Morris, calling me, Maze, do we need to come down there? And they don't even look like me, but they know me. Kate Fields and even them don't know me, so check that. When I hear you, Gara, Griggs, um, um, Herb, them, when I hear y'all jump out and say, Kate Fields, don't call him back, you're ahead of the curve. But when y'all sit there and laugh and let it happen and conspire with them, you're just as guilty as them. 
So don't tell me when to get beat up and then punch back. I'm going to knock the hell out of you politically in words and literally. Politically, racially, verbally. Okay. You ain't going to never <laughs> under my watch call me names, hold press conference, Miss Worthy, and then run for yeah, cover not. when I call you white, nasty, ignorant, rude. It ain't going to happen. Not under my watch, not in my council seat. So that's what we're dealing with, Miss Galloway. Until you pick up on it. Now you offended because I named Ebenezer. It's on your literature. We know you go there. I ain't offended when they say Shiloh. My daddy was a pastor. But every little thing nitpicked. And Ebenezer come up because you try to act like I'm dishonest. You said something about be honest if you call on Gary. I called on her. I know what you said. I ain't studying you. That's how I roll. You so caught up trying to roll with that smiling man and Kate Fields and him, and he going to, I guarantee you he won't be laughing. Not in the third ward. Not representing that majority district. He done crossed over to the wrong white folks' side. How much, how much? And I'm going to prove it. He who laughs last, young man, laughs best. Is that tickle to you, that tickle? Is it that funny? That's amazing. That is that funny that you rolling with the folks calling me a race. Councilman, your time's up. Uh, uh, Councilwoman, did anybody else before I Ms. So oh, you don't I want to? Oh, don't be sorry. I get through with you. Wrong, and I just after the vote? Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion on this? On this on Mr. This Chairman. Councilman May, we ain't got My to motion is over. I get the chair back. That's what I'm telling you. But we haven't voted. We voted. You ain't got to vote. Once that thing that I did was over, I get the chair back. Don't get carried away. I don't understand. I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm going to take the chair since y'all. I'm the chair. After you, after this vote. So I didn't let you so, go. So, so are we both, what, what are I'm we, listening to her cutting deal. Yeah, it's a motion on the floor. Right. And so the motion was an appeal that was made by me. Right. And I appealed at that time. So we're her voting. personally right. attacking him. So now so, we've so been to vote. If you vote yes, you upholding. The chair's decision. You want to oh, finish okay, it up? Okay, go okay. ahead. No, no, then no, I'm no, gonna go take ahead. the chair back. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we're still on this appeal thing, right? Oh gosh. Okay. All right. Is there any other discussion on the appeal? God, I hope. But not. after this, I will take the chair because okay. I'm listening. As there is. A, there's no discussion on the appeal. Here. Oh, you. I just want to say that since you are chairing on the appeal. You are chairing on the main motion, that which is part of the appeal. You happening. should not be handing the chairmanship <laughs> back until the well, going to happen, ma'am. All right, so <laughs> I've heard that discussion down. on the appeal. Any other discussion on the, on the uh, appeal from the decision? Okay. If you vote in the affirmative, you are supporting the chair's motion, uh, the chair's position. If you vote in the negative, then you're supporting supporting Councilman Mays. All right. All in favor of the chair's uh, uh, position, please signify by either saying aye or raising your hand. All uh, opposed, same sign. Okay. So, so Ms. Ms. I got the chair. So did, can we can we can we do the count? Yeah. The count. So we've got six to two. Okay. Nah, I'm so now the we're back to the regular business. Yeah. The substitute. I resume the okay. chair. No, 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 it would be the. No it was, I resume the chair, uh, Mr. Mr. President. You can, you can. I got you the can chair. The, the now position. this is where we at now, Mr. Davis. Yes. I don't agree with them. They shouldn't personally attack you or me. So right. since they both can, we will do them in town. Now, let me say this. The motion on the floor is three. Have we voted on the three million or any other figure? No, we did. That voted down, 
um, Janelle, I'm gonna ask you to keep her the records. Was that mo was that voted down? Yeah. Let Janelle look at the record and tell us this ain't no guessing game. Would you answer the council, please? And quit talking to them. I'm talking to you. Can you tell me if the substitute motion has been voted on? Or whatever figure, that's the one million, two million, we just, that's important to hear that motion properly. The third one was, the next substitute motion was to send a special affairs. That's correct. <coughs> now, have you voted on the amendment? We ain't voted on that yet. That's what I'm saying. I think. That's where we at right now. We on the amended substitute motion. That's where I think we at. And I was, saying, I was saying earlier that when they vote on it, wave goodbye. Now, if I'm wrong, Janelle, you can correct me. Wrong about what? Have the substitute motion been voted on? No, I didn't think so. All right, any more discussion on the substitute motion? I'm going to repeat it. The substitute motion was an amendment to the $4.8 million to three million, one million, two million, whatever, to keep them here until we can sort this out. That's basically the substitute motion. Is that a fair statement, anybody? Yes. Disagree? Mm -hmm. That was the substitute yes. motion. All in favor, if there ain't no more discussion, all in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye on the amendment. Aye. 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 All opposed signify by saying nay. Four to four, it failed. Jerry Winfrey Carter left. Wow. <coughs> Pays to stay and meet. Right. Okay. So now we're voting on the original motion to, to move the $4.8 million to council. That was the original motion. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yes. yes. Everybody agree. All in favor, any more discussion? Okay, so the original motion was to move the uh, resolution AECOM to council, and that number would have been 190-000. All in favor of moving it to council signify by raising your hand or saying aye. Aye. All opposed. So it fails. So it's nothing on the table, no more, Mr. Newsom. It's nothing on the table for AECOM right now. Start over, leave, go home. Do whatever, and that's AECOM. There's no more pipe replacement program happening in the city of Flint, and the ones who gonna leave right like now. normal, who don't do the business, we gonna proceed with the agenda and take care of city business. If they all leave, then we'll be lack of a quorum. We used to this. Wow. Every meeting. And Jerry had a stage, the vote would be five to five. Um, order, Miss Fields, if you leave and leave, we got business here. We got business here. Um, I'll entertain a motion as it relates to discussion item. No, we still have one, we have one more resolution. We got an add on. No, if Mr. Branch one, gone. One nine zero zero. Okay, thank you for that call to order. Um, one nine zero 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 two. I'll entertain the most. No, one nine zero zero one. Oh, what I said two. Two. Oh, the one is the poverty exemption. One nine zero. Zero, zero, one. I'll entertain a motion. We got a lack of a quorum. I'm going to call this meeting for lack of a quorum. This meeting is adjourned for lack of a quorum. <laughs>